We are going to be recycling content, baby. Let's go. Because, um, if you didn't know, I have a series on YouTube that sums up the best and the worst of the year in anime. And I am working on my newest video this year for the best of anime in 2023. And in the process of working on it, it just occurred to me that the very first video in this series is the best, uh, is anime in 2013. I have been doing this for 10 years. 10 years I've been doing anime rewinds. It is a series that is very dear to my heart because every year it's the, it's the video I put probably the most work into. Uh, and I have not missed a single year. And you know what? I thought it'd be fun to go down memory lane and try to figure out, based on my own summarizations, what the best year of anime was in the previous decade. What year popped off the hardest? What year had the most bangers in it? Uh, and also, it's just a fucking excuse for me to feel nostalgic and uh, get drunk and... Uh, reminisce about the good old days in anime. So we're just going to be, we're just going to be chilling out and uh, watching a decade of anime rewinds, if you don't mind, because my Christmas holiday has started and I'm going to crack open a beer. <laughs> All right. Also, <clears throat> disclaimer: some of these videos are. 10 or so years old. The internet was a different time back then, and so was I. I have not remembered every joke or everything that I've said in these videos. So, you know, just because I make an edgy joke or just because I use some language that might not be looked, uh, that might be looked down upon today does not mean that that is the person I am today. All right. <laughs> Look, if we can just all come together and just all collectively understand that, hey, we were all fucking different people back then and the times were different. All right, Twitter, that's that's all I'm going to say. All right. 2013 coming to a close. I'm the type of guy who always likes to reflect. Oh, I sound so young. God, I sound, I sound so different. My voice, I swear, <laughs> sounds, sounds higher. What the hell? <laughs> what the hell? a year gone by and what a year it's been eh one of the most beloved political figure of our time passes away north korea declares their hatred towards america in a shocking revelation that exactly everyone already knew about and for us geeks that, that was that, now that, the next generation that, console that, that hasn't changed where at for all. the next eight years we're going to see gamers argue over which new expensive black box they can more effectively teabag their opponent in the next call it's of the mic right yeah definitely, definitely in the mic definitely in the mic twerking and selfie become such popular words that they were added to the dictionary allegedly hope and optimism were removed shortly afterwards on the Internet oh Harlem God. Shake through Harlem right after Shake. Gangnam Style that all you absolutely need to start no is way. This to effectively double like Absolutely no way. And Gibbish dropped a video that asked a question that apparently no one has ever asked before. What does the fuck say? That a was 2017? So that when no asked, fucking was way. by the sound of about six and a half billion people around the world not giving a shit. But what was the year like for anime? What did 2013 <gasps> say for Free. us otaku folk? That was yes, this year. That was that year. year. Holy year shit. 2013 oh. to the anime and moments that stood out for me. No, I'm not going to be able to talk about everything, but I'll do my best to cover everything that mattered to me. So, with that intro out the way, let's get started. Ah, uh, the good old rewind effect. We start at the beginning of the year with the leftovers from the 2012 fall and winter season. Okay, what happened? Sword Art Online had just recently ended before the start of the year, leaving everybody... I fucking, I fucking knew it. I fucking knew it. I, okay, okay. This is this is how this is how you get nostalgic. You watch my you watch my recaps and you realize, okay, this is what anime was like at the time. On the spectacle of effectively watching a show cock slap itself during a horrendous second half, so it was kind uh, of a black yeah, hole. I period. mean, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah kind of right. Really knew what to watch or follow, even if there were some legitimately good shows. Yo, the anime zone coming up, man. Surprised the anime world by making my Holy shit! Holy shit! I forgot about I this. Correctly, every one in Does anyone remember this? Does anyone remember this show? It was like Spice and Wolf. Uh, in Spice and Wolf, but even more horny because it was about e economics. <laughs> Having a name I can only pronounce correctly. And it was, by a, it was by a studio that uh, drew hentai. 
It's, and they were like, wait, wait, you went from hentai to this? The Hundred Times was an actual interesting and intellectual show, which was a step above the blood and tits and elfin lead and the tits and tits and ikitosha and queen's blade and full on hentai that they were previously famous for. A series that showed immense promise during this time was also Kotora Sai. Oh what shit. I remember this show. Oh my god. I'm, I'm getting like core memories that of like shows that everyone's forgotten about. Remember this show? The show that fucking, I am i don't remember much, but I'm like episode one in this. I remember there was, episode one went fucking hard. One of the most emotionally gripping beginning 10 minutes I've ever seen. It tells the dark oh, story yeah, of a young was. innocent mind it reader descending into depression as she finds out her unique power pushes everyone to hate her. Little did we know that the first 10 minutes was actually one of the biggest piece of anime cock tease in recent years and just becomes a yeah, generic yeah. romance slice I, I of remember life show like everything you else. Tell him, go on, you That's tell right, him. the show peaks in the first 10 minutes guys. Don't get fooled, don't whip your oh cock my out God. lads. This girl does not put out. In the leftovers during the fall season, Shinsekai oh, Yori Shinsekai presented Yori the darkest was, uh, story of anime, featuring humanity well. in a dystopian society reflecting and commenting on the issues of current events. Perhaps one of the most acclaimed series of 2013 This is feels old yes stream, yeah, I know, because, right, I know. Oh my god, there's a gay scene in episode 8. Fucking drop! And only garnered attention after completion, promoted by a small but dedicated fan. I remember. Last of Tempest flipped the table and It's... It's weird to think that, like... This was the controversy that anime, the anime community was going through back in the day. Man, this was the, yeah, I remember, I remember people were like, yo, free? That has men in it and they are sexy. Uh, anime is fucking ruined. And that was the biggest controversy our fucking community went through back then, man. Conventional moral messages by making trees the antagonist to the story. Yes, these bastard trees and the smugly Honestly, the show, and the fucking- I still remember the show. The show still kind of slaps. Blasted Tempest, I really want to rewatch this. Branches. Look at them. It sounds stupid, but this, it did this... provide us with a first full-on tree-on-tree fight scene, showing how dangerous trees can be when they try to take over the world. Blast, Blast of Tempest, unironically. I'm watching I, 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 I still have really good memories. Oh, Genero Bucci being Genero Bucci. A Genero Bucci written show. Holy shit. Molly and Bigger's cop show set in a dark dystopian feature with a main protagonist who looks like she's permanently stoned. But the standout and surprise for me that stopped airing during this time was the grand, the extravagant, the outlandish JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. <laughs> alright, alright, guys. I'm gonna say it. I'm, I'm gonna say it, guys. I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna be that guy now. I like JoJo before it was popular because I swear to God, I swear to God, I remember when I wrote this segment, I was like, this is my underrated show of the season. Uh, not many people have heard about it. It's a really, really old show, but I swear to God, it, it, it's really good, guys. That's... that's <laughs> <laughs> Because you never forget. occurred to me why anyone would want to adapt an old forgotten shonen manga, but am I so glad that they did? This over the top manliness, campness, and ridiculous plot lines made for such an entertaining watch it did. that constantly it did. asked the question Bro, 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 bro! <laughs> Do you even pose? As stupid as it got at times, it was the most pure fun I had with a show in 2013, and I highly recommend it for anyone looking for a cool, dumb action series. As the spring season emerged, okay, this okay, felt okay. like the real start of anime in 2000. Guys, guys, I recommend there it. There were no more guys, guys, I recommend it. Before, and this recommend was a fresh new start for if anime If you need, if you need a new show to watch, if you need a new show to watch, this, this what small... A way to start it. Oh, of course, of course. Of course, of course, it's gotta be. If there's one anime that will be remembered for the year 2013, it's this one. Yes, this is yep. the year that Attack on Titan took the anime community still valid, by storm. Still valid, still valid, still valid. a worldwide sensation that became one of the most hyped anime ever created. Still valid, there wasn't a single still person valid. in the fandom who hadn't at least heard of this show, and for good reason. The fanboys would get pumped up for the exhilarating action sequences, and the fangirls would gush over their Captain Levi. Most likely for his proven housewife ability. Do, do, do you remember how thirsty the female fanbase got over fucking Levi? Levi and Eren. Does, does anyone remember that before we realize 
how deep of a character drama Attack on Titan was, and Tumblr was going fucking crazy. Yeah, and that brooding look he always has in himself, like, he's <laughs> and, 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 like every like, like Tumblr was going mind. crazy was over Levi and Eren this entire aspects, time. An interesting setting and a plot that really did take you for a roller coaster ride. But As it did one, have yes. Fair share of I thought to the these still are. And also with the Titans themselves. Oh my god! So the Titans went from these terrifying, creepy it's, 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 I like because I remember, I remember my Attack on Titan in. 12 minutes or 30 minutes still gets quoted quite a lot, especially the fucking Levi and Aaron scene where they're in the courtroom it's drama. And it's just, just like, Peter. fucking hell, man. Of course, man. with hype, not everyone would love it, but suffice to say, it deserved its hype way more than some of the animes of previous years. Oh, yeah. Oh, and before I forget, a quick mention of the anime's first opening. That was it. Alongside Attack on Titan, we had the controversy that was Akunohana, aka the Flowers of Evil. Ah, yes, this was an experiment or attempt to create a psychological ah, horror show. Using I think I was a bit too harsh in this one. Looks this like they took a human face, got a this, toddler to replicate it with Play Doh, and then get someone. This, I think, is an actually highly underrated show that I can tell what they were going for now that I look back, but sometimes it really does look dumb and stupid and it put a lot of people off uh but it has this uncanny valley effect that worked really well in the scenes that hit really hard the manga is a masterpiece i really wanted the vi the full vision of akuha nohana to get like fully realized unfortunately it just didn't when with arthritis to trace over it because uh, i kid i kid it didn't look that bad it's... it had an immersive plot with some legitimately interesting ideas that played to the uncanny valley effect but oh shit actually maybe old god was cooking take seriously <laughs> highlights including this face that <laughs> <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe her old gun was cooking. Wait, wait, maybe old gun wasn't completely dumb after all. Is that a man or a woman? Why does this woman have a mustache? Oh, Tusker running so stupidly that he apparently jumps through time. And oh, my I personal favorite. Okay, that was bad. That was bad. That was that was not edited. Imagine, imagine you're watching. Imagine you're watching this. Okay. I I think this show had potential and then there were some shots like this shot uh, This is a completely unedited shot Ash, oh, Thank you very much for the five gift subs man uh, <laughs> This shot where I think the director was like he's running too long. Let's just uh, let's just jump so stupidly that he apparently jumps through time <laughs> and my personal favorite <laughs> The unibrow of Nirvana. <laughs> right, right. On the topic of Nirvana, King Buddha, seen here dodging rubber bands in bullet time, decided to descend down from oh, the heavens man. in springtime with Jesus this to was live a in an apartment really, block together really in the anime shot. Saint Young Men. This yes, was... this was a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Be sure to stay tuned for season two where Vishnu stars in the I completely forgot this was a thing, man. Oh, what the hell? Say no Gargantia tried to prove oh, that yes. everything written by Gena Rubiji has to be filtered with a sea of grey and depression, even if it inevitably did in the end. What? I, uh, what do I remember about Susei no Gargantia? Uh, remember when Genorobuchi was just at his prime and then anything he touched, people were like, yo, this is a fucking insta-watch. I don't remember much about Susei no Gargantia, but I feel like it actually hurt me knowing it was written by Genorobuchi because I was like, all right, when's the Urobuchi, where's the Urobuchi twist coming in? When's it coming? When's it coming? And then it came, I was like, ah, Ah, there it is. And I feel like it would have hit me harder if I wasn't expecting, like, expecting something like that. Oh, Valve Rave Deliberator! Oh, oh no! Deliberator, oh, no. I pause on a very bad so moment. So unexpected that the anime actually had to tell the viewer that what was going on in this scene here was in fact sex. Ten times. Just in case oh we couldn't God. guess. And then we have Ori. Oh, Emo. shit! Ah, uh, Ori Emo. All right, all right, pack it in, boys. Pack it in. Back it in. We found the real peak. We have found the real peak. <laughs> We've we found the real Okay, okay, now now I know. Now I know why 2013 peaked in anime. Attack on Titan? Get out of here. Get out of here. My little sister can't be this cute. This anime was a light-hearted look at the Otaku culture that somewhere along the line became why through the anime. But it was still a fun show with some sincere, heartwarming moments that everyone could get behind. Right guys, I'm right, 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 right. I was I wasn't I wasn't captain. I, this was I still agree with myself. I still agree with myself. Till the ending happened. Yes, the ending that most <sighs> definitely has to be talked about. So if you do not want to be spoiled, then I suggest just you click this button right here to- I mean guys, it's a 10 year old show now. It's a 10 year old show. It's, it's, it's a 10 year old show, guys. Skip it. <laughs> 
the ending finally answered the long-awaited question of who our protagonist would end up with. And the answer we got was the sister. Yes, the show actually went full incest on us. And of course, viewers were torn <laughs> apart with this development as they realized that the title did exactly as it said on the tin. The moment where the mass public would turn tail and run a fucking mile. The moment where... I, for anyone around in this time period, right, I don't think you understand just how much of a shit show this final episode caught uh this final episode caused because like hindsight 2020 haha look at the title look at the fucking everything swear down season one this presented itself as a wholesome look into otaku culture that kind of was just like hey here's a brother and sister but here um, here's an actual brother and sister that act like bickering siblings that have absolutely no romantic feelings towards each other. I, like, you, people clown on, like, Oromo now, but we genuinely got jebated back then. They, it, it, it's, it really, really fucking baited us, which is why this ending caused such a massive shit show, I swear to God. Supporters of Kuroneku and Ice, they collectively committed mass suicide while the Karina train jumped for joy. Just read the title was coming out in one piece. Don't worry, we'll get to anime news in just a bit, mad. They watched on endless repeat. <laughs> Suffice to say this ending was controversial as hell, but I can't say that I didn't enjoy the fan reaction over it. And I probably enjoyed this anime way more than I should have. Yep, yes, yep. I know. Yep. I don't know why either. Yep. Thank you, yep. Emo, for providing me with such Definitely entertainment something over the year and an ending <laughs> worth talking about. Thank you for the controversy you've created and for trolling the entire fan base with your ending. <laughs> Goodbye, SS Kuroneko. So long, Ayaseyami. You talk to fan of spoken and the final again. answer to the rest of the world. God Is that never incest? The same. Is most definitely <laughs> Wincest! And Garn was. See you in part two. Oh shit, what was part two? What was part two? Wait a second. My videos are blocked in Japan, so I need to go back to my account. Alright, let's see what else I had in 2013. <laughs> Before I make my 10 year long. Uh... Yeah, okay, this, is, this, this shows the age of uh, this video. Remember when you could upload video, like videos in parts and get away with that shit because people didn't understand that you could upload three hour long essays and uh, people would still watch it. <laughs> yeah, that's how, that's how old this video is, man. <laughs> Why are they blocked the in Japan? Someone... Why are they blocked in Japan? Because my videos, uh, because I do not want some anime companies to uh, watch some of my videos. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much that. Pretty much that. Remember the dude? Remember the ten limit? Uh, ten minute limit? Yeah, I remember that, man. I remember that. <laughs> rolled around, the Attack on Titan hype train was still going into full effect, and nothing could stand in its way. It was the hot word on everyone's What do you think of Eremanga Sensei? I thought it was shit. It. Attack like, on Titan this, Attack on Titan I, that, Attack on Titan this. Like, that's the when they were just like not even subtle year. about Something it anymore. Something needed to be done to shake <laughs> the community up. Something needed to be done to give the community another <laughs> thing to talk about. Something needed it, to I enjoyed it for like a different reason. I enjoyed it because it was so bad. I, I, I enjoyed it because it was so bad. You know, that's the shade. No, people who compare Eremanga Sensei to like Oriyama, especially season one, they just didn't watch the show. I did. I did. It's two completely different shows. To be done to set the community free. It's insane to think that it took till 2013 for the anime industry to realize, hey, there's a, the, the female demographic exists. And they want more than just shoujo romances. They maybe, uh, maybe instead of just fan servicing girls, you can give us sexy guys as well.
Wait a minute, Tumblr. This isn't a plot synopsis. Ray said. <laughs> oh, Tumblr. Oh, Tumblr. We remember Tumblr, right? Not that this is my type of thing either, but there's nothing wrong with giving Your voice is a lot deeper exactly now, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've no I, I, I didn't know. Guys as they play I didn't know until water, I watched this. symbolizes their love for swimming and nothing else. <laughs> Elsewhere, legions of socially awkward anime fans. Oh, what a mote. A tale of a socially what awkward anime was trying to be, right, guys? Days, giving fans a reason to go, oh my god. God, that girl is me. That girl is totally me. I totally know what it's like to be in this situation. In that situation. To daydream in class. To Wait, have what's dark circles under my eyes. Yeah, Holy I know. That's what I'm shit. saying, man. I don't that's want to bone saying. my brother either. This is so much more realistic than other anime siblings. Danganronpa somehow managed to make the topic of Danganronpa? The original? Oh my. Game, which main character starts off as a naive God. Dipshit. Based on a video game that had quite a cult following, the anime was quite a mediocre adaptation with bland characters, pedo bears, demented oh half my. and death. It seems so shocking that they apparently have to colour their blood pink. Oh, yes, yeah. pink. If they really <laughs> wanted murder to look <laughs> unintentionally ridiculous, then they could have just used white blood to make everyone look like they got bukkake to death. Monogatari I'm, returned I remember yet pink another blood. season, which also meant the return of the annual BEST GIRL TOURNAMENT! Wait, Monogatari- Oh, it's Monogatari's second season. It was Monogatari's second season, if I remember correctly, right? It was Monogatari's second season. So meant the return of the annual oh, yeah, yeah, Best yeah. Girl Tournament! <laughs> yes, this year we had another fantastic season of everyone's favourite sport, Best Girl. We saw Hanakawa climbing up the ranks after her arc, Senja Gohara falling down to a shadow of the girl who dominated the sport. Still, still fucking, still, still some of the best cast of waifus you could ask for in an anime, guys. Monogatari? Monogatari? In the first Woo! season, Hachikuchi bringing up the rear for lolly lovers, Kanduru <laughs> staying as the dark horse of the tournament, and oh Sen Goku God. remaining right at the bottom of the league at undeniable sluts level. <laughs> Who has never recovered since sucking off a snake at her entrance. Oh, However, yeah, MVP this year that. undoubtedly goes to Shinobu oh. for providing possibly the best arc of the Monogatari franchise oh, so far. Man. This win means she will now progress to the next stage where she'll play Kaiki in the semi-final. Oh, Kaiki was going to that season. The first anime ever Kaiki was Fucking go to that season, man. Which was a piece of news that seemed to be entirely glossed over since 2013. Also, saw the birth of Monty Yum and Rooster Teeth's little baby Ruby. Oh Apart from living Monty's fantasy of animating cute Ruby anime came girls out with this year. fuck off weapons, they broke the no ground way. by effectively becoming the first indie no anime way. ever made. But really, the one big effect it had on the community is that fans would dick slap anyone who dared to call this an anime, sparking the ever pointless discussion of Is this an anime or not? It was made in America. Why is it on Crunchyroll? Avatar is not an anime, faggot. Is it Japanese? What is Japan? Oh with the eyes. God. The eyes. I do say that the creator himself, Monty Um, did in fact refer to this as an anime. I'm so confused. What is life? Young Gun was, really uh, was that definitely was edgy, guys. From an independent production company to make a show which had To be fair, that was that, to be fair, I was quoting the internet really back then, which uh, this 2D dust cloud effect had an absolute piece of shit bully. Unhinged. As the hey man, the internet was unhinged back then. People to wonder what Apologize they were going to do themselves. To, uh, with Titan ending and free completely That's, destroying uh, anime. How could they possibly kind of fill in context. these massive gaps that these shows have left behind and live as normal anime fans again? But it was fine, as God himself declared from the heavens, Fear not, young fans. Anime is about to be saved. Don't lose your way. Okay. 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 Uh, still high, baby. Still high. The whole cool series produced <laughs> by the newly formed Studio Trigger, <sighs> which prompted the community to explode and proclaim that anime has been saved. And all it took was a strong female lead. Plot. Over the top action. Plot. Ridiculous comedy. Plot. More plot. Plot up the ass. And of course, <laughs> hands down, the best lines come out of 2013. No, the series shows a lot of promise with its complete over the top nature and entertaining fights, but it has been a bit hit or miss, oh, especially man. with Marco being the worst thing to happen to comic relief characters. I still. I. I, I think Kill or Kill. You think about it now, it's 10 years old. It's fucking. It's, it's fucking 10 years old. Um, I want to I wanna rewatch it. I think it's aged wonderfully, and I still think it's one of the most hype you can find in anime to this day. It's. It's fucking insane. That and Guru and Lagan. Uh, we, we kind of like peaked with those two shows, man. Just since Jar Jar Binks. And the plot is so erratic it that sometimes did save even anime. Know yeah, it did save it anime. Seriously or not? My father uh, not from free. <laughs> so tell me what you know about these things. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, I mean, it saved anime. Did anime need saving? Arguable, but 
It's still saving anime to this day because it's some of the most hype you can find in anime. Sotsky, fool. I know everything about scissoring. What? You heard me. In the rest of the anime world, oh, Log Horizon, Log Horizon. an anime about a group of gamers trapped Log in a video Horizon. game hearing. This started a whole new genre of anime <laughs> I like to call Not Sword Art Online. It's Not Sword Art Online. No, really, it's Not Sword Art Online. Look, in the original TV trailer, they even hired a guy to talk about how much this isn't Sword Art Online. This is a Not a Sword Art Online. Our nostalgia drive to set to over 9000 as the Pokemon <laughs> Origin oh special God. came out and followed that the storyline of the well. original Red and Blue game. Game, giving a breath of fresh air oh. to the franchise. Woo. As for once in our lives, we Ready can for the cancellation, see a guys. trainer who can catch Pokemon <laughs> and win battles, rather than following the miscellaneous adventures of Ash, Misty, and Black Mexican Asian guy. Lose for the thousandth episode. It was memorable not because we get to relive the days when we played Pokemon for the first time, not just because Johnny Young Bosch wins the award for miscast dub voice. I remember this. I remember this. I remember this. Because I remember of Charmander's this. death scream that, for a second, made you forget that you are watching a happy-go-lucky children's show about fictional. Mo <laughs> yeah. Okay, I, re I remember this clip. I remember this clip. <laughs> okay. <laughs> does, any does anyone remember this clip that I'm about to play? <laughs> does, does anyone remember this clip that I'm about to play? <sighs> okay. <laughs> Just... <laughs> I, I remember watching this for the first time. And I, I was just like, what? What? What is? What is this? What is this Pokemon? What the fuck, man? All right, let me let me show you. Death scream that for a second made you forget that you are watching a happy-go-lucky children's show about fictional monsters and not some depraved advert for animal cruelty. <laughs> yeah. I just love Red's confused face here as he stands there thinking, this is probably hurting him. But I'm not sure. <laughs> bro, bro is dying. He's dying, man. <laughs> that that would. Oh my god. That would um. That would scar a kid. Imagine, imagine you're watching Pokemon. You're like. Oh, mom, I'm watching Pokemon. Oh, look at this. It's cute. It's cute Charmander. That's my first Pokemon. And you just see him fucking dying. You see him dying right there, man. <laughs> man, all, I, all I'll say is uh, the voice, the voice actor or actress, they've, they, they fucking killed it, man. That, that was that was a guttural scream, man. I, f I felt that scream. Kyokai no Kanata came out to the sound of hundreds of Glee and Kyoto animation fanboys claiming that this time, the studio would show everyone that they could tell a serious, dark story about demons and superhumans that wouldn't just boil down to animating cute girls pandering to the otaku fanbase like they always do. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> they they had they had an idol dance in this in this action show for like no random reason. I st I still get recommended this dance on YouTube as like a random clip every now and again. <laughs> they said with a posed look. Kuroko no Basket and Hajime no Ippo released sequels to two of my favorite sports anime of all time. And finally, Microsoft once again tried to convince the world that Internet Explorer is a legitimate web browser that can oh, actually they be did used make... by people other than technologically retarded plebs and your mom. They did make a, uh, they, they did make a PV of this, didn't they? This time an anime in which the browser was characterized- Now this is, this is what, this is how you prove that you just slap an anime girl on anything and then instantly i'm interested i'm like hmm maybe i should use internet explorer now remember, remember a this cute magical school girl <laughs> fighting evil it was a fun little animation that might have actually convinced a few people on their stance with internet explorer Oh god mm. damn it. In terms mm. of anime movies in 2013, oh Koto Shinkai makes another visual masterpiece in Garden of Words, which looks equally a treat for the eyes as his previous work, five anime wallpapers per second. While Japanese Walt Disney Hayao Miyazaki finishes his latest feature film, The Wind Rises, just before announcing his retirement from filmmaking at the ripe young age. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. There were some things that did not age well in this video. I think this arguably as is the thing that has aged the worst in this video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ten, year, 10 years later. 10 years later. Um, 10 years later and he's announcing retirement again, right guys?
age of about 197 <laughs> years old. We've also had our fair share of big franchise films coming out this year. Berserk finally finished its trilogy of films set in the PS2 CG dimension with Descent, being one of the most graphic and gross animated films I've ever seen. Shonen fans rejoice as Dragon Ball Z returned in Battle of Gods, where we not only get to see a new Super Saiyan form, but also Vegeta dancing in hilarious out of character fashion, as the entire audience replies, Go home Vegeta, you're drunk. After that cliffhanger at the end of the OVA, the Steins get movie- Oh my god, they did revive Battle of Gods that year, didn't they? That was 2013? Yeah, I fuck I fucking know, right? Oh my god. <laughs> was released in the disappearance that was of Akabe Suzumiya. Well, that's not the exact title of the film, but that might as well be what it was called. Giving fans almost nothing we wanted by making an hour and a half movie. Wait, was this, was no this a Steins Gate movie? Go home, Vegeta. Oh yeah, it was, the, drunk. It was a Steins Gate movie. After that at the end of the OVA, the Steins Gate movie was released in the disappearance of Okabe Suzumiya. Well, that's not the exact title of the film. But I don't think, well I don't remember a single called. thing about Giving this film. Giving fans almost nothing we wanted by making an hour and a half movie where almost no plot or character development happens. And a much hyped third movie Noka Magical movie came out in theaters, causing much controversy. I didn't realize it's been 10 years. It's been 10 years since <laughs> Rebellion. It's been 10 years. Oh my god. It's been, it's been 10 years since Rebellion. And we're finally, we're finally getting another movie, guys. We're finally getting another movie. <laughs> between his fans. Not that I've actually seen it myself yet, I've just heard from the lucky few who have. Speaking of controversy, the world finally got a chance- <laughs> Stop! Stop! There ain't- there ain't no way that Ava 3 aired this year! Stop! And there ain't no way! And we just saw it come to an end, what, last year? Last year? <laughs> I knew in my head how long it had been, but re-watching this has made me fully realized, hearing me excitedly go, Ava 3, man, Ava 3, let's go, let's go, baby, Ava 3, oh my god. Oh. To see Hideaki Anno's latest attempt to masturbate himself in front of audiences worldwide in Evangelion 3.0. The movie, which once again reminded everyone that Evangelion was in fact Evangelion. Of course it wouldn't be simple. Of course it wouldn't be all sunshine and rainbows. And of course, Anna really doesn't care what you want. After the epic ending of yep. 2.0, yep. everyone was wondering how the third movie could possibly <laughs> top that. So what other way was there aside from throwing a spanner in the works and making sure that everyone has no idea what the fuck is going on? Not only that, but it also treated us to one of the most beautiful and gayest scenes in anime history. Gayer than glowing pink nipples. Gayer than a group of guys stripping in front of each other and skinny dipping. Gayer than two gay guys having a gay kiss. This was the time we got to see Shinji oh, play Oh, it was the gay the scene, piano sure scene, Anna okay. Transcend <laughs> okay. <laughs> see? This scene? Fucking goaded, man. What, what a goaded scene. What what a fucking goaded scene, man! And I, I ain't saying that in gay in any kind of derogatory term. This this is full on Pride Month fucking gay, and I fucking love this shit, man. With the choker as well, with the choker. Woo! God damn. Heaven itself. It was superb. It was wonderful. It was absolutely magnificent for reasons I cannot explain. But Pop off, it King. Was Pop off. You know, you know it, you know it, man. So that about covers everything that mattered to me in 2013. It's been a titan of a year that's given us laughs, given us controversy, and most of all, given us a good time. Which is why 2013 gets a final Anime Zone rating of 30 gay piano scenes out of 10. Would bang tits or get the fuck out. So with that, I hope you guys have had a great new year as we can start getting hyped over everything coming up in 2014. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, Sword Art Online is coming back, guys. Sword Art Online is coming back. Who could have imagined Sword Art Online coming back? I'm sure it was only going to make waves. Let me see. Uh... <laughs> Hey guys, hope you're having a great new year and thank for 200,000 subs? 200,000 subs? What do I look like? What's my hairstyle? Oh, there it is. <laughs> There's the Sasuke hair.
<laughs> that is the Sasuke hair. Oh, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Shit. I kind of I kind of want to go through all of the years now. <laughs> all right. I don't remember anything that came out in uh, 2014. So let's see how I covered it. Oh joy, another year gone by, another year of anime to talk about. Ah, I sound so young. I sound so young. Oh, good old anime zone time. Look, about. look, there's still the AZ in the corner. Oh, 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 oh still the AZ. Oh. Not just in the world of anime, but just about everywhere else. Scotland decided to vote no for independence, not just because of the long-term implications, but most likely since... <laughs> oh, Scotland. Oh my God. <laughs> so old. <laughs> I bet they regret that one, right? Braveheart was not televised on Scottish TV the day before. World Cup fever started for every area around the world to care about except for North America. An Ebola panic hit Africa, causing millions of people around the world to prepare and secretly hope that this was the start of the inevitable zombie apocalypse. In the world of the internet, Twitch plays Pokemon gave the most frustrating game of Pokemon- Oh my god! Oh, oh my god, I'm so old. Oh, this this was the shit. This actually to this day nothing has cracked nothing has quite gripped me as much as just seeing this unfold uh in front of my eyes. A million computers to a million monkeys and one game like of the, the, red, do, you, do you remember the like do you, do you remember the narrative that came out of this? That was like the most insane thing to think about. How fast as Ash Ketchum ever could while doing it with 10% less retardation. One guy took it upon himself to give some impromptu life advice on live news broadcasts. Fuck it right now, pussy. And the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge became a worldwide sensation, causing millions of people around the world to pour ice water over their heads and face the absolute terror of brief, mild discomfort. But of Holy course, we're here shit. to talk about anime. The All Ice the Bucket Challenge! That define the year for us. As always, I didn't watch everything but this is everything that mattered to me so let's rewind back to the winter season while our faces were still fresh hopes were still high as the anime world started their new year off with best girl of the anime 2014 oh what was it what was it oh this was the nisekoi year this was the nisekoi year <laughs> <laughs> This year's tournament fell down to Nisei Koi with another group of girls competing for the lucrative prize of Best Girl 2000! Oh, I, I was so invested in this, man. I was so invested. Team Chitoge all the way. All the way, this baby. Battle, who could effectively blush harder to win our hearts over. And what a heated competition it was this year as friends fought, family split, and countries went to war as different factions could not agree over who deserved a happy ending. You had Chitoge for the masochistic gits who like... Right, I'm gonna... I'm gonna... I'm gonna put I'm gonna put something on screen just so people watching will know what year we are. <laughs> Cause I, if I tuned into this, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know what uh, <laughs> what year this is. Uh... <laughs> Whoops. All right, there we go. <laughs> God, I'm old. I like to be dominated by the Cinderay master race. Onodera, if you like your submissive bitches who are useless by themselves. Tsugumi, if you're in denial, cheering for someone who has no chance of winning. Ruri, if you just want to be a hipster. Or Tachibana, if you're attracted to cunts. Though none of this will matter as it looks like the final result. <laughs> did, did, is there, was there, is there a single Tachi, what was her name again? Is there a single fan of this, this fucking bitch? Tachibana is was was there. Does anyone here now still want to claim her? Anyone? Anyone at all? Any any brave souls out there? Me? Okay, okay. There are the people with bad taste. I see you guys. <laughs> you are, you have the bad taste. We're coming in now, and in a surprise turn of events, it looks like the real winner here is Virginity. In the rest of the winter season, Studio Bones. No bitches was still a joke all back all in 2014. It still hits now, baby. The animated action adventure show that really deserved more episodes. Buster didn't stop there as they did the double with Space Dandy. An anime oh, whose entire shit. comedic writing involves control pacing the word boobies into a script. But apart from that. I feel like when I made this video, I didn't fully appreciate how good Space Dandy is and was. 
and I feel like I only grew to appreciate it more over time. It was a fun show, having a wide variety of interesting episodes. Although yes, the boobies joke was definitely overused and put me off initially. Which I guess you could say was pretty dandy. Space dandy, ha! Fuck me, that was funny, I'm out. Get the fuck Super out. Super Sonico told the heartfelt story of an unfortunate Super girl- Super Sonico! ...with engraved in her skull. Forcing <laughs> this is- this is the original figure seller, man. This is the original figure seller. Sleep with it, sleep with it. I was no wedge as a shoddy attempt to advertise merchandising who appeal boils down to... Headphones, Studio Dean gifted us with the horror anime Pupa. Anime oh, so shit. horrible they can only give every episode of This is like one of the time. worst rated anime of all time now. Of, oh, okay, so uh, this is a pretty interesting opening. Oh my god! That was strangely unsatisfying. From the leftovers of the fall season, Golden Time gave us. <gasps> we had Golden Time! Peak Romance came out this year! Fucking Peak Romance came out this year, man! Oh! The standout romance drama story, which I think this is still my favorite romance anime of all time. Uh, I know it has faults, but subjectively, this is still peak romance for me. Painfully close to home to many real life relationship problems, giving a reminder of the real challenges. Ghost Boundary? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, what are we talking about? What the fuck's Ghost Boundary? I don't remember. It's been so long since I've seen. I don't. People acting so fucking stupid. I don't know what Ghost Boundary is. Nagino Asakara as well. Beautiful worlds I've ever seen in an anime series, telling a heartfelt story that was one part Anunnaki to Maturu and one part Anahara, right down to the cute, innocent girl character that is perfect in every way and can do nothing wrong. I feel like this would have hit me harder um there there's a problem with shows when there is a girl like this and i look at i look at this girl and i'm like oh this is just try hard member you know and i feel like if i didn't see anahana beforehand i would have judged this more based on its own merits <sighs> AKA Moe Jesus. Kuroko no Basket continued to impress me in overly friendly metrosexual men tossing their balls in each other's face, the anime. The sports animes that became universally loved by actually making basketball exciting while being just gay enough to attract the Tumblr demographic you think is- I, this, this is really weird to see in 2014 because it's weird to think that before free, Sports anime just had a totally different demographic to them, aside from maybe Slam Dunk in Asia. You know, it, it almost felt like sports anime um, only appealed to guys and then Free came out and they were like, wait, we can make guys sexy and have them appeal to both guys and girls at the same time? Strong stare from Benedict Cumberbatch to Martin Freeman means he wants to suck some dick. But of course, these shows were largely ignored as Kill the Kill continued his gallant crusade of saving anime. I mean, yeah. So hyped by everyone, it also went on to save global warming, curing AIDS, and starving children in third world. Do you guys, countries. do you guys think yes, that uh, Kill, Kill the Kill has aged well? Do you guys think Kill the Kill has aged well? Even if opinions were mixed, was <sighs> it awesome? Was it retarded? Was it? Does awesome it still retarded? age well and for you guys? Most importantly, was yes. Marco a good character? No. What I think I think it's only gotten better with age, man. Anime's fan service. I mean, was this just gratuitous fan service, or was it a deeper metaphor about the over-sexualization of women in the media, while giving a real message about female empowerment, the male gaze, and there's Ragyo finger banging her daughter in a bathtub. I remember this scene. I remember. <laughs> and let's check the way status of this. <laughs> what the and fuck, yeah, man? I remember. We definitely lost our way, everyone. As spring starts. <laughs> I totally blanked on that scene. <laughs> I totally blanked. I totally forgot that scene until just now. I totally forgot that scene existed, man. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, maybe some uh, age well, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, everything I remember about Kill the Kill has age well. Yeah, um, yeah, it, it definitely aged. All right. Started to bloom, the Kill the Kill hype train finally came to a halt, and everyone was ready for a breather, but had no idea where to look. What new adventures were we in for? Oh, what new worlds would we see? We needed our lives back, and something needed to come along to get this year kickstarted. Game Hospital. Oh! This, this might be weird. This, this is a weird experience for me, guys. I know how it is for you guys, because uh, I don't know how much you guys watch my content. I don't, this is so old. I don't remember what I wrote or what I wrote about or how I wrote. I'm kind of like coming into this completely fresh as well. <laughs> I, I, I genuinely, I'm like, yo, Gaunt did the thing. He did the thing. 
the current popular trend of making anime set in video it's been so long man i don't even remember what i worked on sword art online versus mortal kombat annihilation no game no life came out of the perfect time to capitalize on such popularity by creating a world where all wars and conflicts are solved by games oh this is so much fun sora along with his adorable little sister who is not related by blood as they try and conquer this world together actually yeah remember 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 what i put emotos and incels on trope this is this is one of the prime examples of why it's shit, guys. This is... <laughs> I'm like, what What did this add to the show? What did this add to the show? This is just bare bones basic. Oh, oh, Oni-chan. Oh, oh. Oh, Oni-chan. Horrible little sister who is not related by blood as they try and conquer this world together as a pair because they love each other very much. No Orimo. The real selling point of the show was the <laughs> unique rules of each game. Nothing was as simple as it first looked with complex strategies and adding magic into the mix which only made things more interesting. Turning a rock, paper, scissor draw into a 10 minute psychological battle and a simple game of chess that got so convoluted it essentially went something along the lines of Knight to B6, to e Queen smashes Queen of chess. chess. <laughs> Which made the show a lot of fun and hella and ironically that was the most hype episode though. That was, that, that was the most hype episode. <laughs> Predicting, but it really was just that. You watched to see how our main pair would bend the rules to victory, which mainly boiled down to using the ultimate hacks item, a fucking iPhone. But as smart as it could be, it really was. Isekai like smartphone could never, guys. Could never. Undertone slash fan service it had going on. If you were looking for something a little deeper, then there was a real standout show this season, and nobody even bothered to watch it. Oh yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> Oh shit! Oh, Giga yeah, can taste! Ping pong, the animated, Giga can the taste! The animated epic about ping pong. Guys, it's a show about guys playing ping pong. What the fuck is that? Wait, this aired in the same season as No Game No Life? Fuck. It's weird to think looking back because I do remember when this is airing, nobody was talking about it, and now I think more people have started to appreciate this. But this, no one, everyone was only talking about No Game No Life. Stick with me though. Ping Pong the Animation was a surprise show of the season, which no one gave a shit about because OH MY GOD THE HOSTILE IT BURNS MY EYES But look past that and you have an amazingly well written show Oh What's it's still goaded man, it's still goaded Ping Pong is only used as a platform for what is essentially a character study Every character has different drives, different ambitions and the show's a sometimes painfully <coughs> realistic look at how far you can go with your dreams and aspirations There is not a single protagonist or antagonist as we get to see a glimpse into the lives of these characters as we watch them grow, watch them fall, and watch them win around a game of goddamn ping pong. And we can't help but grow attached to everyone, whether they win or lose. The problem lies with this animation, because aside from the expressive art, which I love, the animation itself was just plain bad at some point. But if you can get- Oh, I was capping. I was- Oh, oh, oh I was- <laughs> I think I was capping, man. <laughs> Maybe I just uh, didn't fully <laughs> appreciate it. I, I don't- <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't think I fully appreciated the vision that Yuasa had. Uh, maybe there were some cuts that were weird, but I don't know. I, I've rewatched it in modern days, not remembering this take and backtracking. Guys, 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 can I, can I, can I not backtrack after nine years of growing up? <laughs> <laughs> Ping pong is goaded, man. Ping pong is goaded. Get past that. <laughs> this was by far the most mature and thought-provoking sports anime I've ever seen. And one of my Do you like Haikyuu more, Ping Pong? I almost, I almost count them as different shows, but I prefer Ping Pong. But they're basically different shows, in my in my opinion. Uh, I don't really count Ping Pong as a sports anime at all. Ping Pong is a life anime. You oh, you are right, but it is definitely one, one of the weaker arcs. Captain Earth. Only for audiences worldwide to be completely disappointed when they realized this was a super robot show and not an anime remake of Captain Planet. But they did gift us with Hitsuki no Chaika, a fantasy <laughs> adventure anime starring a Mario Blob autistic Do you remember how anime. much this was a meme? Do you remember how much this was a, like this meme face? This this is gonna show your age if you remember Chaika's face being used for every single reaction image. But nobody really cares because Oogie Boogie she has rosy cheeks. Shaft returned to give us yet another visually stylistic series based on a Vocaloid song series in Makaku City Actors. Oh, the Vocaloid years. A series that was so Shaft it farted Akiyuki Shinbo's while simultaneously came head tilts. Though that didn't help much. I feel like the Shaft uh, style has kind of died out. I can't remember like. Now I've I've like I made this joke and now I'm thinking is there another modern anime that has this kind of fucking style to it? 
It's like, what the hell? Just because the shaftiness was so concentrated, you literally could not follow the like, story. Like, I can make a joke about this back then, already. but I think the if I made the same joke, no, not, not a single person would know what I'm talking one, about. Which, why the fuck does everyone look like they're drawn by someone high on fucking LSD? Mm. But with so many Vocaloid characters and merchandising coming out, it's easy to forget who started the entire revolution. The original Vocaloid, everyone, T-Pain. Following on from last year's Ruby, Polygon Pictures decided 3D was a viable way to animate Attack on Titan in space. I mean, Knights of Sidonia. I mean... Futuristic sci-fi mecha showcasing stuff from our exciting new feature, such as the instant orgasm button, Rise of the Planet of the Dinner Bear Lady, and romantic <laughs> pee drinking. I do, I do remember that scene. I do remember that scene. <laughs> <laughs> While the show did have very interesting concepts, the 3D was very jarring for a lot of people. Guys, they were trying to survive. They were trying to survive. Um, it just like, it, it, it was a survival situation in space. But uh, I don't know. I, I, what I remember of that scene was it's, they, they didn't need to make a blush when they were doing it, man. Though it did have some standout <laughs> scenes, such as this acceleration scene where thousands of humans dropped to their death in the anime's cheeky attempt to recreate the Copium, though, yeah, 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 sure, yeah, sure. And that about covers off the spring season of games, sports, and fun. Stay tuned for the next part where we get to talk about this year's summer season of loving. Boy loving. Ooh. Hey guys, if you're interested in any of the shows Ooh, I just talked about. Okay, okay. <laughs> as the summer sun shines All right. upon the end. Alright, if you missed the last stream, yes, I did used to upload my yearly recaps in part one and part two because you could get away with it back then. You could do a part one and part two. I mean, community, <laughs> everyone was still waiting for the next new hit. We all needed something to turn up the heat for this anime year. But for a certain group of female fans, this summer could not be hotter. Did, did you guys hear that? Did I just hear a ship? Free season two aired the summer, like free aired in 2013. And then <clears throat> it unironically opened the floodgates, man. The next year of Adelaide had so many sexy men in it. It could not be hotter this summer for female Yaoi fans with the season that blessed us with shows jam-packed in the summertime boys only club. Shonen Hollywood gave us a reverse idol show in Homo Men attempts to be K-pop stars. Black Butler attempted to appease all fans who rage quit up. And this is, was this the last time we've seen Black Butler until now? Holy shit. <laughs> what I will say is that I, I the, all of these shows came out at the same time. These are all shows you would see now as like standard in this season. This this does not stand out now just because of one how many anime there are airing this like in these seasons and uh, number two just because there is proven to be this kind of mark. There is now proven to be this kind of market for these kinds of shows, which just wasn't there when this, uh, when I made this video. After the end of the second season in Homo Butler <coughs> vs. The World, Bakumatsu Rock showed us that electric guitars apparently existed in the Bakumatsu era in Homo Rock Band Plays in Ancient Japan. Dramatic Connor. Proved that the based on a boy <laughs> Yo, it's the 93%. We've proved that it, it, it exists, man. Homo show with no homo. <laughs> and Love Stage had guys worldwide questioning their bonus at the moment it was revealed that this lovely, thin, attractive girl making out with that guy was in fact another guy. Oh, yeah, Hi, but of course, the king of the French shipping, that, abs ripping, no girls allowed action returned to us in free eternal female bonus summer, giving us another summer where the wetness just never ends. Also, moist. We were given more man service, more gay tension, and of course, we were given Officer Rin thrusting his crotch into the wet dreams of a million. Oh, this was all over Tumblr, man. I remember, man. <laughs> I remember the this gift. The time when Haru dropped the soap, the time when he was at the beach performing with Miley Cyrus. Whoa, no, bad. Miley, no girls allowed. But of course, the best part was the uproar that Vic Mignogna got when he was cast as Rin in the upcoming double bit. Ooh. Thousands of angry tweets, posts, Ooh. and even a petition was started stating that Vic Mignogna was too homophobic because he wouldn't.
wouldn't sign Gay Dojinchi. As this, they expected every cast member to, well, to act out their own game <laughs> fanfic. How did that, AJ? <laughs> <laughs> Vic Mignogna, what did you just say? Fist me in the ass, Haruka Nanase. I'm not really comfortable with that, Vic Mignogna. Fist no, me no, in no, the Vic ass, Haruka Nanase. I'm not going to be in the Fist me in the ass, Haruka Nanase. Fist me in the ass, Haruka Nanase. No, I'm not doing it. No, Vic Mignogna, stop. I'm not. No, no. I can't believe Alejandro did that for me, man. debut show, Zankyo no Terra. Is that not Kaki? Uh, me and Kagi go way back, guys. <laughs> we, me, uh, we were, we're both doing official stuff now, guys. <laughs> but we, we, we go, we go, we go, we go a long way back. <laughs> Woo! All right, let's uh, let's get back to this. Studio mapper with their debut show Zankyo no Terra. Alejandro was a real one, he still is a real one, man. Presence with a bang, with one of the most beautiful looking and best directed anime to come out in the year. From Honestly, I think this is underrated. I, to this day, this still has my favorite OST of all time. Um, I feel like the plot was a little messy, but the emotions that this made me feel, this series made me feel, has I only a few series has made me feel the emotions that this this has made me feel, you know? It's sometimes, sometimes I can overlook a messy plot if you just make me fucking feel the emotions that this fucking show made me feel, man. For an anime about terrorism, few shows can claim the grace that this show achieved. As for all the big explosions and loud bangs, the series spoke its loudest during its quietest moments, and it did it amazingly. While it was argued that the writing wasn't always perfect and the characters weren't as fleshed out as they could have been, I found myself overlooking it because I was too immersed in the hyper-realistic style and direction along- oh, fucking I'm, uh, I'm feeling emotional just listening to the soundtrack now, man. <laughs> With a soundtrack that became one of my favorites of all time. Still is, baby. Still is. The amazingly tranquil and unique- I did do that tonight. That's right. In the rest of the summer season, we got some- <laughs> Bro, fuck me! I was enjoying that, god damn it! <laughs> fuck gone! Awful content creator, I was enjoying that! Yo, I was vibing, man, I was vibing! Realistic fighting fun in the horror anime Tokyo Ghoul. And boy, oh, fucking hell, horror? Tokyo Ghoul the came horror. out this year. The horror! The horror of not being able to see fucking anything! Yes, we we went this many years without having unravel in our <laughs> in the weave culture, man. So most importantly, we were given this year's striking bachelor in Tsukiyama. That's right, ladies, he has it all. He knows how to give you a great date, eat you out properly, and he doesn't care no matter what time of the month it is. Okay, now that I look back at Tokyo Ghoul, Tokyo Ghoul is obviously like massive, right? And the manga is great. I don't feel like season one was as good as people remember it to be. I feel like, People now look back at season one and they were like, yo, that was the good season, man. That was the good season. Uh, I think people are remembering that it's better than it was because the season after it was so dog shit, you know? <laughs> it's, good by, it's good by association to the next season, which was absolutely shit. <laughs> He might also be a pedophile. Rail Wars gave us an original concept by giving us a show not about wars or rails, but about trains. Yes, only trains. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Do you remember this? Do you remember this? Oh yeah, I, I have a much more appreciation of, of Rail Wars now that I live in Japan. <laughs> now that I live in Japan, guys. I like trains. Do you like trains? I fucking love trains. Who doesn't love trains? You should like trains. Why don't you like trains? Everyone should love trains. This is a show about trains. It's, 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 guys, it's a show about it's trains. Oh, I don't know, Zero! Not just because of the <laughs> troll cliffhanger ending that got everyone talking, but also because of the great character rivalry that drove everyone on the message. Oh, this is... Oh. On one side, he had... Wait, this is season one. 
Well, this is season one. We thought, we thought he had potential, guys. We thought he had potential. Calm and, well, just keep calm. Someone who always has the answers, whether he's happy, sad, angry, scared, thinking, surprised, constipated, Christian Stewart. Oh, he did. <laughs> he was barely a character, wasn't he? <laughs> a man who's essentially just bad luck Brian disguised as an anime character. Bad luck Brian. So oh I'm still making those references. What? <laughs> <laughs> It did. I, all I remember that show was exactly that, actually. Increase the volume. Do you need me to increase? Is it too low for you guys? I can increase it a little bit. Yes, yes. All right. I'll increase it a little bit then. Light-hearted, feel-good show about self-discovery set in the countryside, starring a likable cast that grow on you with children and actually act like children. AKA, they're annoying little shit. They're adorable little kids who you just want to take care of. Gekun Shoujo Nozaki Kun gave some light-hearted fun in Girl Gets Friend Zoned oh, World shit. Episode Show. Yo, this 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 shit slap. This shit slap. Nozaki Kun, still I like. This was, I think, really... Not many people remember this. I still think it's fucking peak, man. A show which looked boring on paper, but actually surprised the anime community by being a genuinely funny show that pokes fun at the overused tropes seen in a shoujo genre. Many fans were excited for PA Works' next show, Glass Lip, a stunningly looking <sighs> slice of life show that was a bit of a letdown because literally nothing <laughs> happened. With this, I would like to show I remember how hyped episode, I was for this Glass show. Bridged episode one. Because it was by PA Works. Literally and, nothing. And literally Nothing yeah, fucking happens. Yo, sort out of line two. Let's go. <sighs> Let's go. <laughs> now we're fucking talking, man. Now, now we're talking. Entertaining at points. <laughs> Stop me when this doesn't at least sound. Fun. People clown on this, but I was like, I don't know. I was one of the ten people that actually enjoyed Call, Call of Duty Sword Art Online. <laughs> I just like to say it with guns. Oh, yeah, Sword Art Online set in Call of Duty where Kalito, who is now a girl, becomes a Jedi Master fighting in a Battle Royale style tournament against Darth Vader. With a lead heroine, you can do mid-air 720 quick scopes while coming with 90% more camel toe. Fuck it right in the pussy. Yeah, was why would scene? Kalito bring a sword to a gunfight? Because he just lives life on the edge. Living on the edge. Living on the edge. Wait a minute. That's no edge. It's just a comic a kill. Yes, a comic a, a kill. Comic a kill was the season. No the anime community way. with literally edge. So not the one on a comic a season. A comic a kill came out in the same fucking season. With a story seemingly written by a try-hard rebellious teenager <laughs> attempting to impress the cool older kids, crawling in their skin with wounds that will not heal. But honestly, I don't know why fans got so defensive. What a year. 2014 was. I mean, let's be honest. The show was pretty bad, right, guys? Guys? I said oh, shit. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. It's not my fault. I didn't blow your eardrums off. That's just Hiri Samano, guys. I swear to God. That's not my fault, guys. That's just... That's just Samano. <laughs> I remember back in the day, this joke. Uh, if you shit talked a Kamiga kill, you you uh you 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 were done. Uh, the fourteen year old army would get on your ass. <laughs> As the full season came about, there was anticipation in the air. Alright, what was in four? What was in four? About. Many fans were excited for many things. But in all this chaos, chance could be heard from a faraway studio. I am the bone of my wallet. Hype is my body, and money uh, is my blood. I have wasted oh, over a thousand million Oh, now we're, no now we're talking, baby. Now we're talking. I withstood CG dragons to create crappy spin offs, yet they were never satisfied with fake fans. So as I spend, limited budget. Oh, the unlimited budget works, man. Yo, this is still hype, man. This is still hype. <laughs> New fate grace us this season from the godly studio of Euphotable, who proved their dominance once again by raising the bar of animation in a TV production, featuring arguably some of the best looking action scenes in any TV series. Man, it's the good old days where Euphotable was just 
the Fate Studio and uh, nothing else. They <laughs> definitely weren't famous for anything else, guys. <laughs> definitely not famous for anything else. People are <laughs> wondering how deep their pockets were to be able to make such a production. Every single frame of this is so beautifully crafted. <laughs> the Genshin the Studio. <laughs> well, I guess they just like to make it rain all the time. Oh, yeah, Portable, you make it rain. Make it rain all over this production, you Portable. Oh, yeah, just like that, baby. Yeah, baby, you keep making it rain all over this production, okay? Anime got its own version of Invaders of the Body Snap. Oh, in Parasite. Parasite's The Maxim, a sci-fi horror action show featuring a main character with a right hand that can literally shape-shift into anything. No, he doesn't masturbate with it. A very well-rounded <laughs> show featuring some great animation, okay. an interesting story, <laughs> okay, but was, unfortunately it's ruined that. in some tense <laughs> scenes due to the dubstep soundtrack that makes it hard for me to take seriously. Because this is honestly what I see when it kicks in. <laughs> oh my fucking god! I do remember that scene where the dubstep kicks in when he like fucking catches the rock. <laughs> fucking MLG days, man. Oh. <laughs> classical music nerds were given their classical music bonus in Your Line April. Your Line April is this year as well? Doing so far, God fucking damn. More than one way. It really has everything going for it from a touching story, half failed characters, gripping romances, and concert scenes so well done and beautifully executed, you'd find yourself clapping along to recorded performances, despite the fact that it was a fake concert and most people have no interest in classical music whatsoever. Apparently, Tokyo Ghoul wasn't bad enough as Terraformers perfected the art of censorship so bad it turned ridiculously hilarious. With this in mind, I would like to present you Pan's professional guide to censoring like Terraformers. Step this is one. the Open worst up censorship I've Step ever two. seen in my life, Sense I think. All parts, don't want the kiddies to see in black. Step, Step three. three. Censorship complete. You now have a completely oh, family my missile friendly drawing. show. Shirobako <laughs> gave us a very interesting insight into the inner workings of anime production. Oh, Shirobako is this year as well? an animated documentary in making anime. Featuring some characters who are modeled after real people in the industry. It showed us that even a professional production mimics every group project you've ever done in school. There's the one who does 99% of the work, the one who has uh, no idea This is idea a pretty good year on. as well, man. Maybe every anime year is just going to be good. The two who <laughs> Maybe we're not going to find a bad year for anime. Done, and the only time that anyone is ever productive is the night before the deadline. Studio Mappa continued their track record of visually stunning and well-directed shows with Shingeki no Bahamut. Being based in Ah, uh, Studio game, Mappa's man, early... Kind of <laughs> the early days of Studio Mappa, guys. We remember this. ...fancy adventure show that was directed in a similar fashion to that seen in Hollywood blockbuster films. Log Horizon returned to give us yet another year of featuring the MMO game where the most important skill you could ever possess is pushing your glasses slightly up. It continued right where it left off with a well thought out world that was far better written than it was animated. And all it was really missing was some crazy Korean commentary to spice up the PvP battle scenes. I think when I made this video, I didn't fully the internet or the anime community was still in the vibe that Log Horizon was just a trying to catch up, uh, trying to cash in on Sword Art Online's popularity. We didn't know what the fuck we were talking about. The shit, the shit was so good, especially season one. <clears throat> uh, OG fucking Korean Lee commentary, man. <laughs> <laughs> this was also an important year for long-running shonens as Hunter x Hunter finally finished its four-year run, treating us to some of the finest offerings the shonen genre has ever seen. Whether for you're a Hunter x Hunter not, finished this, this year? top shows to come out in 2014, <clears throat> as it sports an amazingly well-developed world, characters, and plot that relies on far more than your usual God minus damn. action you see in shonen. And on the other side of the spectrum, Naruto The Last Movie came out in theaters. <laughs> the last The last movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 the last movie. <laughs> <laughs> Coinciding with the final chapter being published, marking the end of an era as kids could no longer get ninjas confused with overpowered mages practicing magic with sign language. In the mainstream media, Hatsune Miku made her debut on US national television on The David Letterman Show, <laughs> performing in front of an audience who had no idea what they were this looking did at. Happen. And a bewildered David Letterman who was probably thinking, <laughs> Look at her, she, she, she waved at me. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is up with these Chinese cartoons? And finally, from the creator of Evangelion <gasps> oh, himself, shit, came a me, short me, film me which blew up the internet. Do you remember how much this took over? This is the first time I saw people reacting to anime online, man. The anime community for a while in me, me, 
me the short that everyone initially dismissed as porn that became that weird video you showed to your friends for a reaction that became the too deep for you discussion that came with anything Hideki Anno touches with reactions ranging from it's fapping time see this is why I don't watch <laughs> anime kidding. yeah yeah oh 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 Oh. Dude, I'm so high. Still fapping time. That's a nipple. The film is this is, this, a this is just anime community, man. Lifestyle. It's not really about the nudity, but it's a deeper message for the girls being a symbol about the inherent dangers of being obsessed with 2D anime and porn. Hashtag be right back. Imagine just fapping to this. Don't ask me. I've got no fucking clue. Pretty, pretty Whatever much. It, you, it cemented the year that gave us more shit waifu. I, I still think if Mimi Me didn't come out back then and came out today, I swear to God, this shit would be all over TikTok. Uh, that video was fucking made for internet virality, man. I swear to God. More dandy, more plot, more trains, more poop ah, uh, more jika, more daylight pedophilia, more edge, more vocaloids, more works of enemy stands, more balls, more Captain Planets, more mispronunciations of Bryn Hilda, more games, no life, more 9-11 bait, more smelly periods, more pong, more guys playing with their balls, more girls playing with their cocks, more gay overtones, more gay overtones, more, more, more gay overtones. What a fucking year this was, man. Gay, what, what a fucking more year this was. Fags, more MLG soundtracks, less CG dragons. More trips on the field trains, more girls being friend zones, more Shingeki, not Kyojin. More MS Paint censorship, more Jesus, more database, more David Letterman being confused as fuck, more controversial cleavage, and many more great years of anime to come. That was 2014 in anime, so thank you and good night. Wait, what do you mean New Year's was months ago? I was meant to get this video out then. What's the date now? Oh, oh, son of a... <laughs> well, that was 2014 in anime. That was still pretty fucking goaded. Uh, and that last joke, uh, that this was this was made in my BBC days, guys. <laughs> this was this was made in my BBC days. But you know what? You know what? I still committed to it. I still finished it. Doesn't matter when it came out, man. <clears throat> Oh, I don't know what's actually better. What year is better out? Oh, fuck, this is so hard. This is so hard. Top anime 2014. Okay, I, this is just stacked looking back as well. And... I think 2013 just might be a little bit more. It's, it's so hard. It's so hard. Oh. Oh. Oh, this is going to get even harder, isn't it? Now, 2014 clears. I think they're both about equal. Although... <sighs> I, I think looking back, a lot of these shows got way, way more popular. I think 2014 just edges it out. Um, even though 2013 had a lot of bangers. Because um, some of my favorites anime came out in this year. So, and some, some anime f aged wonderfully as well. And then there was also Out Noah Zero, which... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Which, <whew. laughs> well, we don't talk about that. All right, all right. 2014 on top right now. Question is, oh no, as the sum is this not a playlist? Is this is not a goddamn playlist. All right. Uh, do I need to order dinner? Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna order dinner. Is it bad? I need, I need more sugar, right? Mm, there's a bit more sugar. <laughs> mm -hmm. So my videos are blocked in Japan. So, <clears throat> wait, what, what year are we on? 2015? So I literally gotta pull it up on my own fucking channel. <laughs> Express. Now I can still watch my. Well, well, well. I can still watch my shit, guys. I just need to search for it on my own channel through the Creator Studio. Yeah. <sighs> All right.
Well, for me, 2014 just about edges it out so far. Don't know about you guys, but we're about to hit 2015 now. So, this was One Punch Man, yeah? Which I just remembered now, thanks to this. Um, but let's see what else aired in this year. Oh, we say this every time, but the end of the year has creeped up on us so ever quickly. So who wouldn't want to reminisce and look back on what we faced in 2015? Throughout the year, the entire world was poised for World War III as tensions increased in the- Change the stream title? What is the stream title? Oh, from 20- I'm just going to change the title to watching every anime rewind. <laughs> <laughs> the Middle East, America challenged Japan to a giant robot fight in what looks to be the most epic episode of Robot Wars ever. And most importantly, everyone freaked the I remember out that. The of what fucking happened? Oh, this was the dress year? The fucking dress in shocking events that saw the collective IQ of the internet plummet for a while. It's... it's, it's it's blue slash black. It's it's blue. It's blue. It's, was it's it white and, and gold or blue and black? The question was so puzzling <clears> that scientists worldwide had to band together, working uniformly to calculate the exact amount. They of proved it was black and blue, blue, guys. They Prime proved David it. Was it was scientifically proven, guys. Mouth during his university. Why are we still in arguing this shit? It was said that it was the most degrading thing I have ever done, and it was a life mistake I'd rather forget <laughs> about. Stated the pig. And of course, those dastardly terrorists at ISIS continue to bring terror. I can't believe the world we're still arguing. I can't believe. You guys are not trusting science, guys. Come on, guys. For science. Seen as one of the most promising presidential candidates of all time. Just behind George W. Bush, this bald eagle, and a piece of turd. But of course, we're here to celebrate the worst, the worst, and the worst. Wait, 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 wait. Did I just, did, did I just say what I think I said? Hair. Who, in surprising news, was seen as one of the most promising presidential candidates of all time, just behind George W. Bush. <laughs> oh, that aged poorly, didn't it? Oh, that aged poor so poorly. This bald eagle. That aged so turn. poorly. But well, of course, we're here to celebrate the best, the worst, <laughs> and the weirdest moments of anime that defined the year. Oh. So today, you're the anime. Remember the time today? when it was like, when it was like, guys, this is 2015. Oh, 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 who, who is this person running for president? Oh, 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 oh. Uh. Wasn't that sarcasm? Yeah, this was sarcasm uh, in the sense of there was no way I saw him winning. Once again, rewind back to nor did, ev nor did anyone. As we start off with some funky, upbeat goodness about people dying. Oh, let's go! <laughs> This year started off with an unequivocal bang with Madhouse's release of Death Parade, the show that managed to trick the entire anime community into falling into an existential crisis while they were busy putting their hands up to funk. The anime asked the question of how a person acts when pushed to their mental <laughs> Yo, this is and peak, by man. To play a game okay, now we were. Uh, their lives on the line. What the characters don't know is <laughs> every, every second sentence in this is like, yo, this is peak, this is peak. <laughs> and it's just like, it's just gonna be like this for every year, I swear to God. That they are actually in the afterlife, and their actions during this game will decide whether they are sent to either heaven or hell. It was an interesting premise that managed to explore all different directions of your moral compass without ever being too preachy. And it's one of the few shows that allows you to reflect on your own life. Are you satisfied with it? Or is there an undercurrent of dismay as you slowly realize the insignificance of your own existence traveling towards an unavoidable death as you're trapped living the nine to five crime with no escape? But who cares about that? Everybody push your hand. <laughs> so true, so true King, pop off. <laughs> so true, King. What a banger. What a banger this opening is. Can we just can we just like appreciate that this opening is still a banger in 2023? It's still a banger, man. It's still a fucking banger. What a banger. To match, solid writing, great visuals, and one of the most beautiful scenes to come out in the past few years. And you have one of the best animes to come out in the year, along with one of the best openings. Speaking of this opening, can we talk about Bradio? Let's talk about Bradio. I fucking love Bradio. Can we listen to Bradio? Let's listen to Bradio. Bradio, Bradio, Bradio. I just want to fuck. Fucking touch his hair. As far as the Sydney touched his hair in her so Sydney did a interview with Bradio and she touched his hair and I am so jealous. I just I just I just 
<laughs> I just want to know what it feels like, man. I just, oh, I'm so fucking jealous, man. The rest it's of not fair. This season, the Studio Wit attempted their best Studio Trigger impression with The Rolling Girls. A show which oh, I remember this. Kill the Kill, the cast of Love Life set in a world coloured entirely by Skittles. Can't I Collection had a unique way of showing respect to old wartime battleships by representing them as scantily dressed. Ah, oh, Can't I Collection. Ah, oh, this is a 2015 video. Definitely a 2015 video. As cute lesbian girls in a plotline that saw fleets of these old wartime machines combating alien creatures invading from the sea which can mean only one thing. Yo, this is back when Pacific Rim exactly. just came out. Concept, but how could you not look at these marvels of naval engineering and not... No. Oh, there's there's the chica face. There, see, see, there's the chica face. There, there it is, right there. Oh, you want to put your dick in it. It's so obvious, in fact, that the opening already knew what viewers would be doing after seeing the show. <laughs> oh my... I forgot! Well, I forgot about that opening! After a five year gap, we spoke to the anime community, as they can now speculate which mythical things actually have a chance of existing, such as Half-Life 3, Evangelion 4.0, and the female orgasm. Check your cool- Wait, wait, did I just say things that never, it will never exist? <laughs> oh, 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 don't you just look, don't you just love seeing what has aged well and what has aged badly? As they can now speculate which mythical things actually have a chance of existing, such as Half Life 3, Evangelion 4.0, <laughs> and the female. Well, actually, it was Ava 3.0 plus 1. Up, us one of the most beautiful and moving soundtracks this year to accompany a plot that slowly sailed down into a piece of Crab Street that built up to an action packed climax that saw one man taking a 10 hour Still got a banger OST With the out of nowhere. Diverting from the manga, it gave us such a shockingly bad adaptation that fucked viewers so hard, you can now. Now watch the entire series on Pornhub. This isn't a joke, it's it's really there. Speaking of Pornhub. <laughs> I remember that phase. There was a phase where Pornhub was just full of uh anime re-uploads. You you guys might not remember this, but there was there was a time when you could upload anything to Pornhub and people did upload anything. They just uploaded anime episodes. Kofuku Graffiti showed us a world that would exist if you could Netflix and chill with your food. In a show that Brazzers would make if they ever decided to make a cooking show. The anime oh, brought you could never. the word food porn, as ignoring the fact that these girls were apparently taught how to eat in blowjob school, the food was sometimes cooked so suggestively, I often got the distinct impression that it was trying to seduce <laughs> this, this, was, this was the prequel to Shokugeki, I swear to God. <sighs> Stop teasing me, you dirty whore. Saikano gave a very interesting message. Oh, Saikano! By taking a character written like an actual real person and inserting them in a cast full of character tropes. And of course, there was Out Noah Zero Season 2, the train wreck I cannot talk about without spoiling the first season. So for See, we had. If you did not know what Out Noah Zero is, if you're coming into this blind, we had hope that this was going to be a good show. We, we, we ge genuinely had hope. It ended on a hell of a cliffhanger in Season 1. And then season two came along, man. Those of you who haven't seen it, click this <laughs> button right here. <laughs> ah, it's it's okay. I now, don't mind spoiling those of you anymore. Who don't remember the first season cliffhanger <laughs> that ended with two people shot in the head and one person shot full of bullet holes. Who could have known that the second season would have started off with such a twist? Yes, the dramatic scene. <laughs> this man got shot in the head. Everyone got shot in the head. And everyone and the series was like, actually, JK, we're all alive, baby. Ending was immediately <laughs> rendered obsolete by a season start to prove that people don't only die when they are killed, but apparently people don't die if they are shot in the fucking head. Which set the standard for the series to just go downhill from there. Inaho became an unstoppable terminator, owning everyone with his immeasurable swag, <laughs> and bad luck slain devolved from his innocent shell into full blown cunt. With this, the show managed to jump the shark so high it could clear into interstellar orbit. Oh wait, higher than that. No, keep keep going. Wait, how, how long is this gonna go? Oh, oh okay, thank you. That makes sense. As the spring season started to bloom, <sighs> everyone had to finally put their hands down and wait for the hot new show. Oh to no, come out no, I'm still but putting my hands up, baby. That the hot new thing would come all packaged and wrapped up in neat blue.
I feel bad. Uh, the people you just saw <laughs> are the only time that they've ever appeared in my video. And uh, those uh, are... Uh, that was my co-worker from the BBC. <laughs> That was my co-worker from the BBC. I, this was back when I was working in the BBC. And I was asking, hey, do you mind appearing in a random video of mine? Uh, it's, it's okay though. He was, uh, he was actually the best man at my wedding. So, so, so that's the only time he's ever appeared in one of my video. But shout out to him. Don Munchie was the show that everyone was talking about because, oh my God, there's a girl with big boobs and is held up with fucking strings. Sparking a phenomenon that saw Hestia sweep the entire anime community, showing that a show doesn't even need to be good as long as there's something for people to latch onto. Okay, actually, season four though, and <laughs> I, I know I'm, I know I'm doing that. I know I'm doing that meme. I'm, I'm absolutely doing that meme though. But fucking season four, holy shit! How is it going this hard? How did it go that hard? What the fuck? What the actual fuck? Like, I, I, I wasn't expecting this. I, I was not. Morals of coaching. We still got a last inning. Giving us a handful of Yo, time out, time out. We still got time left. That's to be expected from a plot that had more counter metaphors than a bronze five game in League of Legends. This season from the oh, yeah, of people League die when they are killed. <laughs> came the hit new remake. The archer class is really made up of archers. And its sequel. Just because you're correct doesn't mean you're right. Yes, face day night unlimited boner wanks continue towards this conclusion what? of poorly translated scenes what did in you an say? adaptation <laughs> that would inevitably leave visual novel fans some Something to complain about. The food porn train continued as Shokugeki no Soba perpetuated more scenes of girls discovering they could have sexual intercourse with their food. Unlike Kofuku Graffiti though, it managed to blend in food porn with exciting tournaments and imaginative recipes, resulting in a unique blend of wit- Kofuku Graffiti walked so Food Wars could run, man. <laughs> what did it add? It added tournament arcs. And then that was the secret ingredient that it needed. Weird fan service that featured the longest physically impossible boo bounce in recent memory, and an entertaining competitive cooking show that was only missing Gordon Ramsay shouting at people every five minutes to spice things up. I would have fired you fucking 16 years ago! You, 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 and fucking you! <laughs> Ori Monogatari gave a heartfelt story about oh, how to date a girl Oh, my love story was this one? Dick sucking height for you. If your dick will even fit in her mouth. It was a genuinely funny and touching romance between two characters so innocently naive that entire story arts can be dedicated to characters feeling guilty about having dirty, impure thoughts. Like holding hands and cuddling. Yeah, I bet you want to call him by his first name too, you thirsty. Dirty bitch. And finally, Studio Trigger managed to troll the entire anime world by teasing a new original <laughs> epic following its success. <laughs> fucking DGENs, am I right? <laughs> fucking DGENs. Presumably, from animation was put in huge sarcastic quotations. Oh, uh, remember how big show. of a troll this was? Do you, I, I can't. If you don't know what this was, this was. This was Trigger's show after they made Kill the Kill. Um. And it had this trailer that made it look like it was an actual by show. By teasing a new original epic following its success. Yeah, this was the trailer. Ninja Slayer from animation. Presumably <laughs> and then this was the show we got. <laughs> from animation was put in huge sarcastic quotation marks <laughs> as the entire show looked like it was animated using a combination of MS Paint, cardboard cutouts, and the tears of Scrooge. Honestly, looking back now, it was actually a pretty funny show. It was, it was, actually, it was actually a pretty funny show. Trigger fans, in response to all the accusations that the actual budget was wasted on hookers and blackjack, a representative from Studio Trigger had this to say. Photoshop animation? Yo, that's how, that's how good it's to get Studio Trigger is. All you need is Photoshop to make a good show, man. <laughs> and that basically sums up half a year of everyone putting their hands up and a lifetime supply of string rooms. Join me next time when we discuss the summer of girls and the man who can give you the most epic fist bump Aww. ever. Is it hey guys, All right. All right. Next video, which I have to search for. Fresh. All right. Well, I've been drinking, guys. So, uh, piss break time. BRB.
Oh, guys, my wife bought me more beer. <laughs> my, <laughs> my wife bought me more beer, guys. <laughs> God, I don't know why... <clears throat> I don't know why I'm having such a fucking fun time uh, literally re-watching shit that I made. Um, maybe I am a YouTuber, because that sounds kind of narcissistic to me. But... Ah, fuck's sake. It's fucking nostalgic. <laughs> it is, it's fucking nostalgic, man. <laughs> it is nice to uh, go through memory lane. <laughs> you okay, honey? Yeah. You okay? Yeah. Need help? No. What's going on? Nothing. I'm just watching something. Okay. You watching something spicy? No, it's just... I'm meeting for the first time after talking to each other online for years. Aww. Reminds me of us. Oh, well, here's the mom. All right, on to 2015. Anime in 2015, part two. After the entire anime community had gotten over being wrapped up with blue string boobs, everyone was ready to let Hestia go and allow a new fad to take over. Right, what was this Apparently, year? What was the big thing of summer? As this hot summer season got invaded by the devil itself. I know what this is. I know what this is. Can you guess what this is? Can you guess what this is? Can you guess what this is yet? <laughs> yes, this summer the devil was summoned oh, from no. the world. This time in Carnival. Right, this, this, this year ain't being 2014. <laughs> there, there ain't no way this year is more goaded than 2014, man. In the form of a fat snake beard weeaboo trapped in a 16 year old girl's body. Kimoto Umarachan told the story of a young girl struggling with her severe coke addiction, spreading the generally. Am I right in saying Umaru-chan started the she just like me for real waifu movement? Because I can't. I can't think of another girl that ha had that like archetype before Umaru-chan, unless I'm mis misremembering something. Holy shit lifestyle your parents have tried their whole life stopping you from doing. And Watamote? All, okay, okay, actually Watamote, you're right. The you're signs right. of the netherworld were there with her uncanny ability to transform from cute girl into crippling midgets. And the actually, no one, no one looked at Watamote like a fucking waifu, man. Coke, eating potato chips and watching shitty anime videos. Yeah, what kind of fucking person would do that? Of course, with depictions of the perfect grade A student living a lazy ass lifestyle. Speak for yourself. Oh, wait, 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 really? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I had no idea. Working Big Brother into doing whatever she wants in scenes closely resembling white slavery. The community was split. Some worshipped the hamster hoodie wearing midget, idolizing her as the ultimate lifestyle they wished to live, and some detested the hell spawn of a thing, symbolizing the worst parts of their culture getting away with whatever she wants, showing us that cute innocent girls can secretly be absolute cunts if they know that no one is watching. <laughs> While many see oh the show as just another harmless Moe Blob slice of life show, which it is, checks out, it checks out. did succeed in becoming the fan of the week that everyone loved, hated, <laughs> argued over, then immediately forgot about when the show finished airing. Let's hope it stays that way, and no one else takes notice Club so that Penguin the show does continue to become a horrible influence to the masses more than it already has. This is... After the hot summer sun went away, people were still waiting for that one anime to blow them away. Yes, With a summer me. full of animal waifus, <laughs> plenty of boobies, and the Antichrist in Moe form, where was the one anime to unite the community together, once again saving anime? And just like that, we were introduced to the world's greatest I know what's coming, baby! <laughs> Every year, there seems to be a show or two that goes on to define that year for future generations. And without a doubt, 2015 belonged to the bold bloke wearing washing up gloves who could apparently hit things really hard. Yes, this year, One Punch Man blasted his way into anime pop culture, telling the story of a man who can finish every fight in one punch. Holy shit, half the population gasped. Doesn't that get really boring? <sighs> okay, how can I put this? Oh, no! 
Holy shit, what the fuck's going on? Oh my god, this is so fucking cool! <laughs> as, as a manga reader, still fucking goes hard. <laughs> it's, it's going even harder. It's going even harder, baby. <laughs> no. The show gains mass attraction as a self-aware parody of superhero shows, poking fun at <clears throat> tropes we see ever too often in the shonen genre and doing it well. The jokes always hit and the ever outlandish plot has an equally entertaining and ridiculous cast to match. Alright, time to we order have dinner as well. mosquitoes, Shadow the Hedgehog, Testicular Cancer, Colossal Titans, some bloke who got lost <laughs> on his way in the Tour de France, a better looking Vin Diesel, and a poor robot who just <laughs> wants to get <laughs> Sensei to notice him! <laughs> If you also couldn't tell, the action in the show is outstanding, giving us some of the best fight scenes in recent memory. Everything about them has been designed to hype you up to no end. Heck, listening to the opening alone gives you enough energy to leap out your bed, drink gallons of Red Bull, and run 10 marathons, punching every poor sod you pass along the way. Despite the entire community sucking the show's dick and hyping it up to high heaven, it's one of the few shows that mostly deserves the hype it gets, so I highly recommend you check it out. Unless you're one of those- Did I say mostly deserves the hype it gets? <clears throat> I don't know why I put that line in. If I put that line in, that means I was thinking there was something I wasn't happy about. I can't remember. <clears throat> Genuinely, I uh, can't remember why I put most... I, I know, I know old me, and I'm like, I didn't just put mostly in. I, the, the inflection of that word made me, makes me think, huh, I had a problem with this, and I don't know why. Let me, let me, let me listen to that again. One of the few shows that mostly deserves the hype it gets, so I highly okay. recommend you check it out. Unless you're one of those people who <laughs> hate anything that's popular and are like, One Punch Man is the most overhyped web show ever! <laughs> if you think this is a masterpiece, then you clearly have no taste and should go back to watching Naruto! Soka. Elsewhere in the fall season, Beautiful Bones gave us an interesting detective anime that partly felt like a combination of Sherlock and Bones. By far the highlight of the show was Sakurako, the distant sociopathic necrophiliac detective who happens to be really cute and also has an unhealthy obsession with Bones. <laughs> Attack on Titan got its own parody spin-off in right. Dank Dinner Beans, ordered. the anime. Based on a manga that took all oh, the this was Attack on a Titan thing, jokes wasn't found it? on the internet and attempting to make an entire show around it. This year was also a historic year as Obama himself thanked Japan for anime and manga. While anime thanked Obama by showing scenes of him figuring out how to solve the economic crisis in the Osamatsu-san. Thank you for all the things we love <laughs> from happen. Japan. No! Fantastic! And anime. <laughs> Amazing! Yes, Osamatsu Sign was a great this. comedy anime that went <laughs> largely unnoticed, as it was a revival of a 1960s anime that no one has really heard about. The Gundam franchise gave us another outing with Blood Orphans, telling yet another story around the politics oh, of the Oh man, I feel so old seeing Blood Orphans, the man. Shit out of each other in between. This version included a more gritty, edgy tone in contrast to other <laughs> Obama series, and normally Bucky sees aware. the unfair strategy of using overpowered <laughs> Gundams to spam laser beams in every conceivable direction, causing the average lifespan of a non-Gundam pilot to equate to about 0.1 of a second. Saturday morning cartoons returned to our screens briefly as Digimon Adventure Try gave us the nostalgia boner we so aptly deserved. As the kids we knew and loved man, are now this all was, grown this up. This was still nostalgic in 2015. How does it feel now, man? I mean, look, it's Digimon! <laughs> Digimon! Digimon! Matt, Ty, you're old enough to have gay doujinshi about you now. I'm just Me saying, why was this hype? Time skip, baby. It's, it's the time skip. It's the fucking time skip, baby. Amy, you no longer have a starfish for a head. Sora, you're still leading the guys on, you cock teasing bitch. And TK, you've grown up to become a fedora wearing scrub lord. What the fuck went wrong with you? If you were ever feeling really unfit and unmotivated, then Anator X provided an alternative to those late night Where did it go wrong? I call you a fat sod because you're too stupid to figure out how to do sit ups correctly. Alright, this time I go all. <laughs> Oh, how am I supposed to move my legs? I don't know anymore. Unfortunately, what the producers didn't realize is that most people can't exercise and masturbate at the same time. The Naruto franchise released another movie in Baruto the Movie, following their previous release of Naruto oh, the Last Movie. Oh, and it movie. starts. I don't know what your definition And it starts, baby. It starts. It starts. Here is, here is but, where it uh, starts. I think dictionary.com has to disagree. <laughs> and finally, Dragon Ball Resurrection F saw the return of Frieza to give us this isn't even my final form, the movie. Yes, Frieza has come back from the dead. This time to blow up Earth in a fight to the death, taking place during a whopping five minutes. Stretched over three movies, 50 episodes, and 20 hours worth of powering up. But we get to see a new Super Saiyan form. That's right, Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan. Square to the power of seven. That's, that's gonna be the last form, right, guys? Definitely gonna be the last form. The last form, I swear to God.
Super Saiyan over Cube Root Super Saiyan minus 2 Super Saiyan. And of course, that sums up the entire year. The year that gave us more string moves, more tentacle rape, more people dying when they're killed, less- That was Assassination Classroom? I totally forgot that this uh, came out this year as well. Fucking tea. More dank memes, more Obama, more gay vampires, more Harahid season 3 never. More food with porn, more porn with food. More lesbian chips, more giant robots, more Cluedos, more shit bags, more Sherlock Bones, more Pokemon, more Studio Triggered, more Jun Maeda, more questionable boners with more arguments over ass or titties. More used underwear, more unlikely couples, more New York, more da -da 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 -da. more staying alive, more sword arts and line, more final forms, more people putting their hands up, and of course, more zero fucks given, man. I've been Gigug, that was anime in 2015, and now, now, Guys, I, I had a I had a hard time. I, was, I had a full time job. Okay, I just I know I know this is the running joke in all of my end of year anime videos. Okay, but uh, look, look, it, it came out. It came out. Okay, it came out. It came out. It came out. Oh, oh, now you know. Now you know we're in 2015, man. <laughs> oh, the nostalgia, man. The nostalgia. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Now that I have seen that recap, I will say hand on heart, um, that was probably the weakest year that we've gone through so far. Um, 2013 and 2014 were pretty close together. This year, uh, I haven't watched Assassination Classroom, which is why I didn't cover it. Uh, this year, uh, from what I just saw, had um, Death Parade and One Punch Man. And One Punch Man was obviously really, really fucking massive. And I think that overshadowed a lot. Um, but there was not many others. But Monster Musume, though? <laughs> God. <laughs> Bro. Bro, <laughs> is that your strongest fighter? Is that your strongest fighter? Monster Musume? <laughs> but yeah, but but Monster Musume though, come on, come on guys, come on. <laughs> yeah, this was, uh, this was definitely a weaker year. Going in, go, especially coming after, uh, 2015. So once again- Okay. We're in uh, 2016 now, guys. Twenty sixteen, alright. Can't remember when it came out this year, so let's start with the twenty sixteen. Um Let's start with the 2016 recap in anime. Again, the end of the year is upon us, and it's time we can finally reflect back on all the anime we got to see. Can but we find a stronger year than 2014? <laughs> Remember back in the day when memes were just stupid macro images about cats that were passed around I the do. office to be laughed I do. at? Well, those simple days are unfortunately long over as 2016 marked the year that real life became a meme and the whole world was laughing at itself. Britain started things off with a mid-season twist by actually rage quitting out of Europe because they got tired of picking up all the tabs at the EU pub, giving solace to millions of- Fuck. This- Ah. Oh. This was the year. This was- 2016, okay. Real life? This, this was the canon event year. This was the year to me I look back on and the internet has now changed. The internet changed after this year. I think, I think this is it. I think this is the breaking point. This was the year. This was the year, right? The Brits as they finally had a topic to talk to each other about other than the weather. But of course, those attention-seeking Americans, not wanting to be outdone by anyone, hosted the biggest prank gone wrong This was the year! This was the year that changed everything! President, leaving Hillary supporters completely dumbfounded, regretting that she probably just didn't dab hard enough to achieve victory. <laughs> it was a year of a shock, with no exception to those we lost. We unfortunately had to say goodbye to- This was the year where we started becoming David like the Duma culture, I swear, I swear to God. Muhammad Ali recently announced Carrie Fisher, and people using the word literally and cringe 
the way they were actually intended. So it should come as no surprise that the biggest and most mourned over loss felt by anyone throughout the world was for that of a fucking gorilla. But hey, enough of real world events. We're here to talk about anime. Still, and all the still weird right here, man. Still right here. To us. Of course, I can't cover everything, but this is everything that stood out to me. And with that, oh, we was this January year. Okay, the okay. Yeah, as we start things off with the hottest new show of the winter season. Oh no, this. <laughs> Hold on a second, this isn't the right show. <laughs> no, that's still not right. Dave! Hey Dave! What? Did we get the wrong opening for this show or something? Yes, the go-to anime that started <gasps> everyone- I remember listening to the Erased opening and I was like, this is a Naruto opening. And then I played it. I fucking played that opening next to like the Naruto opening and it syncs. Perfectly, I said. I, I, I'm going. I'm going to see if I can try try and find the f tweet that I made of it because uh, I, I made a tweet like "fuck." Oh, I have to go back to 2016. <laughs> run off this year was of course Erased, which had a stranglehold on the entire community for a brief period. This murder mystery thriller follows the story of a dude who has the innate ability of being sent back in time before major accidents occur in order to prevent them. After being wrongfully accused of murdering his mum, he's sent back to his childhood where he tries to prevent a series of child murders and find out who the real culprit was all those years ago. In Netflix's right, right, Making right. a Murderer- All right, all right, I, I, I found it, I found it. Okay. Let me, let me, let me show you this, let me show you this. Oh fuck, I need to just log into Twitter, don't I? Uh do, 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 do. Hold on a second. My immersion. Fuck your immersion. I need to prove this point. I need to prove this point because this point was uh in 2016. Uh and it still it still haunts me. <laughs> <laughs> Is Erased good? Uh, well, you will find out my opinion on Erased, which hasn't changed since I made this rundown. Oh, come. Oh, whoops. Copyright? Nah. <laughs> this ain't this ain't going up on YouTube, so <laughs> this is just for you guys on Twitch. Okay, so what I did was I took the opening of Erased and I put it next to a um <clears throat> I, I, I just like, I was like, I, I swear to God, if you don't know Erased, uh, it's based, it's I think made by Asian Kung Fu Generation, the opening. And I, ho and I heard it and I was like, this opening doesn't fit because I swear to God, this is more fitting for a narrator opening. So I went into my editor. Uh, I, I just put the song next to the newest narrator opening that was out at the time. Uh, and this was the result. And... Uh... <laughs> This is, this is like, this is, this has stayed with me. I just like, I was, I, I could not believe how perfect this was, man. <laughs> and I swear to God, you can do the exact same thing with the same opening. I did not do any editing with this. I did not do any editing with that. <sighs> All right. Back, uh... <laughs> But we have time travel bullshit, God. All those back to his childhood, where he tries to prevent a series of child murders and find out who the real culprit was all those years ago. In Netflix's Making a Murderer, but we have time travel bullshit, cause it's anime. This genuinely interesting concept had the community gripped every week waiting for new developments, even if there were some small things off of the writing. Several of the kids acted and talked like mature adults instead of being like, you know, annoying fuck kids. Yeah, that, that did bother me a lot. I, now that, now that, 
I'm hearing, hearing myself. I was like, remember that fucking kid that was basically light Yagami and just knew everything? Leading to some genuinely awkward moments of a mentally 29 year old guy having romantic tensions with an 11 year old kid. <laughs> it's probably not pedophilia because it's cute, right? But it can sometimes be overlooked when you remember the dark themes of the show and the events that the kids had to endure. <laughs> However, the show lost massive oh steam and the cultural fucking... reveal ended up being more predictable than an average fucking episode of Scooby-Doo. Which led to a rather weak and cheesy oh ending compared to the God. great build-up we were riding on for the majority of the series. Also, I don't know why I'm the only one who apparently has a problem with this opening for something more right, like I, I, I had no chill, right? I had no chill. Time travel murder mystery thriller. <laughs> yes, I know it's by Asian Kung Fu Generation, but come on. This opening sounds nothing like the general tone of this series. Elsewhere in the season, the Gashi Kashi gave us a... Yeah, true. Actually, I, I agree with that point. That, that was a, it, it's a banger opening. It's not an opening for Erased. I just, I, 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 I will stand by that. Um, this was not the same setting and tone that Erased was. President Best Girl Debate in a show about candy. Yep, candy. I mean, who doesn't love watching shows about the sweet, sweet taste of candy? Rock hard candy, soft candy, and who can forget delicious cream pies? Hey Sydney, do you want a nice warm cream pie? Oh my god, what? Sydney! Gate continued for a second season, <laughs> showed the absolute might of the Japanese military, valiantly cowering at nothing, striking terror to the hearts of some medieval peasants armed with pitchforks. Because of this, it was discussed as being possible propaganda with the Japanese government and SDF being paint. I still think Gate is a highly underrated isekai. I fucking love Gate. Um, and I, it's one of the few isekai I've actually gone out to rewatch and also get further on in the manga. ...in an overwhelmingly positive light, while other countries having an almost cartoonish level of villainy, such as the way they presented the American president as an egotistical, power-hungry, blonde guy with no regard to public opinion. Hey, wait a minute! Parkour and free running finally got an anime in Prince of Stride Alternate, which sounded like a really cool animated concept if you base it on all the sick videos found on YouTube, but the anime itself basically boils down to a bunch of dudes running around trying to find the most convoluted way possible to hide five each other at top speed. The mention W gave the biggest plot twist in anime history by having a girl walked in on while taking a piss without losing her fucking mind. In a pretty average semi episode I didn't remember, What I remember show, about this was the fucking dance. Didn't really do much to stand out except having the protagonist do a very oh, this. character <laughs> dance in the opening as if this anime was actually about someone auditioning for some sick yeah, dance. Yeah, check, checks out, checks out. <laughs> this, this is literally the only thing I remember about this show, man. Rimgar, fancy and ass. Gave us a totally original premise by throwing an unwitting group of individuals into a fantasy world. <laughs> the catch this oh yeah, is is guys remember this is 2016? We were just thinking that Isekai was going to be a fad, and uh, this was this was just a fad that was going getting really popular, guys. I'm saying it's grounded in reality, and everyone is weak as shit. Heavy it's emphasis. It's just a fad, guys. It's just, it's just a phase. Anime's just going through a, through a phase. I swear to, swear to God, swear to God. Addition to the concept. This year's latest attempt to show us that not all CG anime is bad came from Polygon Pictures Arjun, a show that got largely overlooked because any oh, anime Arjun. CG equals this was bad like... anime CG, which is a shame because I think it was better than Nice Sidonia. This is one of the most compelling, slickly written thrillers to come. I, th I think Please more people need to watch this. This was so many people were put off <clears throat> by this by the 3D like animation. With myriad colors, Phantom World, showing us that when they are not dangling Yuri Bates in front of us or Moe pandering, they are not above good old-fashioned tasteless fan service, featuring more accidental trips in panties, <laughs> a girl who can probably deep throat a titan, and of course, what classic the anime boob physics. <laughs> yes, party. this is the scene I remember, baby. This is the only scene I remember of this anime. This season definitely belongs to. Konosuba, a show about a guy. Oh, is Konosuba this year? Konosuba was. Damn, we're getting into uh, peak isekai territory oh, now, man. God damn it! But actually, surprised the community by being a genuinely funny and. Guys, guys, can we just appreciate that uh, it, this was 2016, and I was already uh, making jokes about getting tired of isekai. <laughs> can we just appreciate that? Oh, God damn it! But actually surprised the community by being a genuinely funny and charming take on the genre. There were several things the show just did right, but the one who stole the show and our hearts was of course Miss Galaxy Note 7. The adorable mate refused to- Oh yeah, the Galaxy Note 7 did explode all the, the time. Place. Who here wants to blow me? I, for I forgot that sure? was a meme in 2016. <laughs> yeah. 
a spring rolled around, everyone was just getting over their disappointment of the erased ending. We all had enough of stupid time travel gimmicks to draw us in, and we were looking for something new to latch onto. Or yep. at least we thought we were. Emilia! <laughs> Actually, I f- <laughs> this is so true. <laughs> Fuck, I forgot I made this joke. <laughs> that was that was 2016 in a nutshell. <laughs> it's it's so right. <laughs> so, that was that was it. That was the 20. That was 2016 in anime. <laughs> Yes, this year an anime undoubtedly belonged to ReZero, the time looping show that took over the community, essentially just thousands of people watching the longest, most emotionally draining let's play of Dark Souls in anime form. As viewers tuned in weekly to watch the poor sod get tortured physically and mentally, creating the entirely new genre, suffer porn. But out of all the moments, the most talked about part had nothing to do with suffering, but was of yeah, course it was. the I Love Amelia moment, triggering <laughs> unprecedented scenes of an entire community declaring a character undeniably worse girl? For doing absolutely fucking nothing. Yes. Hey, this is uh, this was pre season two, man. This was pre season two. Amelia, Amelia the fucking goat. You mean Amelia best girl? Excuse me, excuse me. True, but still, no, no. Grand Marshal no. in the biggest wave of salt. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> biggest fraud, man. <laughs> Biggest fraud since fucking Gojo, am I right? This community has seen since the Dark Oremo Wars of 2013 in response to scenes of what is commonly known as a massive dick move. But I've already covered ReZero extensively in my review and parody of it, so instead of repeating myself, let me take this time to talk about my actual favourite show of the season. In a time when the only way shown in back- No! <laughs> Oh, such nice times! Such nice times! Oh! Oh, guys, guys, this new shonen! Oh, it's my favorite show of the season! Oh, god! Oh, oh, such such a nice show! Oh! Favorite show of the season. <laughs> In a time when the only way shonen battle series- It was a good season! By adding a darker twist to it, or subverting- I don't think you guys understand! No one was watching My Hero Academia in season 1! It was season 2, the tournament arc! I swear to god, I was like, Yo, I really like My Hero Academia, not many people are watching it! It's- <laughs> in a clever way, or by And it was really Jones. good, I liked season nice 1! shonen that just went back to its roots and doing it really fucking well. Boku no Hero Academia was nothing more than a celebration of the tropes you've seen many times before, but refined yep. to a T. Demonstrating yep. to us that you don't always need to do something overly original or off the cuff if you just get the basics absolutely right. Deku's pure, childlike desire to become a hero made him incredibly sympathetic to any person who's cheered for their heroes as a kid. And All Might was one of the most likeable characters I've seen in anime, humanizing the charismatic mentor type in a way that you looked up to him, yet related to him at the same time. The charm of the series made it incredibly easy to get behind the characters and moments no matter how cheesy or predictable they were, giving God. you back your giddy childhood excitement at the best of times. So I highly recommend. It I still think season one is peak, man. Looking for something fun. Also, not to mention Yo, next the, season, the, the last All Might scene that still hits. That still hits hard, man. So that's all you need. That's that's. Let's just stop there. Just stop there. Tournament arc. <laughs> tournament arc. Tournament arc. Uh, tournament. We 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 let we let the tournament arc pass as well. Else <clears throat> wins. So you know what that means. Yes, this of course meant yet another group of friends falling for each other without getting their feelings returned. But looking past that, it asked the question of what would happen if humans- This had a really good potential, I thought. In a way that I can't see <coughs> explored anywhere but in anime. It even had a character- This had a really interesting idea. Kill kill, I might rewatch right. this, actually. I also need to mention this great original opening that looks so trippy and cool. It makes you wonder what kind of a genius person could come up with imagery like this. <laughs> Whopping 31 characters were introduced in the first episode of Lost Village, a show about a group of people running away from their problems in order to meet the biggest problem anyone can face. Oh, I kind of remember awful this. Awful show. <coughs> so awful, in fact, there were actually discussions on whether it was being intentionally bad. That's that's right. It was this. This show was so bad. People were like, 
this can't be this bad without being on purpose. I, I swear to God, this must be intentional because there's no way a show can unintentionally be this bad. My personal it must be satire. Was a love child of Higurashi and Lord of the Flies, <coughs> but along the way got drunk, tripped over, and thought it was meant to be a sitcom. Bakuan gave us a cutesy fan service show that tried to appeal to the Motorhead too. I'm not saying they didn't succeed, but they just needed to introduce their characters the correct way, like this. Some say he's seen every episode of One Piece a hundred times over and can block a uh, punch from we One want to... Punch Man. All we know is <laughs> we want to uh, get Pete Weaves into uh, fucking <laughs> motorbikes. Here you go. Here you go. How to get weaves into motorbikes. There you go. Big Order gave us there an annual go. dose of edge, giving us a completely trashy show that I somehow couldn't find myself hating. Imagine a death game starring Lelouch and his yandere. I remember this. I remember this. Big Order. Oh, this was so shit. I kind of feel like rewatching this. This was so shit. But it was like, it was like, why, why am I having a good time? It's so shit. <laughs> really trashy show that I somehow couldn't find myself hating. Imagine a death game starring Lelouch and his Yandere sidekick, but every enemy was a stand user with the most ridiculously OP ability you can think of, like a Geass or Immortality or predicting the future. It was like if Mirai Nikki, Akami Gakio, Code Geass, and JoJo's Bizarre Adventure had a drunken coked up orgy one night and decided to livestream it. You're not proud of the fact you watched it, but it was still kind of entertaining. <laughs> I, I've, I've kind of saw myself, I think I'm gonna rewatch it. It's, uh... I remember just having a really fun time watching it, even though it was like such a shit show. The game gave us a World War II espionage drama, which sounds like a really cool original idea for anime until you realize how this would actually work in real life. All right, chaps, I've just had it until that one of us is a spy working with the Japanese. I keep telling you, it's not me. That's exactly what a Japanese spy would say. She is a very suspicious. I completely agree with you, random Asian person in Europe who speaks broken English. Sakamoto Descar showed us how to transcend the limits of cool to a whole new oh, Sakamoto never reached before. In swag, the Anime. <coughs> Phoenix Wright gave us a true to the game anime adaptation that was faithful but ultimately had little yeah, to no this reason was, this for any newcomers to choose watching this, this over playing the games unless they didn't own a DS or a pair of hands. And finally, this year JoJo's yet again returned to us in the form of part four. What a beautiful Duwang. And I mean, it's JoJo's. What more <laughs> that was such an OG it? JoJo meme, man. Now, well, I don't even know if liking JoJo's to death is something genuine or has become a meme in and of itself. So here you go, JoJo's. It's an anime that's good. It's really fucking good. You should watch. Jojo's. Jojo's is love. Part Jojo's four, is life. Oh man, it's Jojo's. And that's it for part one this year. Join me next time when I talk about the CG that just keeps giving. And of course, a bunch of gay people on solid water. Oh, oh, I know. I know. I know what's coming. 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 <laughs> I know one of the shows that's coming. <laughs> <sighs> All right, 2016 part two. When the hot sum. 2016 part two. We are in the summer season. We came out in summer 2016. I can't remember anything. I don't think it was Yuri and Ice. Uh, I'm a rolled in let's, let's see what I chose to cover. Hi, as a new season was upon us, <coughs> with the abundance of variety we got in the spring season and ReZero grabbing the entire community, we were all hoping that the hype train would continue. And just as that thought passed our minds, we were stopped dead in our tracks in a series that started a long time ago in a manga far, far delayed. The epic saga continued. Oh god, what did you do to it? <laughs> yes, 2016 was the year the Berserk franchise genuinely imploded. Boys, it's GG. It's GG. We're not, we're not finding this isn't the best year this decade. GG go next. GG go next. We were already pretty cautious as soon as the term CG was being thrown around in early trailers, but nothing could have prepared us for the disaster that would befall everyone. And here's the thing. 
It wasn't just the CG that ruined it. Arjun already proved earlier in the year that dodgy CG can be saved by good writing, which Berserk should have. But the adaptation failed on almost every front to the point where it just felt like a high budget fan project made by people who had little to no knowledge of filmmaking. Oh God. From terrible action directing, awful <laughs> oh shots Oh my God, look cuts, at this shit, lighting, man. Ugly color palettes, janky frame rates, and hilarious sound design that transformed Guts' steel behemoth of a sword into a fucking frying pan. <laughs> For Berserk fans, it was like watching a car crash in slow motion. And Ironically, I still love that sound effect, man. <laughs> I think I still use that sound effect in some memes in this video. That 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 sound effect has aged wonderfully as a fucking great sound effect. The only real good things that come out of it were the opening and the hilarious <coughs> fan reaction. ReZero may have been this year's show containing suffering, but Berserk is a pure embodiment of it for characters and fandom alike. From Guts' yep, journey yep. to waiting for new chapters to just hoping for a single decent complete anime adaptation. So if you're thinking about getting into Berserk, just read the manga because here's the Berserk 2016 experience. Experience. Outside of the fiery heat of the Berserk fans, okay, the actually, the summer was of course actually, Mob take Psycho it back, 100, take it back. Spiritual successor two, and from the same author as One Punch Man, which you can totally tell because half the character designs look like they just took Saitama and gave him a different wig. So of course, we all, all right, guys, we got hope, we got hope. One psychic boy, but beyond the first few episodes, it definitely differentiates itself from just being that. The journey our timid protagonist makes to constantly better himself drove the themes of self-improvement throughout the show, complete with a likeable supporting cast. Like the sole Goodman of anime, Reagan, a charismatic con artist, unmatched. 2016 was a roller coaster of a year. Yeah, you can say that again. <laughs> thing about this show is one of the best showcases of absolutely breathtaking and unique Wow, Giga watching himself, how narcissistic of you. Thank you very much. Of the year, making it a must Hope you enjoy, <laughs> Hope you enjoy me being a narcissistic. <laughs> attempt at combating the country's declining birth rates by parading around the advantages of having I'm a taking a trip through memory lane. God, Otaku's just fuck already! Well, the daughter would have to be pretty fucking sweet to convince Otaku's to do that, so how sweet could they make her? And I have diabetes now. 91 Days proved to the world oh, that Japan are indeed oh. capable of making a dark and gritty gangster drama without forcing in supernatural bullshit to making the second half borderline unwatchable. With a highly westernized historical story of revenge featuring a very mutant and Serbia down to earth art style, this may actually be the least anime anime to have aired in 2016. And did this by very obviously but tastefully sucking off classic Hollywood gangster films. Fans of the ever popular shoujo manga Orange were treated to an anime adaptation in a story of a girl who received a letter from herself 10 years forward in time in order to free herself from All right, this one was pretty good. This one's pretty good. I think the manga is better though. Ending feels train. As when has messing around with your past in fiction ever gone well? But it does beg the question of if you could send a message to yourself in the past that could literally change your life, what would it be? Ah. <laughs> uh. Ah, uh, good old 2016 memes. <laughs> yes, what you does best by by crypto. Of digital animation, <laughs> while overall not being that impressive of a show when they aren't busy sucking off type moon behind the scenes. For those who needed some serenity, stop playing play, League. <laughs> actually, <laughs> legit. Actually, <laughs> legit. <laughs> giving us one of the most atmospheric, <clears throat> peaceful, burn it, burn it all down. and tranquil slice of life anime to come out in the summer. Kill them all. <laughs> Kill them all. Thunderbolt Fantasy gave us a curveball to look at by making a show using Taiwanese puppets. Wait, hold on a second. Alan, does this count as anime? Who gives a fuck, man? Look at this shit. A show which everyone expected to suck because of that, but with a story- Fumble Fantasy unironically went so hard, suck, man. The puppets themselves are actually executed pretty damn well. And as an added bonus, can also be added to the growing list of things that are still better looking than Berserk 2016. <laughs> Glorious Weaves in China managed to ask an unimpressed Sir Ian McKellen to recite the incantation to unlimited blade works, causing thousands that of- That happened? To discover a new level of I hardness. I don't remember this at all. Unlimited blade works. And of course, oh. Love Life Sunshine gives us Oh, I'm very excited. Oh, what? Oh, God. Every year. The story <laughs> that plays out like watching a bunch of Love Life fans drool over the original characters. And I mean, it's more Love Life. What more can I say about it? It's fine if you love Love Life. But did anyone catch the secret message? Actually, it's not fine show? if you, you love Love Life. It's really hard, but it is there. Here, let me show you. <laughs> I see, I see even 2016 Gihug still lived with the love life slander. <laughs> Some things just never change.
<laughs> Let's just piss off idol fans. As the leaves grew red and fall, it's about, joke, like we guys. It's joke. Full season. With so many shows and so much variety, how are we ever going to choose what to watch? Little did we know, though, that something was about to come along that was born to make history. Ever since Free swept through the anime community in 2013, a new OP group of still fans slaps, yep. louder than ever when the industry realized that maybe, just maybe, a good portion of people who watch anime also have vaginas. This ushered in a new wave no, of shows with all no of ripped way. abs, pretty boy man's service, and, no way. <laughs> and this year, Yuri on Ice skated into a homoerotic heart while also winning the title of most misleading title of 2016. As I'm sure when the name was announced, most people's initial thoughts was that it was going to be something like this. For the men with the most exquisite of tastes. But one look at it and you would immediately be able to tell that the show was actually about a bunch of gay dudes dancing on solid water. Dancing exquisitely I might add because at the best of times the ice skating scenes were so gorgeously animated it could be spine chilling. Beautifully depicting the artistic expression of the human physique. But of course with all this flamboyant male expression. I forgot about that show. Gay. <laughs> okay? well, I forgot the about oh I forgot about that shot. <laughs> no, all of the homoerotic <laughs> Yeah. The fan art of the free dudes making yeah. out on Tumblr weren't as gay as you see on ice. No, five gay men oh my having God. gay orgy sex oh to my God. YMCA weren't as gay <laughs> as Yuri on ice. But nothing could have prepared us for what Yo, was to come, which I can't discuss without massively spoiling the middle of it. So if you want to skip that, click this button or skip right ahead. Do we oh. care about Yuri and ice spoilers? Uh, I feel like people still care about Yuri and ice. <laughs> skip. <laughs> We all know already? All right, all right. All right. right. Are you ready? Are you ready for the most unpredictable plot twist of all time? The show was actually gay. Yes, the biggest twist came when it was revealed that this wasn't just man service yaoi bait the girls were squealing at, but oh, how the series yeah. came to depict a very tender relationship between two men. Exploring <laughs> queerness without resorting to conventional tropes, not surprisingly, leading to its massive popularity in the LGBT. I forgot that that was a plot twist. Everyone thought it was yaoi bait. And then, and then it wasn't. <laughs> I just, I forgot. Oh, I forgot this was the massive plot twist. Actual professional ice skaters. <laughs> like it wasn't bait. It was, it was actually, they committed to it. They, they committed to it. Signified by a kiss, absolutely nobody thought would actually happen. Marking a massive turning point while also ushering the sound of about 10 million dying whales that could probably be heard from Mars. <laughs> The show went full homo and no one saw it coming. But regardless of how good the show actually was in the end, or how the Man, how the anime industry has evolved that the biggest plot twist is that a yaoi bait show wasn't actually a yaoi bait show, but it was actually a yaoi show. Bro, I just, I'm just remembering the ring scene now. I'm like, looking back at this in 2023, I'm like, how is this a plot twist? But thinking back about this in 2016, I'm like, this, this made waves, man. This made, this made waves. The guy skating animation did suffer in later episodes. It will go down as a landmark for progressive representation in anime. So well done, Yuri on Ice. Hannah really won anime of the year history. and every other Yuri Crunchyroll nice. anime award more, ever more like <laughs> yaoi on ice Yuri weren't as lucky as we got to try a vector of shows that merely dangled the Yuri in front of us giving us a chance to play everyone's favorite game watch a bunch of cute girls not kiss to you by Yuri see Wonsi. see 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 we went from like full-on yaoi to now uh just Yuri bait this is this is, this is this is the other genre that uh that we we have to work with. Girls not kiss. Brought to you by Yuri Watch. Yes, I'm Gegak and welcome to the annual Watch a bunch of cute girls not kiss. I'm joined today with my co-host John, aka Baron J. Thank you very much for having me here. And can I just say this was certainly a fantastic year to watch a bunch of cute girls not kiss. Right, you are, John. Let's see who the contestants were this year. Well, first up, we have Flip Flappers. Who gave Flip us Flappers. An spin on magical girls with some of the most beautifully animated mayhem. I was gonna say some of this animation went hard, man. Girl, FLCL with cute girls not kissing. These new kids on the block. 
Sherlock certainly had potential, giving us two adorable girls not kissing. This is the stuff, people. Next up, we have Hibike Euphonium, continuing for a second season, doing what Kyoto Animation does best. And Kyoto Animation here just flaunting their expertise in cute girls not kissing. Guys, they're I mean, friends. Just they're just, they're just friends. They're roommates. Baited hand -holding. You can actually <laughs> feel the squeals of thousands of fanboys in this exact <laughs> moment. And finally, Zeta the Last Witch had two older girls not kissing. I do not remember this at all. Weapons, with a fancy spin on World War II in cute girls not kissing versus Nazi Germany. Yes, this was a pretty standard affair and really didn't do <gasps> I do not remember this at all. <laughs> Who's this, Baron J? Oh my god! Oh my god! We are witnessing history here, folks. Let's get an instant replay of that. And right here, you see a moment <laughs> never seen before. You watch a bunch of cute girls not kissing. I don't know why I don't remember this. This is not peak. This is not peak, guys. We were graced by this year's new savior of anime, Keijo. A full-on video thesis on why the female backside is the greatest <laughs> gift God has now given it's us. Talking. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. The best and worst parts of the ridiculousness only anime could offer by making a straight up sport of super powered ass wrestling. With its absolute over the top absurdities, it broke new ground, pushing boundaries in the elegant art of taking the piss. Literally. <laughs> The semicolon series continued with the new show in Occultic Night. The semicolon series. <laughs> you guys won't know what the semicolon series is. Only people who, uh, this was back when the anime man watched anime era of anime would know what the semicolon series is. There is absolutely nobody, including the viewer, had any idea what the fuck was happening. So of course the biggest takeaway from it was that someone unfortunately stuck in the studio one day and replaced one of the character's boobs with a pair of bowling balls. The creator of Hell's Gate Drifters. Oh, that was this like year? Death, okay, fantasy. okay, okay. That's right, from the people who gave you Dracula vs. Superpowered Zombie Nazis in London comes the hit new show, History Channel's Mortal Kombat Annihilation in Middle Earth. This shit's sells itself. March comes in like a lion gave us a bittersweet shaft production about green Oh, okay, this one went hard. This one went hard. As one of the contenders of anime of the season, it's complete with some great examples of visual storytelling that, in a nutshell, follows one guy's uphill journey of learning how to fucking smile. IQ and All Outs gave us the yearly dose of sports anime that are one part designed for exciting and emotional sports games, and another part designed for just watching a bunch of ripped guys who are really good at fumbling with balls. Funewe Amu gave us a sleeper hit of the fall season about some guys... Oh, this one was really good as well. Well, which unfortunately <clears throat> nobody watched this because it was on Amazon Prime, but <clears throat> this was actually a really good drama. Absolutely nobody watched because it was streaming on the place where anime simulcasts go to die. Amazon Prime. Well, I just, <laughs> well, I, just I, I just Wow, uh who wrote this script, guys? Who who fucking uh who who wrote this script? <laughs> I, I wanna know who wrote this script. And probably because it was a show about well, oh, guys, I might, I, might, I might have seen this before. <laughs> maybe I've seen this before, guys. Dictionary, which sounds incredibly boring, but beyond that, what we have is a brilliant down to earth drama, a true slice of life that is human and real, with incredible use of music and visual direction that highlights the magical power of language. This was one of the top shows of the season, and yes, it's about a bunch of dudes making a dictionary. He could even say, Yes, we will want to make dictionaries. <laughs> Dictionaries. In the world of movies, Makoto Shinkai returned to give us Your Name, a new movie that became an international sensation. Oh, uh, Your box Name? Office records every week to the point that I don't even know why anyone would be surprised whenever a fresh news story would come out. Hey guys, did you hear that Your Name broke some new records? No! I had no fucking clue Your Name broke some records! Uh, that means 2016. 2016 was the first time that I can think of that an anime movie just broke out uh, and became super popular and I watched in theatres. Your Name was the first anime movie I watched in theatres um, that wasn't anything like Ghibli or anything Miyazaki or anything like that. It's weird to think that now it's so easy to watch anime movies like in theatres where before you would have to wait for the Blu-rays. You would, you would just, you would hear whispers of this anime movie that came out and fucking slapped, and you'd be like, oh shit, uh, I'll watch it in like a year and a half when the Blu-rays come out, man. That's so, that's so weird to think. You say yar, like, if you, if you actually, uh, that means you're watching cam rips and I, I don't know. Like, if you watch cam rips, 
Uh, you... I don't know how anyone could fucking enjoy cam rips, man. Just, it's, I, I do not know how anyone could enjoy cam rips, man. Ew. Ew. Hand in other breaking news, there are still no screenings near anywhere you live. A silent voice gave us what looks to be a touching story. Wow, well, 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 that aged, that aged poorly, didn't it? That, that aged poorly. ...of a deaf girl that unfortunately got overshadowed by the release of Your Name. Kiza Monogatari was finally released, meaning that once Ava 4.0 comes out, anime fans will actually have no anticipated movie left to complain about for the coming decades. Huh? Huh? Oh, showed us what we really want when a company says, hey, we're gonna make a CG adaptation. And finally, Porter Robson's show Walter took over the internet for a while. Oh. A music video in collaboration with A1 Pictures, it tells a short, heartwarming story about parenthood and moving on. The five minute short blew up, emotionally affecting more okay. people than most anime do in their <clears> entire <throat> run. But if you can't even waste five minutes of your life watching it, here's the viewing experience in a nutshell. Oh god, my entire life's been a fucking lie! A message that truly capped off the year that gave us more Trump, more bowling ball tits, more ball fondlers, more sweet diabetes for more delicious cream pies. More Michael Bay, more swag, more objection, more booty <laughs> Warriors, more track and free with more DDR to more bouncing rave parties. More love pentagrams, more Taiwan anime, more dictionary makers, more record breakers, more CG haters with more gangster movie fakers. Absolutely all the gay guys are not nearly enough gay girls. It's dumb. More Helsing, more Ashok, more beautiful Dewangs, more espionage and more steampunk trains cause they call him the stick so you better call Saul. More adorable existentialism, more time travel bullshit, more Detroit smash, more flip fapping, yet another shitty berserk adaptation. And of course, way too much salt for Amelia. I've been Giga, that was anime in 2016, and for the first time ever, I can gladly say, see you in 2017. All right, we're getting spicy now. We fucking did it! Hey guys. Oh, oh, oh look at look at me. Look at look at that. Look at that. <laughs> that was 2016, I guess. Was this the year I reached a mill? This is Giga. Hope you enjoyed the video and whew, it's been one hell of a year, eh? If you've survived to now, then thank you so much for the support you've given me all this year. It's been one hell of a comeback to YouTube and if not for all you guys, I'd probably be looking to go back to my day job right about now. So thank you. <laughs> uh, genuinely, thank you so much. Uh, that it's uh, This period was, I think... The period where I transitioned to YouTube uh, and uh, quit my job. So much for supporting me. I also want to thank my editor Buckshift, who without his help, there hey, no still way with me, able baby. to get both these parts in time for the new year. And also Baron J and Holden for helping me with some of the jokes you've seen in the video. All the anime I mentioned are in the. Okay, I think this was like the first or second year that I came back uh, to YouTube full time. All right, so how do we think we've ra ranked so far? To me, I think 2016 was a fucking roller coaster of the year. Talking, like, looking at that. Best? I wouldn't say it's the best. I still think 2014 tops this one. I s Generally, I still think 2014 tops this one. Uh, there were some... I feel like everything... There was like, I feel like with 2014, there was a banger, a few banger shows every single season. And I feel like this one had a few off seasons, uh, maybe just one off season. Um, I I actually think I still prefer 2013. Uh, like to me, it goes 2014, 2013, 2016, and then 2015 so far. Uh, it's it wasn't weak, but I think pound for pound. It felt like, it felt like I was watching the 2014 video and I was like, yo, there's so many bangers, I can't stop. Anyway, I'm going to take a quick piss and uh, get my dinner and I will be right back.
All right. You guys ready for 2017? How many years have we done now? 2013, 14, 15, and 16. All right, after we do 2017, we'll have done five years. Jeez, only five years. Um, and we'll do a poll. We'll do a poll on what you think your favorite year has been. Kind of watching these all in a row kind of makes me realize <laughs> how much, how much, uh, how long I've been choosing this. <laughs> we'll do a poll and then we'll continue, but uh, we can only do five choices. Phew. All right, 2017. I also don't remember what came out this year. But, um, we're about to find out. Thanks to me. Thank you, me. Thank you, me, for this, uh... <laughs> weird night that I'm having. Two thousand and seventeen is coming to a close, and this is now my fifth year reviewing a whole year of anime. But before we... Wow, five years. Wow. Five years, wow. God damn, five years? Five whole years? We jump into what 2017 <laughs> did for anime, what happened in the rest of the world? The eclipse happened for America, causing a nationwide purge of sight for people who took the advice of every possible outlet telling them not to stare directly at it as they fucking dare. This was swiftly followed by hallucinations of a giant man in black armor <laughs> with a massive Americans. sword shouting angrily at the sky. It was a tough year for tragic events, stories of sexual harassment coming to light and North Korean threats ever stronger. Oh, the Me Too no movement started this year? Group of people causing us to lose faith in humanity this year was Rick and Morty fans. Like this was the Rick and Morty fan year pop off. Outrage over a bit of teriyaki sauce mixed with ketchup. And of course, the fidget spinner craze took over the world, <coughs> showing the terrifying power of having a mildly satisfying feeling in your hands. In response, the World Health Organization advised people to start take up smoking instead, with new research coming to light suggesting it would pose a significantly less risk to cancer. But of course, we're here to talk about the last year in anime and everything that happened in our community. <laughs> Roll back the clock to winter. The community found some love during the cold. All right, was was winter 2017 in DreamWorks is highly acclaimed. How to train your dragon? Waifu. Okay, okay. Starting off, starting off strong. This year started off with some wholesome goodness as Miss Kobayashi's Mei Dragon proved to us that the King of Cute still firmly remains in Kyoto Animation's hands. Oh, it was the show too that strong. the community Kyoto Animation too strong, man. I mean, I don't know what's so great about a dragon in a maid outfit. I mean, sure, she's cute and all, but I don't really see why the community would go crazy about it. <laughs> A lonely adult working woman as she one day finds so a dragon fucking and cute, man. And enthusiastically offers to be her maid. And thus we follow the daily life of Kobayashi as along the way she meets an assortment of dragons who all end up growing a close bond to her, wanting to stay by her side, of course making her true name Miss Kobayashi. Stormborn, of House Targaryen, Mother of Dragons, Breaker mm. of Chains. Beyond this, it was just a heartwarming tale about family values and how we can find family with the people we meet and spend time with, even if those bonds aren't made by blood. But let's be real here, we all know the true reason we watched the show as Kana's cuteness dominated the community for that season. Clips and gifts flooded all of social media with Kana scenes, Gosh, signifying so the next level adorable, of cute man. animal videos. Detailing these <laughs> Yo, fucking cute animation still unmatched when it comes to just adorableness man god Fi damn ancient mythical creatures becoming domesticated for our viewing pleasure boo, 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 boo. who can destroy the world and bring about the apocalypse yes you can yes you can Ooh, boo, 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 boo. on a side note the official music video for the op is one of the most unintentionally entertaining things to come out of this just because this guitarist is the epitome of that unimpressed normie friend you see at anime conventions being forced into doing this weird weeb shit that he doesn't get in the rest of the winter <laughs> fuka gave an anime adaptation <laughs> for a manga that caused major controversy for its previous <laughs> by completely gave it being just I completely forgot about the that. He is one of the most unintentionally entertaining things. <laughs> bro, is that dude, uh, bro, is that dude who's friends with weaves that, you know, your friends drag you to a maid cafe and you're like, 
Get me the sh- Get me the fuck out of here, man. I'm out of this. Just because this guitarist is the epitome of that unimpressed normie friend you see at anime conventions. Being forced into doing this weird weeb shit that he doesn't get. In the rest of the winter, Fuka gave an anime adaptation for a manga that caused major controversy for its pre-existing fans by completely changing major plot points only to diverge entirely by the second half of the show. While many argued the anime was doomed from the beginning without enough episodes to properly conclude the events laid out in the beginning of the manga, it was clear that either way, the adaptation really got hit by a truck. Oh wait. No, it fucking didn't. After much anticipation from his highly successful OVAs, Oh, Little Witch Academia was this year as well? The first full season of Boku no Chibi Potter Academia. Despite the mostly positive reception it received from viewers and the hype it had going for it, it failed to make a big impact on the community, marking the first time fans really felt the effect of a highly anticipated anime being held hostage behind the red bars of Netflix's prison. A pattern that would soon... That will, that will never happen again, right? <laughs> Actually, uh, in 2022, no, in 2023, sorry, it's uh, Disney jail. It's Disney jail. It's uh, Netflix jail. Netflix show is uh, less bad than Disney jail now. We felt more as the year went by. Yojo Senki gave us another contender for Lolly of the Season with the story of a middle aged man trapped in the body of a nine year old girl. Still a during fucking an good isekai, guys. War Still War. a yes, good Kana isekai. Has her work cut out as she may have her adorable eating scenes, <laughs> but how can she possibly compete with the precious smile? Of crazy rocket lolly Hitler murdering hundreds of soldiers. Uh, actually, Gaunt, this is World War One. This is World War One, Gaunt. Gaunt. Shinju got another season. Give me a chance to redeem myself from the endless comments I got for missing this masterpiece in last year's rundown. So now that I've been given this chance, I can safely say that Masai Munakun's revenge was a Sunday harem junk food that I actually. <laughs> Yo, how wild is this? We now we've seen the ending of Masai Munakun's revenge this year. This year we had to wait this long. <laughs> enjoyed a lot. A tale about an overly confident narcissistic arsehole trying to get revenge over a stoic Cinderay bitch who rejected him ages ago because Bro, he peak, was fat. Peak, which peak. sounds cheesy and dumb and was cheesy and dumb but somehow ended up being the perfect popcorn entertainment rom-com. Okay <laughs> fine I'll talk about Rakugo. Past the first season somewhat disconnected 45 minute slow burn over first episode that turns me and a lot of people off initially, Rakugo demonstrates some of the best that anime has to offer. It's a beautiful character driven story told through Rakugo. The not so well known art form that it is, but the characters surrounding this concept are so well fleshed out and compelling yep. that it was simply a joy to experience life in their shoes. And this season followed suit from the first to definitely become one of the contenders of anime of the year. Handshakers gave us a highly ambitious highly, car crash. Highly underrated. I was thinking about making a video on it. Hands. And if that sounds bad to you, don't oh, worry. Oh, no. fucking handshakers. You don't... <laughs> Go hands. This is what started the go hands thing, man. The best part of the show. Yes, if the audience weren't put off by enough excessive <laughs> camera movements to induce motion sickness, then its visual style was so ugly, I now have a permanent phobia of badly animated CG chains. Our favorite <laughs> lovable cast of idiots returned for another season in Konosuba 2, giving us the fun, stupid fantasy adventures that is basically the animated experience of playing Dungeons and Dragons with a group of drunk pissheads. Scum's Wish gave us a drama about a group of oh, scummy scums people being scummy with each other because everyone. <laughs> I've been going through a big trashy romance phase and I've been th I've been thinking about watching Scum's Wish again man. <laughs> I, 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 I need some spice in my life man. in a man. relationship where they'd rather be with someone else. That's right, it's an anime <laughs> set in Cuckfield where it's always NTR o'clock so of course with such a recipe it was only ever going to end one- Cuckfield is a real place by the way. That's, that's a real place because I- Live by it. There's, it's a real place in England. It's called Cockfield. Way. Yep. It's the return of everyone's favorite old <coughs> friend. If you're happy, 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 clap your hands. And finally, the surprise hit of the season came with Kimono Friends, which took Japan by storm with its depiction of cute little anthropomorphized anime Grape girls, Kun. to which my first thought was, wow, I fucking wonder why. But the series turned out to be a light-hearted original experience for anime that no one expected, fueled by the fact that during a promotional run at the zoo, one of the cardboard cutouts caught the affection of a lone penguin. Great Kun. Yes, the story of Great Kun and his wife who exploded oh. on the internet. And how could it not? Oh. It's fucking Oh, it still it still hits, man. Oh. Oh man. Great Kun was one of us, man. Great Kun was one of us. Oh, oh bro. Bro. Adorable. I Just tr proves that fucking degeneracy is not bound by the human species, man.
Because of course, the internet has <laughs> never had any obsession with any animal ever before. Unfortunately, a few months later, Great Kun did pass away, and of course, the anime community mourned at the loss of one of our own, showing that our love for waifus transcends gender, belief, and species. Ugh. Rest in peace, Great Kun. Jesus may have died for our sins, but Great Kun died for our waifus. As spring Bro. rolled around, there was much anticipation in the air as two of the hottest prop- Bring, Bringing back memories, man. Bringing back memories. All right. What was up in spring 2017? Season, the last few years were back and vying for the top spot in the battle of season twos. One was the old king finally back after many years Is of it going to be My Hero Academia? And the other was the new kid on the block continuing to make a name for themselves in this new era. That's right. The boys were back in town. <laughs> Oh, Attack on Titan returned this season! And my hero in the same season? After four years of waiting, <laughs> Attack on Titan returned to us and it was almost like it never left. Titans once again walked the line of pants shittingly terrifying to pants shittingly stupid. Eren was- Hey, honey. Tell me. They're like, I don't know why, it's the second time and I added so much more sugar but it still tastes like shit. Do you add more water? I added more lemon. I can taste the lemon. I'm not sure. Why does it still taste like shit? I added so much more sugar, honey. I think it's the lemon, honey. It's really what? sour. I like it that way. You like it that way? But it tastes like ass, like out besides that. I'm not a baker, so I unfortunately don't know. Besides the lemon. I cannot taste anything but the lemon, if I'm being honest. You can't? No. Okay, so you think it's good then. Fuck you, Gar. <laughs> It's, it's it's okay, honey. It's, it's, you'll, you'll you'll find you'll find it. You'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, where was I? Still a loud, uptight fuck who couldn't stop failing at life, and once again we were given an opening that everyone thinks they can sing, even though they only literally know one word. Tonally, hey, hell. that's all you need, baby. That's all you need. But this season was far different from the previous one, focusing more on mystery and horror than all-out action and hype. But despite being the sequel to one of the hottest anime properties of all time, the hype surrounding it was nowhere near what it was during its peak in season one, showing us that waiting for- Oh, oh, if only we knew. If only we knew, guys, how- Oh, oh, it was, it was nowhere near the peak. It was right at the time when it came out. Oh, if only we knew. Four years probably wasn't the best thing to do as this new seasonal anime climate has given the community a collective memory that lasts about three and a half days. Oh, if only you knew, Garn. If only you knew. Oh, oh. While undoubtedly it was still popular, the series that rose up to take the spotlight for the community was My Hero. <laughs> oh my God. 2017 was a wild year. 20. Oh, guys, guys, let, hear me out. Hear me out. Let, just, just remember that Attack on Titan got overshadowed by My Hero Academia season two, which is totally correct, by the way, because I do remember how fucking massive this tournament arc was for My Hero Academia. But it's still wild to see looking back, man. <laughs> Academia. <laughs> Though the first season was highly loved by Shonen fans, it was this season that really catapulted it into Sky High. The My Hero popularity. Awards? Remember Most that? Remember that? Longer run, <laughs> the absolute hype surrounding its take on its structured series of individual fights arc, and for hosting one of the standout fights in the year for anime. That's right. Boku no Hero Academia versus My Hero Academia. It's My Hero Academia! It's Boku no Hero Academia! Stop trying to be Japanese, you team! It just rolls off the tongue better! Why can't we just call it Hero Aka? Well, I call it Academia! Oh. Oh. Good old days where this is what we argued about, guys. The good, the good, the good old days. This is what we argued about. <laughs> I have nothing more to add over the things I've said and have been saying since last year's recap, as it just continues to be a very high quality shonen action show staying true to its genre's roots. Ultimately, which title won the Battle of Season 2s? Well, there's only one way we can settle this. What, you really want me to bring it back one last time? Fine. Russian series of individual 
Oh, OG gig up memes. The rest of the season, I remember. King's Good old China's times. First attempt at giving the world an esports anime. That was now one of my first memes, I think. Anime and more an ex pro making a bunch of new friends by dicking about in bronze. In anime smurfing, The Dyrus Chronicles. Akashic Records of I thought we'd grown out of the Battle Harrow Magic High School phase by now anime. Gave us a magic high school where the most magical thing was how they confused this stripper outfit for a school uniform. This one was good. As only the girls seemingly need to wear it. It's degrading, objectifying, I don't think it was. and I, don't I am think it was. so horrified <laughs> that I want to meet the genius who approved this. Seriously, <laughs> who thought of this? I need to shake his hand. All female officers will be required to wear tiny mini skirts. Did I really put a Full Metal Alchemist meme in this? Did I? This must be Alan. I don't. I don't. I don't remember writing this. This must be the editor. I don't remember writing this. Ah, uh, yeah, I know, I know exactly what's going on, guys. I, 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 I know exactly what's going on. We got a continuation to our favorite loud yellow-haired ninja that everyone expected to suck. Twenty seventeen, baby. Out to be great homage to what made the original anime appeal to us in the first place, while tackling it in a new enough way to keep it fresh. In Naruto's son, child of Boruto's dad, the suffering continued as Berserk two thousand and seventeen continued kicking. Oh, it got even down, worse. Still left in agony for it got year, even thinking, worse. Well, at least there's no way it can look any worse than Berserk two thousand and sixteen. Oh God, what if? you done I don't get what you guys are complaining about I mean it's still better than those <laughs> hey, hey, hold on. the sleeper hit of the season was Sugi Karkire <laughs> I, I just remembered how bad it was it, it, it was so bad it was so bad grounded portrayal of teenage it was pretty good actually unfortunately got swept under the masses of big shows this season one of the most realistic takes of adolescent romance I have seen recently that breaks all the bullshit conventions you normally see in anime like no other dramatic melodrama parents are actually present and <laughs> ain't no way they have parents they even show the superpower granted only to us introverts Communication through awkward silences. Accurate. Accurate. I know the feel, bro. Meta was taken to a whole new level as recreators gave us a show about anime and game. Peak, peak, peak. I won't hear it. I won't hear it, guys. This this is age wonder wonderfully. Peak, 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 peak. Game characters being transported <coughs> to the real world and meeting their creators. Yes, we had Budget Saber meeting her author. Should have been a Monogatari villain versus should have been a Jojo character. And Maduka Magica causing collateral damage with her completely OP friendship powers. God, I love this fucking show. I still do, baby. I still do. Character to be transported to their world where he would get confused thinking he was transported back to his home world. Kato, the right answer, gave us an interesting thought experiment of how- This was actually really fucking underrated. Unfortunately, the ending fell off, but that had this had some banger episodes with some really, really good fucking idea. He would be to advance the human race, given new technology that could give us infinite resources and understanding of our universe. While Such a good sci-fi show. I wish there was more sci-fi shows that dare to tackle some of the ideas that a show like this tried to do. Thing, it was obviously very unrealistic, as in reality, it would never be this stupidly difficult to unite the human race under a technology that everyone would be able to use equally without being controlled by people for their own gain. <laughs> <laughs> Sword Oratoria, Is It Wrong to Pick Up Girls in the Dungeon on the side gave us a side story to Dan Machi featuring not Hestia. But even this season it had competition for the most overly convoluted title based on a light novel as What Do You Do at the End of the World? Are You Busy? Will You Save Us? <coughs> Question marks included attempted its best to go over the word count limit for new anime titles on Mao. And finally, Eromanga Sensei exploded onto the scene giving us the harem incest bait lolly fan service absolutely none of us asked for but we all watched anyway. Of course, following from Ori Emo, oh, it had to do something special to oh make waves God. in the community, and that it certainly did. Combining elements of the absolute lowest parts of anime into one show, and taking it just that level beyond. It was tasteless. It was pandering. It was downright questionably illegal. And just when you think it couldn't get any lower, it asks you <laughs> to hold its beer while it jumps in the dumpster to take us further below.
<laughs> oh my god! Despite the fact it was an absolutely <laughs> awful show, we just couldn't stop watching before somehow enjoying the experience, then accepting it for the awful garbage that it was. And for better or worse, this year would not have been the same without it. Thank you, Eromanga Sensei. I wonder what the reaction would be if Eromanga Sensei came out today, man. If it came out in 2023. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Holy shit, just imagine Twitter, man. Just imagine Twitter. Thank you for providing us with such entertainment over the years and an endless well of memes. Thank you for uniting us and making us realize that we are all just a bunch of degenerates at heart. Goodbye, respectable taste in anime. Hello, FBI registry. The otaku fandom have spoken again, and the final answer to the rest of the world is that anime is trash. And so are we! And that's... See you in part two. And that's how I sent off that meme. Uh, that's, that's the last time... That's the last time I used that meme. I think aside from maybe the ending of the anime in 2017 recap. Good times. Good times. Mm. Alright. Let's go to 2017 part two. All right. Anyone remember what else aired in 2017? Anything else that we remember? What am I going to be mentioning? All right. Summer the 2017. The hype train was still going strong into its second core. But elsewhere in the community, something else was turning up the heat during the summer sun as girls were getting all hot and bothered over a bit of. <laughs> Sorry for anyone watching this with uh without headphones. <laughs> I think that was a joke uh Alan put in and honestly kinda of coded. I completely forgot he did that. <laughs> Of hot hey, I am at work. Come from the thought, <laughs> I'm oh, so sorry, my dude. Probability. <laughs> oh yeah, normal distribution curve, standard deviation. <laughs> yes, despite being a gambling anime, the most entertaining thing was seeing the messed up social hierarchy being torn down from the inside. As the gambling itself was kind of formulaic, and despite the stakes, the tension never felt too high. I mean, the riskiest. Man, what this show proved is after a show like Kaiji, um. Considering the massive impact this had, not exactly when it came out, but on the TikTok and cosplay community, I'm like, all you need is just sexy girls and uh, crazy girls and crazy girls. Doesn't matter what the plot line is. Uh, you could have a way better show. If you have crazy girls, that's what people are going to gravitate towards, man. Scambles, was it? And no. You cannot fix her, chat. You cannot fix her. I'm telling you this right now. Hey guys willing to bet their dicks to get with one of these girls, as sanity seems to be the most barren resources around these parts. You have the choice between sexy Nyan Cat, fucking nailed it, blue balls on her lips, my longest barker ever, more likely to blow her load in you, and of course, Umaru. The crack whore years. However, while this was the main talking point during the season's run, there was another show that at first slipped under the radar, but by the end, now we're talking shoulders above the rest. This is the real shit. Now we're getting to the real shit, my boy.
In a time when modern anime fantasy boils down to the same three overpowered guys being transported <laughs> to Final Fantasy World of Warcraft 10, Made in Abyss took the reins and reminded us oh. just what it should feel like to explore Kevin's soundtrack still hits, man. world in super chibi death hole extravaganza. While it went mostly <coughs> unnoticed thanks to its deceptively cute art style and streaming platform, Mostly anime strike. Anyone remember anime strike? <gasps> anime strike. Oh, the reason nobody watched Made in the Abyss when it came out, man. <laughs> this was the streaming platform uh, before that was sold on Amazon, right? If, if I'm remembering correctly. I can't remember. I can't even fucking remember, man. Anyone who watched episode <coughs> one would have had their reservations immediately blown away with this breathtaking visuals, wonderful world building, and beautiful soundtrack. It's been such a long time since I've been dropped into a world that completely absorbs me from the get-go, revolving around the exploration of this hole of unknown origin and age, filled with mysterious creatures and phenomenon where no one knows how deep it goes. But to put things into perspective, it can fit at least three Toyota Corollas. It's a pit filled with unexplainable phenomenon and many, many, many dangers. So of course, with the abyss being one of the most dangerous places known to man, naturally nothing could ever go wrong with an inexperienced 12 year old girl wandering around aimlessly. Oh hey, who's that round the corner? Oh, it's Uncle Despair. And look, he's brought Aunt Depression and Cousin Misery. The whole family's here. Yes, despite his art style and light heart- It's weird to think how many people got put off this because of the art style. <clears throat> Made in Abyss really had to fucking fight, and I think it's weird to say now that word of mouth is what I feel like got this anime really popular, because um, when I was watching this, it felt like nobody was talking about this at all. And then it won Anime of the Year in the Crunchyroll Anime Awards, and that was like one of the most hype moments, I think, because everyone thought My Hero Academia Season 2 would do it. Started tone initially, as we descend deeper and deeper into the abyss, things get weirder, creatures get deadlier, and the environment becomes brutal and unforgiving, and the series does not shy away from showing you this. It's a show with equal parts heart and equal parts horror that's not for the faint of heart, leading to a climax that had me physically ill one moment, then bawling my eyes out to the next. This was an emotional roller coaster from start to finish, and definitely one of my picks of the year. In the rest of the summer, Aho Girl turned a girl with obvious mental disabilities literally rolled around and acting like a monkey into a slapstick comedy where I we can laugh at the hilarity show. of a girl too stupid to tie her own shoelaces getting <laughs> physically heard. beaten repeatedly in precious thoughts happy fun time abuse we got our first taste of a latin <laughs> ballroom dancing show why, why, why was that show made in Welcome to the Ballroom, an anime where the level of someone's dancing skills is directly correlated with the length of their necks i mean look at them these aren't just necks these are necks yeah, I mean, if their necks are these long at the beginning of the series, I can only imagine how long they will become by the end. And this, what he doing, is to go even further beyond! Oh my god. Ah! I remember the necks being long, I forgot about that singular frame, man. So they did a children allowed us to fight over top couple by giving us short stories of different one of my favorite edits that, Anna, that alan has ever yes, done which is right. why it's i keep getting into it for different memes every now and again because relationships are this thing that happen after people confess and this anime shows that life goes on after two characters start going out what speaking of couples my first girlfriend is a gal gave a totally accurate oh, representation you know of get a girlfriend by simply begging the girl you want to go out with which you know i don't see anything wrong with but on the other hand this is ridiculous it's totally un I forgot this frame exists. What? <laughs> what is that? What is that? Realistic. I mean, who wears black tights on a hot summer's day? Really? See, it's just little inaccuracies like this that just take you out of the experience. Gamers gave us an anime not Bro, actually about gaming, but instead I gave us a so hilarious romantic for a comedy back, where man. the laws of the universe lead to every misunderstanding as physically possible. In Misunderstandings, the anime that also coincidentally has people who play games. Of course, we got an isekai trifecta just when you thought we'd explored everything the concept could have given us. This 
Oh, 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 Garnt, you sweet summer child. Oh, just when you thought, what was this, five years ago? Oh, oh, Garnt, you sweet summer child, man. You sweet summer child. Time we have another word, but with Gordon Ramsay. Another word, but this time I have a smartphone. No, I swear to God, I'm not running out of ideas. And another word, but I was a gun planner, so that makes me a genius engineer able to build any completely overpowered mech in a second. Wait, how does that make any fucking sense? Oh, who cares? Here, have some more giant robots. The power fantasies continued as Classroom of the Elite gave us a main character bored enough to phase out of existence, fucking about in a fictional dystopian in school where you're taught to believe that your entire life's worth correlates to how well you do in exams. With and we had to wait five years, four years, five years for a sequel? Five years for a sequel and we're now getting season three. It's wild to think how many animes are being resurrected uh, now that I'm watching this all the way through again. Which sounds entirely accurate. And Fate Apocrypha added yet another series to the- f Oh, this is so good actually. This is so good. Right, you agree right, honey? Fate Apocrypha? That was so good, right? Loved that. You watched that. Yeah, it was my favorite. <laughs> it was shite. You shut your mouth, sir. Fake <laughs> franchise, just because, you know, the entire universe needed a little expanding with the small amount of titles it already has. And see, it all <laughs> makes sense in the grand canon. <laughs> was this before my, this was way before my fate videos, wasn't it? Everything that was <laughs> I was just, I was just, just a little, I was just, just a little baby looking at, looking at the edge of the hole, of the fate hole, right then. Oh, oh, I was just a little baby. Definitely room to add 50 plus new characters into the mix without getting it confusing. I mean, just look at this character, Shiro Kotomine, who looks like an exact mix of Shiro Emiya and Kirei Kotomine, but he doesn't actually have anything to do with either of them, which makes perfect sense. I mean, why would he have any relation when he only looks exactly like them and shares their name? And of course you have Saber's son, Mordred, who's actually a girl, even though she's meant to be the son of King Arthur, who's also- <laughs> Look at young guy trying to make sense of fate lore. Oh, 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 what a, what a little baby. What a little baby he is. <laughs> Actually a girl in the fate verse who somehow got another girl pregnant to have their son. Who's a girl. It makes perfect sense. Hi, son. Hi, dad. Uh, why are you a girl? Why are you a girl? Well, this is a bit awkward. I have so many questions. Since when did you... I mean, I was just lying to you the entire time. That makes no sense. I'm, I'm pretty sure I would have noticed you having a penis when you came out of your mom. Well, I'm pretty sure mom would have noticed your lack of penis when you got her pregnant with me. Touche. With the temperature coming down and fall just around the corner, there was... Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Makes perfect sense. Makes perfect sense. It's, it's, it's just... Guys, guys, don't worry about it. I could go into uh, how it makes sense now, uh, but just... Just, just don't worry about it, guys. Just don't Lots worry of about hype it. With fan <laughs> favorites getting sequels, old gems being revived, and prominent source material all right, full being adapted. Season. But despite all that, one show was able to make itself heard above all others. Because it was pretty fucking loud. Yes. You got a taste of the good old incest switcheroo with a sisters all you need. Which, despite the name, isn't an incest anime at all, but it's no just a way. slice of life gadget no. about an author. This is what Orimo should have been, man. This is what Orimo should have been. 
who loves <laughs> writing about little sisters. So you see, it's not that weird at all. Isn't that right, Miss? Miss uh, Thirsty Chan. Studio Wits gave us a bit more fantasy as the ancient Magus Bride put the magic Actually, back into magic really with a traditional good. fantasy set in ye olde London in the mysterious Tube Zone 9 and 3 quarters. It was a delightful show, enveloping us in a world in such pleasant subjects like impressionable underage girls being taken away by mature bony men for wife training. <laughs> the awkward initial glorification of human slavery in a master-slave oh, yeah. relationship <laughs> and fantastical <laughs> creatures like dragons <laughs> and this ridiculously aesthetic cat. Oh, I, for I forgot that was a plot point. <laughs> Ooh. Seriously, this cat is better. Still, still. Um, it was a good fantasy show, guys. It was, it was a really good fantasy show. Looking than most, most people I know. If she were to be any prettier, we'd go into. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> we've got a whole host of Edge, with two shows managing to stand out above the rest. But of course, only one can hold the title of Edge Lord of the season, so there's only one way we can settle this. It's time for an edge battle. I thought I was about, I thought I was about to say an edge off there. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't. That would have been great. That would have been a great transition, man. Welcome to edge battle. Here we pitch shows against each other in a hypothetical death tournament to see who can survive and become the next Mirai Niki. In one corner, we have Juni Tyson, a death tournament with characters- I don't remember this. I know the other one, which is King's Game. King's Game solos the edge battle. It was so fucking funny, man. Unironically, so funny. Especially if you watch the dub. It was so Based bad. around the Chinese Zodiac, written by the Monogatari series author. Yes, the edge was certainly strong in this one with gruesome, bloody fights and a cast of weird, quirky, one-dimensional characters. But it has its work cut out today, as on the other side, we have King's Game. A good old death game where the participants have to follow any rule given from the king. We have it all, folks. Blood, rape. More rape, and of course, people nonsensically killing themselves with scenes so poorly written the entire thing turned into a hilarious comedy that could have rivaled most sitcoms. I'm begging you, damn it, sleep with Chibi! I can't! There's no way! <laughs> I won't! Will you just let me die with some honor? <laughs> well, he's unconscious. Yes, with that, the contestant. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was the comedic timing of that man. This is oh my god, it's so so this is so fucking good. I mean, obviously, what was happening is horrific and everything. But my fucking god, they uh, they got the comedic timing down to a pat, man. They got the comedic timing down to a pat. <laughs> this is a set, and we are ready to let them go. And the winner of edgiest show of the season goes to Yuri on Ice. On the other side of the spectrum, Girls Last Tour gave a soothing experience of two cute Moe girls exploring a post-apocalyptic world, sprinkled with some light philosophy. It's thoughtful, atmospheric tone about- Bro laughing at his own jokes? I don't think you understand. Is Kino's journey I do not remember these videos at all. Journeying on a motorcycle, which is weird because that makes it a better Kino's which journey makes it a great time for me. Kino's journey 2017 that's also aired this season. Neo Yokio gave us an anime experience set in the labyrinths of Jaden Smith's mind, giving us the wokus- Hold Holy shit, Neo Yokio was this one! With enough money and Holy you shit! You can do anything, even make your dreams come true and make the most elaborate and expensive- Honestly, this was also great, man. This was also great. Expensive shit post of all time. Land of the Lustrous broke all conventions by making a CG anime Ooh, that looks okay. good. This year's kind of no, goaded. Seriously, this year's kind of goaded. It looks good. It looks really, really good. It's not just above average. It's not just good looking for CG. It is legit one of the best looking shows this season. And uh oh. We gotta get out of there. There's been a good looking CG anime. The universe has been thrown off balance. Quick, throw in more Berserk 2017. <laughs> Man, it's weird to think that Hoseki no Kuni was the, like, this was how Orange got onto the map. Man, we did not fucking know. <laughs> we did not know how good CG could be until uh, Land of the Lustrous came out, man. This was all we had to live with beforehand, man! 
Recovery of an MMO junkie gave an accurate portrayal of socially awkward female gamers in the story of a 30 year old woman quitting her job to find her true passion and friends in the online world. While a pleasant thought, I can't help but think that it's a bit irresponsible. I mean, where's this story supposed to go? Does she find that she wants to express her passion in another way? Then she makes a YouTube channel, then she gets obsessed with it. Then she quits her well paying respectable job she spent four years of university studying for to make stupid videos online for a living. All right, I don't know if this is a hot take. Uh, now I'm remembering MMO Junkie. Uh, so I have voiced my dissatisfaction with... Um, what's the romance anime that came out this year? Uh, the one with the gamer, level 99. Oh, Yamada-kun? Yamada Yamada, level 99 Yamada-kun. I voiced my dissatisfaction with that romance anime that came out this year about romance with gamers in it. Uh, I feel like this is, if you're gonna watch a romance about gamers, this is it. This this is the one. This is this is what I wanted Yamada-kun to be. Level 999. Junkie gets an accurate portrayal of socially awkward female gamers in the story of a 30 year old woman quitting her job to find her true passion and friends in the online world. While a pleasant thought, I can't help but think that it's a bit irresponsible. I mean, where's this story supposed to go? Does she find that she wants to express her passion in another way? Then she makes a YouTube channel, then she gets obsessed with it. Then she quits her well paying respectable job she spent four years of university studying for to make stupid videos online for a living. <laughs> <laughs> the community were up in arms about Blendes asking what does oh, S yes stand meme. for? Sure enough, it surfaced, starting the story of Sakura no Miya. As she is scouted into Stile, sadistic though she is, a suitable oh, right situates line. herself in a superfluous shack of sisters, cinderbase, senpais and surprises, selling the sweetest of snacks with sterling services. This story, a slice of life, Cilia swallows, showcased such simple, stimulating satisfaction, staging some side-splitting shenanigans stylishly supported by stars. Signif a sprightly, spunky, spirited show that is surefire to spring a smile. So, in summation, S stands for SUCK MY BIG FAT <laughs> Fuck man, I'm remembering- I'm still proud of that paragraph. Holy shit. <laughs> I don't know- I don't know what I was cooking that day, but I was fucking cooking, man. Oh my- holy shit. <laughs> I couldn't do that nowadays. I, I don't think I could do that nowadays, man. Oh, man. Sword Art Online, Ordinal Skill, launched off this year in anime films. That's right, check out that seamless segue. Giving thousands of viewers the thing they've been hoping to see out of the franchise for all these years. A good movie. Asuna's Nipples. Studio oh, Shaft yeah. gifted us- We did have fucking Asuna's Nipples, didn't we? With oh, Uchiyage man. Hanabi, a movie that was hyped up thanks to its gorgeous music video, which after Fell release off, was yeah. certainly met with I pe I peaked with that one paragraph. The couldn't couldn't match it ever since. Hair color is Senjigahara purple, which is God. Remember this movie and how hyped up the music video was. If video, only, if only the movie was, was as good as this, uh, as good as the music video. But obviously, the biggest problem was that this girl's hair color is Senjigahara purple, which is blatantly breaking terms of services. So we in the Senjigahara Union will be pressing charges. The Hollywood adaptation of Ghost in the Shell got released through its whitewashing controversy, and following the history of anime fans getting upset over live-action films, I can safely say that this is one of the most okay cinema experiences I've ever had. Yep, I mean, I was, thinking about it just makes. I was very whelmed in this one. You go, oh God, it's just so adequate. Whitewashing, however, was only one of the concerns with Netflix's Death Note, as instead of just doing oh. basic whitewashing, they decided to do some pussy edgelord fuckboy, dear God, this is worse than emo oh. Spider-Man washing. Undoing the lights you know in a single scream, though, to be fair, this movie's lights did see something absolutely terrifying. <laughs> And finally, Pokemon I Choose You made news within the community as halls of fully grown adults were reduced to a state of shell shock in a moment, encapsulated by the most relatable the fuck in history. Capping off the year, they gave us more cheap. I forgot about that clip. More Hitler, more Chinese virus, wearing more tiny mini skirts. More children of the fuck? Dad, more pasty waifus in a year of more thick dragons, more thick necks, more thick tits, and no truck wrecks. More happy relationships, more real relationships, more depressing relationships with more misunderstandings, just in time for more lolly despair. <laughs> a very loud Asta shouting Sasagiya with too many words beginning with S. More Rakugo, more Shogi, more CG chains, more CG pain, more CG. Sh 
shame and finally some good CG came. More Robocop, more Jaden Smith, more transported to a fantasy world, a fantasy world, a fantasy world, and just one transported to a normal world. More death games against more death tournaments against more Cinderay junk food for more incest authors because anime is trash and so am I. More gambogasms, more cute philosophies, so, so many more fates and oh. finally more. Tournament! That was anime in 2017. Fun little... Fun little tidbit. Um... I actually passed out saying that tournament arc. I was like, this is, this is like, this is the end of year and this is like how I send off my memes. So the last video was, um... The last video was me sending off the anime trash and so my meme. Uh, so I was like, I really, really want to send off uh, this tournament arc. So I like stood up and I'm not a trained voice actor or anything, right? But I'm like, I'm just gonna do this like and push myself. And I recorded this line about five times in a row. And um, I was like, I can go harder. I can go harder. I can go longer. Uh, and then I remember recording this line and then the next, like, I was, I was standing up like this. And the next thing I know, I was just, I was just like on my gaming chair like this. <laughs> I was like, what, what, the, what the fuck happened? <laughs> um, and I'd heard that uh, voice actors had done the same thing. I was like, they're fucking lying. You, you can't fucking pass out from like saying a line. <laughs> and it fucking, fucking happened to me for a second, right? It was it's so, so weird. Uh. In hope you had a great year and I will see you in 2018. <laughs> million subs boys, we fucking Woo! Million subs, baby! Actually, you know, you know one fucking amazing thing? I reached a million subs on the day, on New Year's. Uh on New Year's, the day this was uploaded. That was I was fated to be, man. It was actually fated. So, that was anime in 2017, which is, means we have watched five years of anime already. Uh, which means... I think, uh... What has been your favorite years so far, guys? I'm gonna, I'm gonna start a poll. All right, I'm going to start a poll of what's the best year of anime that we've gone through so far. Um, <clears throat> we have 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, and 2017. Um, I'm going to give my opinion after the poll has ended while I take a quick piss. What has won? 2017 has won with almost a landslide. Is this is this recency bias, guys? Is this recency bias? Is this re is this recency bias right here? <laughs> I'm surprised that you guys think 2016 is better than 2013. That's that's uh that is a surprising thing because 2013 was also fucking amazing. I don't know. I think 2017 was still fucking great. 
I still think 2014 had more pound for pound bangers. Um, although to, oh, it's hard. It's it's it's, a, it's just about equal. I'm gonna have to like re go through both of them now. But so far, I do think it is 2017 and 2014 kind of kind of up top together. But uh, I guess we're going to move on now to 2018. Now, I it's interesting watching this series because. Uh, I myself uh, get to see my own style, let's say, evolve over the time. And so I, right now I'm going through anime season by season, but I think it's 2018 where I kind of change my style a bit. Um, so let's see. Man, you've changed. I mean, you get to see it's. I don't know how it is for you guys getting to see my anime videos getting to evolving into what modern me is. A lot of my humor has stayed the same, uh, but how I format my scripts and shit is also a little bit different. Uh, I have to. I remember this one. This one got copyright struck to hell so actually i'm going to be playing a render that i downloaded if i can get this up okay <sighs> All right. Let me close that. Let me close. All right. Are we ready for twenty eight? Are we ready for twenty eighteen? Um. So I remember I was really, really, really close to quitting my anime and year reviews this year, just because my part one and part two videos summar summarizing the year just kept getting longer and longer. And so I really, really needed to change the format because this was getting to a point where the, when I started the series, I could keep up with most of the anime coming out every year and then they just kept getting more and more fucking anime out. <laughs> uh, but I remember being really proud of this video. I haven't seen this in a very, very long time. So let's, uh, let's have a look in what 2018 was like. Well, it's finally come time that we have to say goodbye to 2018. But what did the year offer for us in our little corner of anime? <laughs> 2018 was a monster year for anime. Not just in terms of the number of anime coming out, but in- This is, this is the year where I really sat down with Alan. And I was really like, here's my vision for this video. Um, can we get like an editing team together? Because I have like a certain way I want this video to be presented. Uh, <laughs> and I've forgotten how big of a difference it already is coming from the 2017 video, man. <laughs> the quality of what's available and the amount of exciting announcements we have to look forward to. It's never been more exciting to be an anime fan. But anime is still anime, warts and all. So I'm here to celebrate the best, the worst, and the weirdest. Oh, Devil Man Cry, baby. This oh, this, year. Is this is a goaded year, man. Anime in 2018. This is a fucking go This year, year we're going to be doing things a bit differently. Instead of going through season by season, there's just been too much anime to go through. So instead, I wanted to break things up into categories for all the different things that impacted me and the community this year. I can't guarantee that I'll cover everything. I can't even guarantee that I'll cover every good show this year. But I will do my best as I definitely know what I want to start with. Because there was one relatively new company that definitely made its mark on the industry this year with an absolute bang. Because they started it with an absolute banger.
Oh! What a fucking banger song, man! What a banger song! The death of 2017 didn't get much of a rest because the very beginning of 2018 was marked with Devil Man Fever with Masaki Yuasa and Netflix's latest adaptation to the classic franchise God, Devil Man so Prime. Fucking good. This brought Gona Guy's influential title to the modern day consensus, allowing every anime nerd to pretend like they were one of the seven Devil Man fans that existed before this was released. The show was a breath of fresh air in the current anime climate, bringing back the raw, unhinged nature that used to be a staple of anime back in the early 90s, leading to an ending so traumatizing it was only then the viewers realized the fort God, the ending of Devilman still hits. I still remember that from time to time. I still would just get flashbacks of that ending. What a fucking ending, man. What a what a good show. The, the show was actually Devil Man Cry Baby Yourself to Sleep. Though that didn't stop the community from absolutely falling in love with this show as it became everyone's obsession for the start of the year. We were in awe to the experience that was the original Devil Man dub. The and to think that this popped off the year of anime, this this popped everything off. This was like just we were just starting the year of anime and they they dropped this banger. What a fucking year to start off. What a way to start this year off, Devil man. Devilman Dash took over the Naruto run, even if it was just a rehash of the Squeaky Doo Sprint. And of course, we were all bopping our heads to one of the tracks of the year in a phenomenon scientists have coined as an absolute banger. But of course, Netflix didn't end there this year with many more high profile original and licenses that would truly cement them as the newest big player in this industry. Agretzko continued Netflix's trend of using funny, harmless animal mascots to hide a painfully relatable show oh. sure to start an existential crisis in its workplace comedy? Drama? The personification of r slash mildly infuriating as a show? Yeah, that's cool, Castlevania released a much positive reception from the anime community despite the fact that it wasn't made in Japan at all. Serious the Jaeger and B the beginning gave us some of the best action direction this year had to offer that not many people saw. One of my favorite small skirmishes is the super sonic fight scene. Oh, this scene, scene. this scene's so good. They slow down so the speed of the rain droplets established just how fast they are moving. <laughs> Man, Netflix kind of popped off this year, huh? <laughs> Netflix, Netflix kind of popped off this year. They wasn't even part of the seasonal anime grind. <laughs> God, it's so cool. Backy the Grappler was revived to show us- Backy as well? Fuck me, you gotta stop, Netflix. You gotta stop. The ideal male form. <laughs> In an insane action show, there was almost as if someone looked at the likes of JoJo's, Fist of the North Star, and Dragon Ball Z and goes, Wow, what a bunch of fucking pussies. Plus, we had Godzilla, Children of Wales, High School Girl, Ico Incarnation, and more. If there's one thing we can look back at 2018 for, it's for the start of the anime streaming wars. With Anime Strike Dead, Amazon Prime Hello, Blue, Anime Strike. Four, and Crunchyroll and Funimation <laughs> going through their relationship troubles like... I think we should get a divorce. Like a real divorce? Netflix certainly made... And then, and then they became the same company, guys. And then, and then they both got swallowed by Daddy Sony. <laughs> Woo! Made their statement loud and clear this year. We're gonna be a big part of this anime industry and we mean fucking business. Now excuse me while I go jam out to Devilman no Uta a bit more. Still a banger, man. Still a banger. We're a long way from Texas. I learned two important lessons this year. One, Isekai will never die. Ever. You throw one of them in a flaming <laughs> dumpster, and then through the ashes, three more majestic burning bin liners will rise up to it take never its place. It and never soon, stopped. It never stopped. No matter how much I complain about them, I'll still end up All right, what is Kai this year? Because to me, <clears throat> Isekai is now that abusive partner I keep coming back to, even though I know it's unhealthy. And I realized this when I finished Death March to the Parallel World Rhapsody, which, no, is not Why the newest My Chemical this? Romance album name, but the most by the books Why generic Isekai this? power fantasy show, which I finished. And I still. Don't know why I did that. I still don't no know why. That start my I still don't know why. To Isekai this year. <clears throat> After Ragnarok and Conception Squared. I think this was the year that I just accepted that I was just beyond saving. And I literally do think it was Death March to the Parallel World Rhapsody that made me accept just the Isekai trash that I was.
Started off to take the crown for the worst isekai of the year. In one corner you have Harem Bait where everyone is the main character's little sister. And in the other corner was the pregnancy isekai with a guy getting transported to another world to take part in a ceremony called the Love Ritual. Which in this world, giggity giggity, is done to get girls pregnant. Which sounds like an awful show idea and was an awful show idea, but you know what? At least we just have a simple story of a guy who's finally found a world where he can just get laid a bunch of times. I'm, I'm, I'm happy for him. The Love Ritual is not a sexual act. Bitch, are you fucking kidding me? How not to summon the demon lord gave us over- I completely con forgot about conception. <laughs> Yo, imagine. <laughs> fucking imagine, man. Lord High School <laughs> DXD edition in a show we've all seen before but somehow enjoyed anyway. I mean, it even had a girl called Remnant. Japan maybe sense. needs so that. It's <laughs> nice to see an isekai where Remnant actually best girl rather than the worst. That's bait. Speaking of Overlord, the fan favorite show returned with our most beloved overpowered skeleton, Lord Irons, being more ruthless than ever. As viewers slowly started to realize, are we the baddies? The season garnered mixed reception with Lord Irons' awesome world takeover campaign being thwarted by bad CG to rival Berserk 2016. Highlights included the fearsome goblin army battling a group of bowling pins and whatever the fuck this climax was meant. <laughs> Oh, the CG for this season. Oh, oh, it does hurt, doesn't it? it I, I forgot. I forgot about this bowling, this bowling Ever, pin scene. As viewers slowly started to realize, are we the baddies? The season garnered mixed reception with Lord Irons' awesome world takeover campaign being thwarted by bad CG to rival Berserk 2016. <laughs> Look at this shit. Look at this shit. An army battling a group of bowling pins <laughs> and whatever the fuck this climax was meant to be. Let's have a round of applause for this CG masterpiece. However, that time I got reincarnated as a slime picked up any slack proving that we all had one all more right. place for an isekai to work Here we go. way Here to we go. our hearts. I've already made a video about this so I won't dwell on it, but this was the isekai that proved to me that I could still fall in love with an isekai show that went back to its roots. But that's it, alright? We're done. Nothing isekai is ever going to surprise me again because we've reached the limits of everything this genre has to offer. So let's just all move on now, alright? I am overpowered. You think you're the only protagonist transported to another world? <laughs> Lord Irons, you've become part of a bigger universe. You just don't know it yet. Who the hell are you? Karakao, director <laughs> of Trap. <laughs> oh, oh, hello, hello. It's this company. It's this company I've never heard of and was making memes about, guys. Um. Huh. Huh, this is 2018. I was uh, still living in Thailand and the UK at this point, huh? Huh. Oh, it's, it's, oh. Hi. Hi, Daddy. <laughs> I'm here to talk to you about the Izakai Initiative. This was a wild idea looking back, man. Izakai Quartet was a wild idea. No! <clears throat> <laughs> Who remembers this? Who remembers this? Who's seen this? Who's seen this? Well, there's anime, there's bound to be controversies, <laughs> letdowns, and of course, just straight up trash. And as always, 2018 did not fail to deliver. Rio's work is never done. Island and my sister, my writer, were just some of Japan's continuing efforts to, by trial and error, develop a weapon to surpass Era Manga Sensei. In response, the UN reminded Japan that they would not tolerate any research into the development of future WMDs, weapons of mass degeneracy. The Edge Award this year was a clear toss up between Maho Shoujo Sites and Killing Bites. The oh first shit, Killing Bites! Killing bites. <laughs> actually, actually, this one I don't remember. Killing bites. Still, uh, still checks out, man. <laughs> still checks out. <laughs> all I can, all I can say is maybe after watching Killing Bites, uh, I'll put Cat Girls higher on my previous tier list, guys. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Yuri, and the other being the furry beatdown galore, giving us our favorite kind of boner. The Y Boner. And then we have the Yuri Anime Citrus giving us our other favorite kind of boner. The Cry Boner. Dereku had that one guy in every hentai you've ever seen. 
You know the one. Fist of the Blue Sky showed us some next level shit, while Persona 5 the animation forgot the second part of its own name, giving us the blandest video game adaptation since every video game adaptation Oh, so ever. sad, so I sad, man. I guess you say fans never saw that happening. You didn't say the thing. I'll go the fuck to sleep. And of course, we have the story of the two shows that kicked up the biggest storm oh. this year. Darling in the Fran- Oh. And when anime controversy was like this. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. oh I remember the shitstorm. Do you guys remember the shitstorm? Who was around? Who watched Darling in the Franks Weekly? And who was around when Goblin Slayer episode one aired, man? Who who was around? Who was around? Oh, oh, the internet was such a shitstorm. Take me back. It was so much fun. Franks and Goblin Slayer. Both shows had some pretty decent hype going into them. I mean, one was a collaboration between A1 Pictures and the much-loved Studio Trigger, and the other had a pretty loyal following from its source material. So, you know what? It looks promising. Franks was bringing back the good old 2D mecha goodness we've all missed with some premium Trigger hype along with... What's this? Butt control? Oh, Trigger, back at it again with... Fuck control! Oh yeah! <laughs> the peak of human engineering. And look, it's a Dungeons and Dragons inspired fantasy world with a man named Goblin Slayer who slays goblins on a show called Goblin Slayer. Not sure what this anime could be about, but what's the worst that could happen? Alright, so Franks is turning out to be a pretty introspective character drama, which I wasn't expecting, but damn, I am on board. This is the cutest thing ever. Zero Two is clearly best girl of the season. We even got some girl with a Rem haircut going against Zero Two. I can see where this is going, more like Rem hair cuck, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Checks minute, out. What are you doing with this? No, no, no. I don't. I don't like where this is going, friends. What is it? What, what is it? Oh God! Why? Why would you let her do that? No, Goro! Why would you do that to Goro? Oh, Goro. You, can save, you can save me, right? But wait, 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 wait. No, no. What is this mess? Oh God! Look at the fucking internet. Goblins, 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 goblins. Why are there so many goblins everywhere? Why is Alex Jones talking about goblins? Oh, for fuck's sake! Sword out of mind. Why are you getting involved too? This is like your third fucking time. Where the fuck are you, friends? Who the fuck is piloting this vehicle right now? Who's in charge of the Frank's ride? Why is the pilot? And that's Why are there aliens? Why are we in space? Why is Zero Two a giant fucking space waifu? What the fuck is going on? God. Take me fucking back, man. What a great time to be on the internet. Take me back. That was such a fun time, seeing the entire internet just break down. Oh man, take me fucking back. Such a good year. <clears throat> This year we got no shortage of absolutely beautiful shows and stories. Anime that would suck you into their world and characters, connect with you on a level not many other things could, and occasionally even take your breath away. Shows like After the Rain, Flavors of Youth, continuing anime's declaration of war against real life oh, food. God. Some of the best background work all year was done by Irizuku with the World of Colors, and by God was it absolutely stunning. Bloom Into You portrayed one of the most relatable, down-to-earth romantic relationships I've seen in anime that explores our perception of what love is as teenagers, what we expected to be and what we actually experience when we find our first relationship. And I think it says a lot about how well they handled this given that the romance I related to the most this year happened to be one between two anime girls. This However, so despite good. all these shows being great, I think it's pretty amazing we got blessed with three of the most beautiful shows of the year within a single span of winter. God, despite such a my good initial reservations, year. there was something quite magical about Violet Evergarden. In this age of instant communication, it can be easy to forget what the charm of a simple letter was. But when you are forced to limit your communication to a single A4 piece of paper, it makes the words you choose that much more important. The series through its various stories made me realize just how much I took for granted the art of expressing your emotions. And I had my favorite singular standalone episode of the year. Episode 10 is a goddamn masterpiece. They oh, episode 10. Oh. Can't, why are you doing this to yourself? <laughs> oh, episode 10, man. Holy shit. Oh, I remember how many fucking tears I cried during that scene, man. Oh.
you don't even need to watch the rest of the series to enjoy. It's just unfortunate that my complete disinterest in Miss Full Metal Saber herself as a character never left, and the series was much more appealing to me when Violet was just a vehicle to tell other people's stories. I'm just kidding, Violet. You can't be anything like Saber, because she's already Saber. Maybe I'll be Saber. I'm already Saber. Actually, I'm already Saber. Um, no. <laughs> this, is, this, this planted the seed for me making fake memes, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I'm already Saber. No, you're all wrong. I'm the original Saber. Then we had Eurocamp, which is probably- Eurocamp as well. Oh. Probably the only purely Moe show I've enjoyed, and that's because I absolutely fell in love with the atmosphere. This is the comfiest show I've ever seen. I mean, every character looks like they're in a state of permanent comf, but it also had its moments of quiet, breathtaking beauty that'll make you want to take a stroll in the woods and camp under the night sky. If you took that fuzzy feeling of snuggling up in a blanket next to a fireplace on a cold winter's night with a hot chocolate in hand and turned that aura into an anime, that would be Eurocamp. However, no anime connected to me deeply Deeper this year than a place further oh, than the universe. Shit. This show cap. Yo, the bangers just keep coming, man. The bangers just keep coming. Just a desire in our lives to one day do something out the ordinary. Finding the right group of friends to share some remarkable experience with, and doing that thing you've told yourself you were gonna do but never found the right push to actually do it. The simple journey of four girls finding their way to Antarctica was breathtaking. It was joyous. It was silly. It was bittersweet. It was heartbreaking. And by God, was it inspiring. Who knew that this serendipitous meeting between a group of girls going on this awe-inspiring odyssey could ignite some fire in me to want to achieve something incredible. Cute girls doing cute things? Nah, I prefer cute girls doing amazing things. Oh, is we're not even at the end of the video, and I'm like, yeah, this uh, this year already solos what we've seen before. This 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 uh, this is a fucking incredible year, man! Holy shit, we got this many bangers in one year! Oh. <laughs> Being an older webgen anime fan in 2018 was fucking weird. We had a fair share of- Editing and rising is on point. Thank you very much, man. Hope you've enjoyed seeing uh, the evolution from the very first video, man. I, I do try to- uh, Change up and improve my craft every year. Sequels for recent anime, but nothing prepared me for the amount of sequels and remakes to shows we haven't seen for close to a decade or more. Card Captor Sakura, Full Metal Panic, Fooly Cooly, Index, Legends of the Galactic Heroes, High School DXD. We're getting a remake to Fruits Basket. Fucking Fruits Basket! It was like someone built a time machine and took us back to 2007. I distinctly remember a moment when I was watching all these new old franchises and I thought, fuck, am I just back at the beginning of my anime fandom? Which was an awesome feeling. Yeah, this was was the year that I think started off the whole resurrecting really old anime and getting sequels to anime that we thought the industry had forgotten about. Um, it was it was really fucking weird uh, this year. Now it feel I feel like it's more normal, but this was the year that started everything off. I think. Aside from that, we also had a lot of other sequels as well. Boku no My Green Naruto Academia returned with another season of hype that saw the biggest and most important fight of the series thus far. Thick Superman versus Darth Wanker's Cramp. The fight provided probably the biggest moment of the entire year that saw Americans proudly cheering at something they could finally be patriotic about. A Japanese superhero speaking broken English punching a man in a cartoon from Asia. It was such a big event, I honestly think we should take this opportunity to rename the 4th of July Happy United States of Smashed. The anime community's favorite punching bag returned for another round in Sword Art and Lion, Alice is a- No, actually, I, I, I don't remember if I watched it all the way when I made the script, but uh, actually no. Actually, peak SAO. Should, peak SAO. the best season of Sword Art Online so far. Which doesn't really say much. Our favorite time traveling scientist and crew returned to us to give us more time travel sufferings in- Yo, Alice is Asian 2018 as well? Okay, actually, <laughs> let's just put it over the edge. Stein's Gay Zero. <laughs> With a much more serious and darker tone, fans hardly got to see the Okabe as his cheerful, charismatic self they knew, as instead he took up his new identity. I am sad scientist. It's so gloom. Son of a bitch. Tokyo Ghoul. Wait, was Stein's Gay Zero the, uh, it was the movie? No, it was, 
It was the spin-off series, right? If I remember correctly. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, like, it was like a full season. Alright, I'm trying to... Just wanted to fully remember. So gloom! Son of a bitch. Take your goal. <laughs> Confused anime and manga fans alike, but at least it gave the viewers exactly what they were waiting for. As celebrations could be felt around the anime community as an entire fandom excitedly cheered on one man epically failing No Nuts November. And- Oh yeah, yo, that was- that was- that was hype. <laughs> my boy! My boy did it! <laughs> my boy fucking did it! He finally did it! Finally, Attack on Titan Season 3 continued the show's ever-evolving plot developments in a new season that had less to do with attacking Titans and was more like a high-stakes political drama following an eternal My boy power nodded! I would say it became he like the Game of Anime, but I won't, because now that's become a far overused comparison that has lost all meaning from everyone- Man, it's insane to think that in the year of 2018, in my recap, uh... Out of all the bangers that I put at the beginning, I was just like, oh, by the way, Attack on Titan Season 3, which is uh, my favorite season of Attack on Titan, uh, that's just like an uh, afterthought at the end. Uh, like, this, this just happened, by the way. This, this just happened. It's, it's Attack on Titan Season 3. Eternal Power Struggle. I would say became like the Game of Thrones of anime, but I won't, because now that's become a far overused comparison that has lost all meaning from everyone and their mum using it to describe every show. And I think a much more unique way to describe it is that it's basically just the Dark Souls of anime. By far, the highlight of this new season was the discovery of new best girl, Historia, being the sleeper hit this entire time who finally skyrocketed past all other contestants who take the clear lead in the best oh. girl race. Unfortunately, due to scheduling it- Oh, Historia. Oh. Oh. You had your moment to shine. You had your moment, man. <laughs> you had your moment. What can I say, man? Choose the hype of season three would be cut short to actually be continued next year, which was so sad. Alexa, play Sasage, yo. Here's a sample of Despacito remix. Alexa, no! Alright, what we got left? Finally, in the rest of the year, we also had a mix of surprising, hype, and just downright weird stuff to round off 2018 in anime. In the sports corner, Run With The Wind was probably my pick for most underrated sports anime of this year. Actually, had some of the best I forgot about Run With The Wind. That was so underrated. That's also an IG sports anime. So it's from the same company that made Haikyuu and Kuroko no Basket. And I think that it is highly highly underrated because people didn't watch it because it's an anime about running but it hits those same emotional highs um but except it's actually ended direction and animation even if it took itself way too fucking seriously and really should have come with some kind of splash warning with the enormous amount of sweat that was shed every match however this was the year megalobox put megalobox as well Megalo box as well? The box back into boxing in a hype as fuck reimagining of a classic boxing manga with a soundtrack that was hashtag an absolute How stacked banger. can banana one year be? And Banana Fish? All the right notes what? while showcasing Mappa's just newfound keeps power going. of Yuri and Ice to be able to control the moistness of all Yaoi fangirls at will. Osmosis Jones got his anime adaptation in Cells at Work, providing a cute educational show about the human body. We got to learn about all our favorite cells. See, that's red blood cells, you got white blood cells, you got platelets, you got uh, sperm cells, cancer cells, oh that's just straight up stage 4 leukemia, here's my brain cells when it's 4am and I have a 7 o'clock meeting, oh and there they are again when I'm trying to do anything productive ever. <laughs> Idol anime got a fresh lick of paint this year. Firstly, there were theatre lesbians trying to kill each other on stage to the sound of J-pop in Revue Starlight. We got horse idols in Uma Musume giving us some Nico Aww. Nico. <laughs> oh god, I'm so sorry. Zombieland Saga was the first idol show I enjoyed immensely. It was a great show, but it was just let Zombie down by god awful performances that would have made the climax. I mean, first two episodes so are really dug. More harder. I mean, I wasn't exactly a fan of Love Live's use of CG, but even that looked ten times better than what we saw here. God, maybe I should just watch Love Live instead. Wait, what the fuck did I just say? We got a shit post cleverly disguised as an anime series in Pop Team Epic. The faithful were rewarded as JoJo fans finally got to see the dance they were all JoJo waiting Pop for. Five. Yet another JoJo reference that makes absolutely no sense oh, out of context. Oh, oh. Probably in context. SSSS, SSSS, Gridman Man brought the hype factory trigger shows after Frank had killed it, danced on his grave, and shot it up into space, providing some of the hypest action scenes along with the most unique and atmospheric direction in any anime of 2018. 
that no one really cared about because Lord have mercy on my soul we found what a new religion ad- and it what was an actual fucking lives. absolutely stacked year Peter Mutt's one of the most wholesome anime of the entire it's weird to think that I'm like looking at all this I, I had a lukewarm reception to Hinamatsuri now but I really fucking liked Hinamatsuri it's really good but there are so many bangers this year how's this meant to stand out man how's this meant to stand out yeah despite being hyped up as comedy of the season yes we're gonna visit from the fields train experiencing a Yakuza getting to play a father figure to a collection of some absolutely adorable little girls giving us some good old daughter porn Wait, no, that's, that came out right. That's not what I meant. The best girl debate was instead replaced with best daughter, which of course was Anzu because she's the most precious thing in this entire world, versus Hina, who in a nutshell is an absolute piece of shit, but God, I love her. And finally, Rascal... <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I would... I would... <laughs> I would not describe Hina any other way. I forgot I wrote that line, but actually, fucking checks out, baby. Does not dream of Bunny Girl Senpai, <laughs> proof that clickbaiting doesn't- And Rascal does not dream of Bunny Girl Senpai as well. Just is, is, was there a bad show this year? Was, was, there, a, was, there, was there a fucking bad show this year? YouTube videos by baiting an audience with the promise of plot, only to have viewers stay for plot. <clears throat> with some of the best girls and some of the best written dialogue all year that was basically the equivalent of playing through a visual novel, picking every troll dialogue option along the way and somehow ending up with the harem ending. The series had one of the catchiest OPs all season, had viewers singing along to the opening line of every episode. Many have pointed out that the lyrics to the song sound like this, but I'm not so sure. Let's see if that's true if every word is pronounced properly. I don't remember this opening. Oh my god. Oh yeah, that's, that's definitely it. And that was anime in 2018. It's been a year of hype, year of tears, year of great girls, year of controversy, year of incredibly inspirational shit, year of this year had it all. fucking bangers. And most of all, it's been a great fucking year of anime. I hope you've had a happy new year. Thank you for sticking with me through this year. And let's get ready for 2019. Happy 2019, guys. Hope you- Wow. Uh, so we watched five years previously, and I thought it's pretty close. It's pretty close. I mean, I, if, if you thought 2014, 2017 was the best year, uh, this year was fucking stacked. Holy shit. I was waiting for some downtime in this year to just chill out and have some forgettable shows that I don't remember. Every time I was like, okay, okay, that's the last show I'm gonna remember for this year. I would mention a show that came afterwards. I was like, and I just thought, okay, now it's peaked, now it's peak. And it just kept fucking going. It had everything, including the controversy that made the internet so much fun as well. My God. How's, how's any year gonna compete with this? <laughs> All right. Well, that was anime in 2018. We are going pretty close now. We're going 2019. This has been a six hour stream. I know. It's been. <laughs> it's been a way longer stream than I envisioned it to be. Um, but hey. I'm here for my Christmas holidays, guys. It's been fun. <laughs> you okay, hon? Yep. What happened? It's just watching the game. <laughs> Okay. All right. We have 2019, 2020, 21, and 22 left. We have four more years left. Oh, I guess I have already done 10 years. Huh, I've already done 10 years. <laughs> wow, it's, it's a full decade. <sighs> All right, let me see if I have the original. We're getting to the point where I might have the original renders uh to some of these videos which would make it a little bit better quality if i still have them it might not it might be on another computer 
and I mean 2019. Because the problem is, I uh, sometimes I need to cut segments out uh, because this was the point where I guess people started watching my videos and uh, I could not avoid copyright anymore. All right, looks like I don't have any. Okay, looks like it's on my other computer. All right, I guess we've got to go with the YouTube yeah. upload. So we shall do that. This the first video I ever watched me was from 2014? 2014? God damn. So you've been here uh, since almost the beginning of this little journey. All right, we have now reached anime in 2019. Can, does any year have a chance of going up against the absolute giga chad that is 2018 anime? I don't know, did anime just fucking level up in 2018? I don't know, because I feel like it just reached a whole new height compared to everything that came before it. Let's have a look at anime in 2019, thanks to Daddy Bookwalker. This video is sponsored by Bookwalker. Well, we've reached the end of 2019, and once again we get to look back on another year of anime. We got to see all kinds of shows in all shapes and forms, so that begs the question, what are you going to remember 2019 for? Okay. Okay! 2019 has somehow equaled or maybe even eclipsed the monster year that was- Okay, maybe we might have some competition. Maybe we might have some competition. Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh! Oh! God damn! Anime is good now. It's just good. And with more of it than ever before, we have not been struggling for choices. We've had the good, the bad, the ugly, and just the plain weird. So as we take a look back at what we watched and probably what we oh, missed, fuck off. let's see how I... anime signed itself off for this decade. This is Anime in 2019. Wait, hold on a second. I'm good. Hold on a second. <laughs> Let me... I do have YouTube Premium, you fucking liar. Let me watch my own goddamn videos in the... <laughs> In the quality, oh my god, I don't know what's going on. I'm gonna going be on. honest with you, even I had- <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Double scams, six. man! Oh. Oh. The oh, fuck. Okay, is incognito mode fucking this up? This video is sponsored by Bookwalker. Okay, I guess we'll just have to do... What the fuck? YouTube! Okay, now, now you're just fucking with me. Let's reset everything. This video. Okay, no enhanced bitrate, I guess. <laughs> what we missed. Let's see how anime signed itself off for this decade. This is anime in 2019. I'm gonna be honest with you, even I had trouble keeping up with all the anime coming out last year and I feel that's just kind of the norm nowadays. So, instead of trying to cover everything, I'm just gonna keep it to my personal favourite things, ending it on my anime of the year. But I'll do my best to talk about everything that mattered to me and made waves in our community. And looking back for a place to start- Audio? Can't hear? Was it louder before? Um. But in 2019, there was one thing we kept having to ask ourselves over and over again. Are you excited for more Isekai next season? No. <laughs> no, not another one. You're joking. 
Not another one? One of these days I'll get to look back on a year of anime and think to myself, man, there was a reasonably conservative amount of isekai this time. This year wasn't one of them. Somehow the number doesn't seem to be decreasing, but increasing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Every year, baby. Every year we come back with more, guys. <laughs> Every time I say to myself, surely we can't get even more isekai next year. No, that is a trap. Don't say it. As soon as you do, some unsuspecting victim tries to cross the road and truck kun claims another life and nobody can stop it. So I'm just going to stop doing it. I'm not going to think about it. I'm just not going to say it anymore. All right. And this isn't even a dig at the genre. This year we saw more variation than the usual power fantasy affair that we're used to. <laughs> this, is, this is when I start becoming aware. <laughs> He's aware now. You've seen the entire journey. You're like, yeah, yeah, this may maybe I'll get tired of this isekai thing. Maybe it will like pass, right? It'll pass. It'll pass. <laughs> Hero, Kimonomichi, and Ascendance of a Bookworm all look genuinely good and different. I just kind of hit my isekai quota and haven't gotten around to watching them yet, but... The I did watch Ascendance of a Bookworm, and that genuinely has become one of my favorite isekais. Oh, a lot of others I did enjoy. <laughs> Shield Hero kicked off the year, proving that all it takes to make a community collectively forget about years worth of built-up isekai for was one raccoon girl and an angry boy. The series- Oh, oh, oh. People did like Shield Hero when it came out, didn't they? Sported easily the most hateable villain of the year. That built up to a climax so satisfying, the only thing that was actually rising was the revenge boner that could be felt community-wide. My only real problem was with how cheaply Naofumi was built up by essentially bringing everyone else down. Sure, you're rooting for Naofumi, but he's held up as being the only competent character by making everyone but him and his party an absolute fucking useless idiot. So it's really a no-brainer that you'd end up cheering for him because he's the only one that seems to have half a fucking brain cell. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. That was season one, alright. Still looking forward to season two and three though. Sword Art Online has got <laughs> to a point where I just j <laughs> 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 Oh Well, okay. That uh that uh well, maybe season three is better. Maybe season three is better. You know what? Maybe I'll pitch Shield Hero season three for a watch along so I can watch it for the first time with you guys, because I have caught up to season two now. I, I finished season two. Genuinely enjoy it for what it is. This is just fun popcorn entertainment, and this exactly is. why this I enjoy is. this guy in the first place. Though I do find it funny that all my favorite parts of Sword Art Online have conveniently come when Kirito is out of the picture. Alice taking on the main role has been a welcome change, and there have been criticism that she's just a ripoff from Saber from Fate. But come on, guys. I mean, she may look like Saber, talk like Saber, act like Saber, fight like Saber, have very similar looking powers. What was I saying, Saber, guys? What was I saying? She's also a tsundere. So so, I don't see how she can be a ripoff when she's quite clearly an upgrade. Kenji and the Mago was an isekai. That's pretty much all I remember despite actually finishing it. Of course, isekai is still isekai and there was plenty of- Ken Kenji and the Mago was my- was 2019's Death March to the Parallel World Rhapsody. I finished it, I was like, I don't know why, but I did. And uh, I don't remember much about it, but I did definitely watch it. I, I did definitely watch it. I think. Because if you don't remember it, do you have any proof? Trash, which I'll get back to later. But for me, the surprise of the year was Isekai Quartet, because I enjoyed it way more than I anticipated. I thought I would get bored after two episodes, but the character writing and banter was so on point that it never got old. We've gotten to the point where we can just put a bunch of Isekai characters in an Isekai world and have them talk about Isekai stuff, and it's just entertaining. This is partly because it just kind of felt like an episode of Konosuba with an extended cast, which is probably why I enjoyed it so much. And it it kind of did. This one felt like a spin-off of Konosuba more than any other of the series i think um it was just like a nice comfy show i actually kind of yeah i dig it i still do dig it i'm just glad that we finally have our own avenger guys they may not be able to avenge the world but you can be damn sure they'll reincarnate into another one overall i think the moral of this year is that isekai is here to stay and is still definitely oh thank you very much rob cd thank you very much rob for the raid hello raiders we are currently, I, hello, you, uh, this is a bad look. I am being completely self-indulgent and I'm going through my old content. Uh, so if you don't know, I do anime yearly recaps. And this year is my 10 year anniversary for doing anime recaps uh, because I'm working on my next one right now. So I thought it's the start of my Christmas holiday. I'm going to be a bit self-indulgent and watch 
my previous 10 years of videos in this series uh, and uh, see what the greatest singular year of anime is within the past 10 years. And uh, we are currently up to 2019 right now. Driving, and that's fun. Pioneering a new meta, reacting to your videos. See, here's, here's, the, here's the good part. Um, I've been doing videos for so long that most of these videos, I do not remember. <laughs> Because it's been so long since I uh, ever ever made them and I also rarely go back and watch my own videos as well Because after I'm done with the video, I'm like, I spent so much time in it. I won't see this again <laughs> Fine, because you know what? Surely we can't get even more isekai next year <laughs> Surely guys, right? Surely. Surely you haven't cursed us right guys, surely <laughs> I didn't put that in <laughs> All right, I forgot about that meme. I forgot about that meme. Okay, okay. I was having a. I was. I am a no game no life fan. I was having a nice old time there. I. Just, I, I didn't need that. <laughs> he had to say it. He had to say it! Oh, Given was pretty damn good, actually. When I think of the music that came out of anime in 2019, what comes to mind is... Nope. Wait, I got, I got, I got it. Boom, you stupid rabbit! Like this! I don't have much... That was... There was one song in 2019, and that was it. That was the only song in 2019. That, that was... None, we don't remember anything else from 2019. <laughs> Say about the OSTs of this year. Sure, there were singular songs and tracks that stood out. Jorno's theme, Isabelle's lullaby, that track from Oxygen and Demon Slayer. Bad. Shout out to my boy Kevin Penkin for looking at your typical anime fantasy setting. And thinking, oh, sexy you know saxophones! Sexy saxophones! Sexy isekai saxophone. <laughs> But unlike previous years, there weren't any soundtracks as a whole that really stood out. That is, of course, until I realized the best anime music of the year was stuck behind Netflix Jail. One of the- Oh, Carol and Tuesday. Oh, okay. I forgot this was the year. Oh, that had so much potential. That had so much potential. Um, I thought it was good. I didn't think it was amazing. It had great fucking music though. I it had great fucking music. One of them was B Stars, but the and other B Stars as well. Holy shit! One gives me the opportunity to talk about. Can you feel my? Can you feel my? Can you feel my tears? It won't dry. Great music, great performances. Um, story needed some work, in my opinion. Carol and Tuesday didn't just give us an OST, it just straight up gave us several albums worth of music. The sheer amount of songs on display here in all different genres is absolutely insane. You've got stuff like EDM, metal, Carol and Tuesday's simple acoustic sound, whatever genre this fits into, and of course, classic pop. I know that was just a single episode. While in most music anime, the show will normally center around some musicians building up to their next big performance, their next big song, which if we're lucky will happen maybe every three, four episodes. Carol and Tuesday is just here casually debuting at least one new song every episode. It's actually insane to think about now that I look back on it. I I don't know if there will ever be another music anime like Carol and Tuesday. Every episode had three, like two, three songs coming out. It was an album of an entire series and that's insane to think about. Um, pre bocce era? I mean, if you think about... <laughs> This, I don't know what you're talking about, but in terms of just like music production, Bocce doesn't have a, like a candle on Carol and Tuesday. There's nothing that has come close to the amount of music that was produced solely for Carol and Tuesday. Um, it is not even close. You know, if, if you want to argue about a different, you know, Bocce was great for a different reason, but it, purely the music. Nothing comes close to like Carol and Tuesday. At least one. Most of the time you're getting to- And this doesn't even include the actual OST tracks as well. This was just the music 
that was produced for the in-universe performances. Two, three, or four coming from the various characters on display. Not forgetting other miscellaneous things like, I don't know, actual background music, the OP. Thank you, I just repeated myself. The EDs, and even references to the classical music of its setting in the future. My mother passed away not that long ago. I'm singing a song she often sang to me when I was young. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's been another anime that's come close. Bro, I laughed so hard when I, f when I saw that scene for the first time, man. <laughs> that was such a good scene. <laughs> the amount of music in the show. And I realized when watching this how much of a core element music is in all of Shinichiro Watanabe's works. Because this entire show felt- That's not a meme. No, that is not a meme. That is, that is a scene from the show. That is, that is a scene from the show. And so is uh, the other meme song that gets played in the show. I think I use this later in the video as well. Like his personal love letter to music itself. And I don't think anyone else would have been able to get so many talented artists from all over the world to help provide the music for a single anime. If the writing had been tighter, this had the potential to be an absolute masterpiece. But as it stands, it is simply a good show with by far the most impressive music production any anime has ever seen. And maybe we'll- What, did I just fucking speed up? It just randomly speed up. Um, what I was going to say was I feel more disappointment when I watch a show like Carol and Tuesday than I do watching the same copy and paste isekai that I just dumb out to every season. Uh, Carol... Thinking back to Karen and Tuesday, I feel more disappointment and anger because this is a show, when a show has this much potential and this much going for it, and it was just so close to greatness, but just, if a show becomes, has the potential and gets so close to being something incredible, but just misses a few pieces to really have everything come together perfectly. It hurts me more than just watching some mediocre show that I don't have much expectations to. Um, and thinking back, I'm like, ah, oh, Carol and Tuesday, you were, you had the budget, you had the talent, you had everything going for you. You were this close and all you were were just a good show. And I know that sounds, like, I know that sounds bad because I'm like, I, it almost sounds like I am uh, making it sound like a bad show. No, it was a good show, but it could have been one of the best shows. It could have been fucking amazing. Oh, oh, feels bad to think about. Ever get? Because I don't know, man. I don't see how any show will ever top the likes of this. <laughs> Speaking of which... Fucking bullshit! Holy shit, oh fucker! If we're going through the best of anime, we also can't forget the best of the worst we saw. So let's do the rundown of what we got to Hell experience yeah. this Hell year. Yeah. A lot of bullshit isekai. A lot of softcore hentai. Not enough culture. Number of anime girls this year who ask someone to drink their urine? Two. This brings back good memories. Number of anime girls who saw a suppository oh, yeah. get shoved up their ass this year? Hi, darling. Rectally. Also two. <laughs> Let's see what Magical Girls got up to this year. Let's forget what Magical Girls got up to this year. How about shows that acted as visual bleach for the eyes? Worst year. kicked things off with an equally ugly sequel to Handshakers absolutely nobody asked for. Seven Deadly Sins ended the year off with one of the most highly anticipated fights of the series. Oh, seven Meliodas Deadly Sins versus this Eskimor, year. A fight so hyped up by fans that Studio Dean tried to do it justice by staying faithful to the franchise and adapted it using only seven deadly frames of animation. Oh no, Mr. we got Nobunaga Magical Spanking and seven deadly about sins. Lobby attempting to convince a fully grown man to get married to her and consummate it. Police! Oh, That's this... That's... What the fuck was this show? I forgot about this show. This is... This show is as bad as it sounds. The plot of the show. The worst CG award went to Adi Frata, who also gave us the Rising of the Ghoul Hero, the off-brand Christmas present some mum probably gave to the poor kid who asked for Shield Hero, featuring another edgy protagonist teaming up with a 300-year-old demon lolly. With a romantic subplot, they were totally gonna dangle in front of us. <laughs> oh. Holy 
And of course, there were the two dumpster fires this year that burned so. Yeah, this year, this year was saucy as fuck, man. This year was saucy as fuck. What the right, fuck? Lee, I couldn't keep my eyes off them. I watched Domestic Girlfriend with my girlfriend yes. once. All right, peak year, peak year. We we haven't. <laughs> I've already forgotten about 2018. I've I've already forgotten, man. <laughs> She's my stepsister now. Domestic Girlfriend is what happens when you take a typical harem romance anime and then try to do a full 100% degeneracy speedrun and succeed. A show with so much spice you have to refer to the Scoville scale when rating it. Documenting the case of a protagonist who finally dropped the mister and got with his sister. Using a secret technique never before seen in anime. Hey, wanna be my girlfriend? But we can't, we're brother and sister. No please, I incest. Okay. I don't even know why YouTube demonetized my review of this. I thought Domestic Girlfriend was the epitome of family-friendly content. Then finally we had Assassin's Pride. Is this video demonetized? <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on a second. Is this, is this video demonetized? <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Checks out, checks out. Hold on, hold up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> It's commonly referred to as Milady Battle Angel. A plot that was oh, like a fat oh. I remember the show. I, I I actually think I want to pitch this show for the anime watch along. This is this Assassin's Pride was the best kind of trash, man. Gotta agree with you on this one. I always find it's the shows and animes that have so much potential with an amazing concept animation or production and to see it fall flat on its face is the most yeah. disappointing shit. Oh, thank you very much, man. You That's what I'm saying. <sighs> all right, all right. Assassin's Pride. I remember this shit. This, I thought Domestic Girlfriend was the epitome Assassin's of Assassin's Pride is kind of so then I was like, can I pitch Assassin's, Assassin's Pride? Pride? Commonly referred to as Milady Battle Angel, a plot that was written like a fan fiction of a fan fiction of an anime that didn't actually have a better love story than Twilight. Meet Kufa Vampire, son of a twisted relationship between a vampire and a fedora. Full-time lolly magnet. Knock knock. What's this? A perfectly suitable romantic interest who's in love with you and also a similar age? What are you? Legal? This is Kufa Vampire. The FBI have to check if they're on the Kufa Vampire registry. When Chris Hansen tells him to take a seat, he's already sitting down. And of course, he's the only man who could possibly cap off this year of glorious trash. <laughs> Bro, I, I think I. Bro, it, it'll be so fun to watch on stream, man. <laughs> I, everyone's gonna lose their fucking mind if I if, if I get to do a watch along of that, man. <laughs> That'll be so fucking fun. <laughs> This year had a strong showing from Slice of Life and Romance, not just giving titles that were solid additions to the pre-established formula, but also 5.93 on now, that's what I'm saying, man, that's what I'm saying. Onisuki did to harem what Konosuba had done for Isekai, Henski gave us a bunch of new kinks just so it could shame us later on. Fruits Basket Brotherhood was a thing I still need to finish. <clears throat> like another certain brotherhood. People are terrified right now at the implication of... Yeah the World War Season 3 teaser that just got released, forgetting that Quintessential Quintuplets has already started World War 5 in 2019 oh, and many Quince of was us this have year? already been drafted. Senko-san was ASMR for the eyes by giving us a middle-aged salaryman mastering the forbidden technique of dual-wielding headpats against some innocent boomer lollies in what my depression has categorized as an Avengers level threat. But if I had to talk about the shows that really had an effect on me, the first one that comes to mind would have to be all right, all right. Now, now, now we're getting here. Now we're getting here. All right, which, which, 2019 finally showing its cards, man. For now, it's been sussy before this, but now it's finally showing its cards. Kaguya Summer. Oh, you love me, Mister. Hey, Mister. And one of the most refreshing takes of the romantic comedy genre I've seen in a while. The mix of the absurd, over the top mind games in the typical harem romance situations was a premise that continued to be hilarious throughout. And before I knew it, I was actually heavily invested in these two characters getting together. I think there was another reason to watch the show, but um, I just can't remember what it was right now. <laughs> Of course, how could I forget? Ishigami best girl. Maidens in your seventh season was probably my I was I was a fucking prophet. This was before season two, guys. This was before season two.
I fucking knew it. I had a feeling. I overlooked gem of the year in one of the most hilariously accurate portrayals of puberty. Oh, Maidens of Your Savage Season. Oh, this is such a good time. I remember this one. Of course. Oh, Maidens in Your Savage Season was probably my overlooked gem of the year in one of the most hilariously accurate portrayals of puberty I've seen in anime. It's rare that you get to see the topic of sex tackled as the awkward, uncomfortable mess that it is when you first discovered it. And <laughs> this was this. What a banger way to introduce this sh to introduce this show, man. Well, mess that it is. <laughs> what a, what a, what a banger way, man. This scene caught me off guard so much. And if you're watching this out of context, this is exactly what it looks like. They. This is this is exactly what it looks like. This is your worst fucking nightmare, guys. Uh and uh, they, like, you think in anime, they, like, play this off? No, they play this off, like, 100% seriously how you would expect this to go down. First discovered it and started thinking about it. You know that one embarrassing sex story everyone seems to have as a teenager that is hilarious to tell but kind of makes you want to die inside when you remember it? That is it. That is the show. How heavy are the dumbbells you lift finally gave us cute girls do lifting in an anime so alpha, not even Tyler One can come close to even matching it. Oh, I forgot Dumbbells was this season. While this might not be the greatest anime of the year, it certainly had one of the biggest real life effects on me. Because I don't want to admit that I'm that degenerate weeb who got motivated to join a gym because I saw some cute anime girls doing it. But... I'm that degenerate weeb who got motivated to join the gym because I saw some cute anime girls. Oh, that was... I, I, I think this... This was uh, a coincidence, but also this was the year that I went to the gym the most. And then COVID just fucking took all the sails out of my wind and I've never recovered to the same amount that I went when this when this was airing man <laughs> girls doing it which makes me think what's next for cute anime girls cute girls do basic daily hygiene cute girls do filling out your annual tax return cute girls do interacting with cute girls in real life whatever it is I think we finally figured out the end goal of all moe shows cute girls do transforming weebs into functional members of society and then there was my personal favorite <sighs> high school drama of the year I came into Beastars knowing nothing, ready to meme the shit out of it, and I came out with one of my favourite anime of the year. This feels like one of the most unique series in recent memory, and no, it's not because the characters are walking furry bait. One thing I would say is that I think Beastars also has a really underrated OSTs. Uh, I use Beastars OST a lot in my own videos, but I think that not many people talked about it, but it was probably my favourite OST of this year that wasn't Carol and Tuesday. I mean, Carol and Tuesday I don't really count because that was more music performances, but the beast I OC is fucking insane. This doesn't feel like your typical glossy anime. In fact, it doesn't feel like anime at all. It gives off the vibe of an Oscar-nominated film or a highly acclaimed stage play. With the combination of some of the best voice acting performances you could find all year and fantastic direction, that was one of the only times in my life that had me saying, man. I'm really glad this anime's in 3D. It's the story of a murder mystery, an unequal society dominated by the strong, a man driven to obsession to be the image of the perfect star, and also a touching love story between a literal virgin and actual Chad. The world of Beastars is one that draws you in and sells you on these characters. It deeply immerses you, then sells you on pure drama and emotion. It says a lot God, that a show so about anthropomorphized good. animals was the one that felt most real. God, you forget such that you're watching wolves, show, man. rabbits, deer, such a and good little show. Deer panda. In fact, the oh, animalistic I'm just, characteristics I'm just like, are oh, I'm just remembering everything, man. in a way that makes them seem even more eerily human. And I can't wait to see what the story will have to offer in season two and hopefully beyond. Basically, in a nutshell, I we, we got we got a final season now, right? We got we got a final season that's been announced, right? I can't I can't remember. As, is it season three? Yeah, 2024. Next year? <laughs> we have season two. No, we have season two. That's already out. Season two is already out. Uh, season two, not that good. Season two was all right. I, 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 thought, I thought season one was stronger. We'll see what the final season has in, has in store, though. HB stars, and I'm still not a furry. But... No.
Well... <laughs> <laughs> Normally in the year of anime, we get to see some high octane, hard hitting shows. So, with that in mind, what did 2019 offer us? Oh, god damn! Yeah, this year was kind of dry as a whole. For real though, 2019. Bro, this I remember this year brought the hype. If if last year had like banger and banger show, this year the action in this the action in this year was insane was one of the most action-packed years in recent memory, with old and new franchises not only continuing the expected hype, but a lot of the times reaching their absolute peak. Demon Slayer blew up the entire community in a single episode, Mob Psycho 100 showcased some of the most impressive fight sequences I've ever seen, Attack on Titan topped IMDB's chart for the highest rated episode of any series of all- Deserve? 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 Holy shit. Season 3, this was the year we got Season 3 Part 2, which I think is the best Attack on Titan season. Um, and to this day, it is some of the most compelling television I've ever watched, bar none. All time, and My Hero Academia did an excellent job at colouring in some manga panels. <laughs> alright, alright, My, My Hero Academia gets the participation award. It, it, still, it, still, it still had the fight afterwards. It's like, made up for it. But there are yeah, several yeah, Anime of the Year contenders right here, and <laughs> most of them could have easily won if they had aired in any other year, so this is going to be a pretty long segment. Let's start with Mob. The first season of Mob always felt like it was living in- Holy shit, Mob Psycho Season 2 was peak, man. Oh, I think this was probably one of the best shows out of the last decade. It's really, really close, but Mob Psycho is definitely- like, at least top three shows of the decade. The Shadow of One Punch Man, but this was the season it truly grew into its own and maybe even surpassed its older cousin. What I expected was more great action, more great animation like the first season, and it delivered that then exceeded it. Fight after fight after amazing fight, it was an absolute spectacle, with the group battle against the teleporting psychic being one of the coolest sequences I've ever seen. But what I didn't expect was- Holy shit, that fight was insane. And I still think about that fight into like when i think of like what is some of the coolest shit that i have seen when it comes to anime fights how much heart it would have as well the character writing between mob and reagan was phenomenal and the unexpected character development they saw and teary moments in the season sucker punched me way harder than any of the fights it grew from this flashy funny action series to something so much more it was hype it was emotional it was touching it was just the complete package after it finished i didn't think anything could come close to mob this year and then attack on titan must have heard that and was like yo Hold my kidnapped Terran. Attack on Titan Season 3 Part 2 Half-Life 3 Platform 9 and 3 Quarters was oh, the perfect I'm getting fucking chills, man. I'm getting chills. Been building up just, so think, far. just thinking back to one this. One of the most hyped franchises to rise up in the past decade had finally reached that hype then punched straight past it. Seeing the evolution of this series go from oh. thrill ride to mystery to political thriller to the culmination of all of this was an absolute joy to experience. The mixture of a fully developed cast we were all invested in being put into a high stakes situation where you genuinely did not know what was going to happen resulted in a dramatic, tense, action-packed, edge-of-your-seat experience that delivered some of the most compelling entertainment you can find anywhere this year, anime or not. It's also one of the few series that has built up this massive mystery and actually delivered a satisfying answer. From what I've heard, the events of Season 4 are going to surpass even this, so I am absolutely hyped. I cannot wait to properly experience it for the first time ever. I mean, it was still good. It was still good. Surpassing is a strong word. It was different and it was great. But to me, this remains my favorite season of Attack on Titan. Uh, I wouldn't like, I wouldn't say that it surpassed it, but it still definitely did keep up its legacy of just making fucking compelling television. Over the coming year, the only way I know how to through dipshit manga readers who can't resist posting spoilers in the comment section. And then- <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could go back to Attack on Titan fans. Yo, Jujutsu Kaisen fans compared to Attack on Titan fans? <laughs> nah, they'd win. They'd win, man. Vinland Saga finally broke the curse of the highly acclaimed- Oh, it was Vinland Saga as well. <laughs> 
historical seinen manga getting an actual decent anime adaptation. I originally thought that if Villain Saga were to ever get an anime, all it would need to do is to animate the manga in a competent fashion and it would be a contender for anime of the year. And that's exactly what happened. The tale of Viking Sasuke on his lone quest to OK Boomer everything his dad tried to teach him and Aski Chad trying to set the world record for longest father killing killstreak in history is one that will stick with me for a very long time. While it may not be as loud or in your face as some of the other shows here, it hits just as hard or maybe even more so. This is going to go down as a special series and with the ending it gave, it was the perfect way to cap off the year. My Hero Academia has pretty much continued being My Hero Academia, me and the boys continue we our trip across Italy in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Golden Wind. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Golden Wind. Yes, JoJo Part 5 continued in the season where Italy itself became a JoJo reference, as anime watchers finally understood the pain of the question, How the fuck does King Crimson work? Fans were finally rewarded with many highly anticipated moments, including the animated seven-page Muno that was a glorious moment. This was this was JoJo this is this was like the best part of JoJo Part 5 as well. Any that we got this year. would be proud of. Next up is Oh my god, the fire's got a gun! Oh, Fire Force. Oh, we got Fire Force as well. Well, you know, it uh, still had good fucking action. What can I say? Still had, still had good action. <laughs> what the f was that? Fire Force took the phrase fighting fire with fire to whole new heights as David Production finally got a chance to flex their animation muscles outside of JoJo, giving us a show with several choices of amazing top tier waifus and Tamaki. Yeah, I said it, Tamaki fans, what are you gonna do? Trip over and land on my dick? Look, I'm a degenerate that lives for trashy fan service, but there's a time and a place for that, and I don't need it breaking all immersion of every serious action scene she's in. Finally, of course, there was Demon Slayer, which was undoubtedly the new break- Oh yeah, Demon Slayer broke the fucking internet this year oh yeah just i forgot about that <laughs> just uh, just throw throwing that in after everything by the way here's a here's an afterthought oh yeah demon slayer oh yeah <laughs> didn't really do much didn't really do much hit this year i can't remember the last time i saw such an instant explosion from just a single episode see there was demon slayer before episode 19 and then there was demon slayer after episode <laughs> 19. it went from this moderately popular action show to the hip trending topic on twitter everyone started watching it and then ninja tweeted that it was gonna become the greatest anime of all time and everyone was like well i mean he's pretty good at fortnite so he's probably right <laughs> Not to take anything away from the scene, as I do think it was one of the most beautifully crafted moments I've seen. <laughs> Could I just continue sweeping the awards always, man? <laughs> Best anime of the decade when uh, this is the f when it was the first year that it aired. In any shonen, I mean, I kind of called it a work of art, and it is a really good show. But I think as a whole, it's a bit premature because the story only just feels like it's truly starting to get going. And as competition this year are shows that have reached their narrative peaks. What I find more interesting is how, after all these years, we've kind of got a big three again. With One Piece staying where it is, narr did I have this take? Did I, did I, did I have this take? Hmm. Hmm. Hmm, did I, did I say that? Guys, I think Gigguk said that. Uh, I, I am Gaunt. I am Gaunt, guys. This, this is Gaunt you're talking to. We're watching Gigguk. I've never, never met this person in my life. Naruto being replaced by Green Naruto. Some people... I'm gonna take a quick piss break, guys.
Right. Um. So. I cooked. Uh. A few years ago, four years ago, I uh. It's uh. Weird to think that uh. Beginning of Trash Taste, uh, I think this was just before we started Trash Taste. Um, yeah, I definitely cooked. Um, I think that maybe at the time it might have felt like, you know, it was... A, a, the Shonen... Let me defend myself. Let me defend myself. The Shonen landscape has changed a lot in these past four years guys it, it has changed a lot there was a long time right before the era that we have now before the uh before this new era of anime that people were wondering if we were ever going to get a new big three or if, if we were going to get anything that closely resembled the big three shonen and it might have felt like this was the point where we finally were starting to start a new generation. Not Boruto new generation, but an actual new generation. Um, it's just questionable and interesting what the perception of My Hero Academia evolved into. Because this was a point when we still really, really respected My Hero Academia. Um, I don't know what happened. It's four years is a long time, guys. Four years is a long time. People could even argue that Demon Slayer has just filled that gap for the new generation's bleach. <clears throat> but I'm not going to be the one to start that shitstorm of a conversation. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Because it's Jujutsu Kaisen. It's, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not getting <guessing. laughs> Before okay, Bleach is back anyway. Bleach is already back. <laughs> Bleach is already back, guys. <laughs> it's... <laughs> it's my anime of the year. There are a few more shows that didn't really belong to any of these categories, but definitely shouldn't be left out. <laughs> Promise Neverland was an engrossing thriller about a group oh, of children breaking out oh, of an Promise extremely Neverland secure season lockdown one? facility overlooked by highly intelligent monsters by playing tag. This was some of the most gripping anime you could find this year. Aside from having a completely unique premise, the cat and mouse game manages to deliver a story with so many twists and turns without ever feeling like they were forcing it. It builds up tension beautifully, and it's one of those cliffhanger shows that will have you clicking on the next episode faster than you could say itadakimasu finally some good fucking food if i had any small issues with it is that it pushed my suspension of disbelief to the fucking limit like i know these kids are meant to be smart uh can't wait for season two am i right guys guys can't wait for season two season two season two's gonna hit hard man gonna hit hard <laughs> but when they started playing 5D intergalactic mind games and had already strategized their highly elaborate escape plan from the moment they were fucking conceived, all while masking it as a children's game, I was like, I don't know if these kids could be going that far. And if we're still nitpicking, there was something a bit off about how the characters were drawn, but I sure couldn't I'm not quite put my finger on it. Did he just say there was something off about the way we look? Yeah, I think he did just say that. I don't think there's anything weird about my face. I have a normal face. No, you look perfectly normal. What do you think, Ray? Yeah, I have no idea what the hell he's talking about. Meanwhile, in Dr. Stone character designs... Suffix 06, we are approaching runway 19. Are we clear to land? Over. Suffix 06, you are number one for runway 19. You are clear to land whenever you are ready. Over. Suffix 06, thank you very much. Taking her down now. What the fuck was I smoking when I was riding this man? It's time to do 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 Dr. Stone this year gave us a long-awaited anime adaptation I of two Indian I guys building huts on YouTube that somehow got recommended to you at 1am. And I'll be honest, this show left me a bit conflicted in the end. On one hand, it's one of the most interesting premises out there, and seeing the process of how they make advanced technology with the most primitive of tools was some of the most entertaining things you could find in anime all year. But on the other hand, I could give less a shit about any of the conflicts here. Look, I really don't care that Tsukasa hates boomers. Anytime there was a contractually obligated shonen jump fight, I couldn't help but just want to go back to seeing the villagers pissing themselves at the sight of Senku making glass. It's probably the first time in my life when I've seen a yep. tournament arc and I've been like, I agree oh, with that. They're putting in a tournament I arc. I still hold that take. <laughs> yeah. Wake me up when something interesting happens. <gasps> Light bulb! No 
Polygon's life almost single-handedly tried keeping the cyberpunk genre alive along with Psychopaths, giving us an old-school, hard-boiled detective story that unfortunately got looked over by a lot of people. Probably because its name wasn't something hip and catchy enough, like that time Alphonse Elric got reincarnated as a gun. Dorado was a legitimately good remake of a samurai anime from the 60s that hardly anyone watched because it was an Amazon Prime exclusive. And the only way I see people still remembering the show is when they ask Amazon, Hey, Amazon, do you have Demon Slayer on Amazon Prime? And Amazon's like, oh, yeah, we have Demon Slayer on Amazon Prime, and this is their Demon Slayer on Amazon Prime. Push I feel like Dororo got really overshadowed by Demon Slayer, <clears throat> but I think it's only grown in popularity after this year ended, um, because I only hear really good people talking, really good things about it. I never... I never fully finished Dororo, but I really, really want to watch it. All of it. <clears throat> and maybe I will. Maybe I will. Dinosaur was a really promising anime original sports drama whose production just got axed halfway through, leaving us once again with just half an anime. Fate is still making more money than they know how to spend. Babylon was a great show that I apparently missed. Um, let's see, was there anything else I left out? <laughs> Yeah, I think that's it. I f fucking forgot about this show. <laughs> I fucking forgot about this show, man. Holy shit. This is a wild show. What was it called again? Sarazanmai? It was Sarazanmai, right? <laughs> also, I was fucking eating. It's okay. It's okay. It's everything. This year was honestly the hardest year to pick my anime of the year for a very long time. I praised 2018 for the sheer volume of good shows, but 2019 has seemingly matched that, while still producing a handful of shows that were even better than anything that came out the year before. Many of these shows would have been an easy shoe in if they literally aired in any other year. It was a tough choice, but after dwelling on it for a week or two, I've got to give it to... Vinland Saga. I've said previously that every so often you come across a work of fiction like Vinland Saga, something that exudes this sense of unquantifiable greatness, and there is a word that personifies what I'm talking about. A masterpiece. To me, Vinland Saga is a tale that earnestly earns that title. Mob might have been better animated, Attack on Titan might have been more compelling, Demon Slayer might have been more hype, Beastars might have been more unique, but I know the tale told in Vinland Saga will stick with me for much longer. I mean, it already has. This isn't the first time I've got to experience this story, but that didn't make it hit any less hard. It's a story that's powerful and raw, brutal and grim, yet somehow it's beautiful, culminating in one of the greatest climaxes anime has ever seen. The series displays some of the best character writing and developments you can find in its diverse cast, but even so there was still one clear standout, because 2019 was the year of Askeladd. Askeladd isn't just the antagonist of the year, Askeladd is the character of the year and a contender for the whole decade. It's not often you come across this multifaceted character who is not only compelling to watch but commands your attention every second he's on screen, exuding the type of charisma that doesn't just charm the people in the story, but yourself as well. It says a lot that a character you end up cheering for, laughing for, crying for, is this manipulative scheming bastard who is responsible for killing hundreds of people, innocent or not, and personally ruined god knows how many more lives. Every fibre of your being tells you that you should hate this man, and you end up just loving him. Some people try living as a hero, only to see themselves becoming the villain, but here was a man who chose to live as the villain, who we all saw became a hero. This was the final series I finished before the year ended, and I can't think of a better way to cap- Man. Sometimes, I wish I was as eloquent as I could be when I script. I think that's my biggest regret. I do. Sometimes I do. I am genuinely proud of my writing. Uh, and I'm like, damn. Why can't I always be like this, man? <laughs> Bro, why, why, why can't I always be like this? <laughs> Bro, if I was like this on Trash Trash, the boys would have no chance, man. <laughs> the boys would have no chance. <gasps>
Oh. <laughs> of a fantastic year for anime. So, as 2020 now has fully come, one last time, let's give it up for 2019. <laughs> Fuck me, Alan killed it with the Edison this year. Holy shit. <laughs> Alan went fucking... Uh, Alan went fucking full cowling on this ending, man. Holy crap. What a year. What a fucking year that was. Um... Man, 2019, imagine how good were we eating? How fucking good were we eating in 2018 and 2019? Like, <laughs> um, you know what? It feels like we've now watched uh, seven years and it felt like there was just such a big jump in quality from 20... 17 to 2018 uh and then 2019 was just like oh oh you thought that was a banger year oh oh just oh oh just you wait you 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 ain't you ain't no you don't know what you're missing man you don't know what you're missing i didn't think anything could come close to uh challenging 2018 i do think that there were more good shows in 2018 but holy shit there were there were still Almost just as many good shows in 2019, but the peaks that 2019 reached with its shows is just unmatched. And it had like five, six shows that reached new peaks. Yeah, holy shit. Um, so my tier list so far is 2019, 2018, everything else so far. <laughs> Was 2018 even that good? Yes! Yes, it was that good! We just watched all the shows in 2018! Are you fucking kidding me? It was that good! <laughs> we literally- <laughs> Like, yes, it was! This is- this is not a shot at 2018. 2019 was just so fucking strong, but even then... Even then, I was- I was just- it's insane. What- what good years of anime that we had. All right, on to 2020. Okay, who's the better editor, Alan or Mudin? Uh, they both have very, very different editing styles. Uh, Mudan has said on Trash Taste that he doesn't like editing anime videos. Uh, and Alan is specialized in editing anime videos. So two very, very different styles of editors for two this very, very different styles of content. Ah. All right. Hey Giguk, it's been about a year since you've started the Trails Kaseki series and was just wondering how far in you are now. Uh, if you're still playing the series, would a potential video on the series be in the works? I have no fucking Cheers clue. Cheers and happy holidays. I, I have I have no fucking clue, man. Um, <laughs> I am currently about fifteen hours in from uh, into Trails from Zero. Uh, I it kind of tw twenty twenty three was kind of a weird year for my Trails time because I didn't really have much time to play it. And it took me a long time to get through Trails in the Sky second chapter. But once I reached Trails in the Sky third, I kind of just started marathoning it. And I finished third very, very fast. And I'm finishing uh, from zero very, very fast as well. Uh, yeah, it's, I'm playing it way faster than I did. And I'm pretty much addicted now. <laughs> uh, let me get the next one out. 
do I have a render for this one? Or is it a no? This one might be a no. All right, I hope I don't have any copyright claims on this. <clears throat> All right, we are into anime in 2020. And now this year, I change it to more of just a top list. Uh, just because I realized I was burning out a little bit from keeping up and having to force myself to watch so many anime. Um, and so pretty much, instead of trying to cover every show, good and bad, which is what I did for previous years, I switched it up to just covering the good shows and the shows that I enjoyed, uh, where previously I would try to watch the shitty shows as well. And that took a lot of time. This video is sponsored by AFK Arena. Attention all phantom thieves! Atten all right. like old ad, old ad, we can skip. I'm just gonna throw out the elephant in the room to get it over with. You know it, I know it. 2020 was just the Game of Thrones season eight of years. Somehow the scriptwriters managed to make this an unending barrage of nightmarish plot twists even M. Night Shyamalan couldn't see fucking coming, while also making it feel like the most boring filler arc of my life. But hey, at least we had anime. Kind of. I'll be honest, I've been marathoning through as much anime as I could for the past month, trying to catch up with the year, but even then, I've watched way less than I usually would. I don't think I have enough to talk about the best of each respective categories. Yeah, this was, uh, I, I remember, this was a way weaker year because of COVID. Like I usually would. So instead, I'm just going to revert back to some old school YouTube. But hey, Trash Taste, right? Trash Taste year. This is, this is year Trash Taste debuted. Click bait and do my top anime I've seen this year. Before we get to that though, here's a quick rundown of all the other things I wanted to talk about that happened this year. Studio Passion started 2020 by drawing the line between hentai and anime with invisible ink. Interspecies reviewers just straight up aired a hentai scene, which I constantly have to remind people happened earlier in the year, not in 1947. A revolution was started against Remember Mao. Remember this? This was, this was fucking Interspecies reviewers? To move by themselves. The anime community was ablaze and in between all this, Interspecies reviewers actually aired. Honestly, this Despite how many boundaries this pushed and how explicit it was, I really found this to be a funny comedy that was just me and the boys hang out in a hentai. Made for degenerates, by degenerates. It was just a genuinely good laugh, meaning this was one of the first ever hentai you could watch purely for academic purposes. Wait a minute. Aside from the usual best girl debates, for once we have several contenders for worst girl of the year. In one corner, we have Rachel from Tower of God, and in the other, Mummy from Rent a Girlfriend. <coughs> Oh, how this is, oh, how this is, uh, how this is age. Oh, oh, we've, we've gotten to the point now where every girl from Rent a Girlfriend is the worst girl. There is no worst girl in Rent a Girlfriend, they all are. <laughs> and I mean, what can you say about the competition? Rachel was a character that felt entitled while happily taking advantage of the people around her to reach her goal. But in the moments that really mattered, spat on everything she was given, giving the biggest middle finger any anime character has given in years. And even further in the webtoons, she continues down this path, literally ruining lives and becoming one of the most truly decrepit and vile female characters I've ever had the displeasure of experiencing. But on the other hand, Mummy did lead some guy on. Twitter decided it was now illegal for anyone below five foot three to possess breasts. Beastars' recent success on Netflix really changed a lot of perception when it came to 3D anime, and I'm sure Netflix was sitting there like, damn, we want more of this. Oh, this scene. I honestly don't know what this, uh, <laughs> this is a real scene from Ghost in the Shell, not some Benny Hills Looney Tunes skit, but at least they're carrying on the Ghost in the Shell spirit, tackling deep themes of technological existentialism in episodes like Edge Lord, the revolution of the 14 year olds. I can't believe that's a real title. I actually can't believe that's a real title. I've completely forgot that they named that. <laughs> Fucking hell. I repeat. <laughs> Edgelord, the revolution of the 14 year olds, which I assure you is an actual Gits episode and not a rejected PewDiePie video. I can't wait for season two when we get standalone complex episode 19, Virgin Army, Revenge of the Pog Champs. Here's an exclusive clip I just received now. Stay I honestly feel like there was a big hole this year in terms of anime fights. Normally some of the biggest moments in the year of anime are defined by some of the- Fuck, did I have to cut something because of copyright? What did I, what did I need to cut? What did I, what did I need to cut? Fuck. 
Here's an exclusive clip I just received now. Stay I honestly feel like there was a big hole this year. Into oh, I don't, oh, fuck. I, I will never know. <laughs> that cut was harsh. Uh, that was probably cut by the uh, YouTube editor for copyright. So, yeah, I'm not sure what, uh, what I had to cut. In terms of anime fights. Normally, some of the biggest moments in the year of anime are defined by some of its biggest fights, and this year just felt like we didn't have too many to pick from. Probably my biggest disappointment was God of High School, which somehow did the impossible and made me not care about the tournament arc. How the fuck do you do that, God of High School? Call it a poor adaptation, rush pacing, bland plot or characters. I'm so sad, because the fights in this were so good. If only the, if only the writing was good, like the fights were so good. But this was the one show I really, really, really wanted to love, but couldn't. As hard as I tried, I just couldn't get invested in it. And it hurts me showing these clips because I can't think of another time I got to see such beautifully animated and intense fight sequences that I couldn't give less a shit about. Watching this show felt like watching the grown up version of those fucking stick figure fighting flash videos I thought were the shit as a kid. I honestly feel the best way to enjoy this anime is just to watch the fight sequences out of context on YouTube because you'd get the same amount of enjoyment. <coughs> but yeah, it's still up there some of the best fights of the year for just how technically impressive they were. But then in that sense, the best anime fight I saw this year wasn't even from an anime. The legendary team that worked on the Naruto and Sasuke vs Momoshiki oh, fight randomly showed up in a Chinese anime let's and just fucking go. on everyone by showcasing one of the best animated sequences in all of 2020. Starting things off with a high intensity free running scene that absolutely dropped my jaw on the floor, it then proceeds to transition into an insane 1v3 hand to hand martial arts brawl that is absolutely dripping in style and swagger. I mean just look how fucking cool this is! You got all this fancy footwork, the absolute bravado of these exchanges. Bro, and look then at this man! Audacity to just grab his hat midair after dodging. Oh god, it's so cool! You can tell the team have a genuine passion for martial arts in both real life. This and still film, holds up. Oh my like god, this, close this scene goes so hard, man. Choreography. This wasn't just cool for an anime fight, this was just a badass martial arts fight, period. I still think the team that worked on this, because they're a Chinese team, uh they are they I wish I could see more of their work because you can tell they have such a passion for martial arts choreography. And they, they've they done some of the f coolest fucking shit I have seen in anime. The show is Hitori no Shita, the outcast by the way. All right, let's get down to brass taxes. Now, you know it was a dry year when I, when I only had nine anime. I think it was nine anime and uh, Oregairu, which I didn't finish this year. Uh, <laughs> When you hear about a show that starts off with a guy getting hit with a truck that ends on one of my favorite anime of the year lists, I'm sure everyone's first thought is, oh great, another shitty isekai, Gigguk staying on brand as usual, but rest assured, Tony Kawa Over the Moon for You is the furthest thing you'd expect me to like. A short, sweet, cute, wholesome story about a simple domestic romance. Wait. In the modern times of anime titties <laughs> dominating your timeline, anime and hentai deciding it's one and the same, and the world being taken over with degeneracy, it's refreshing to finally see a nice Christian anime with nice Christian values. Tony Kawa is the rehabilitation needed for all of those who have once been put into horny jail. It's all of us. There's no complicated dramas, no love triangles, no relationships that need to be prefaced that they're not related by blood. Oh. Just a story of an actual it's fucking digesting now. human no being worries. falling in love with not one Sydney's of the few waifus in anime <laughs> that, um is actually a waifu. Watching Tony Kawa is like taking that bath. Couldn't relate back, man. Can't relate. <laughs> Couldn't relate. <laughs> what's, what's that all about, guys? <laughs> After a long day at work, you feel like your soul is cleansed whenever you finish an episode. It'll cure your depression and give it right back to you when you remember that you'll never get a relationship like this. What'd you say? Anyway, watch Tony Kawa. It's cute. <laughs> Yeah, this, I forgot that uh, Kaguya Season 2, that was, this is actually when I started taking Kaguya Sama, like, more seriously. Um, the first year, the first season, it was kind of like, haha, XD meme, haha, look at Chica. Um, this was like, oh, oh, this, uh, you, you actually have, uh, you actually are meant to be taken seriously with proper writing. And great development. Yeah, Kaguya Summer is still good.
Ever since my last video about Index and Railgun over two years ago, your boy's been pretty quiet about the franchise as a whole. And, well, that's because when JC Staff adapts an anime, God flips a coin. Would it land heads like for the Connor Super movie? Or would it land tails like for One Punch Man 2, the clusterfuck of Index 3, or the underwhelming Accelerator? <laughs> It's uh, it's JC Staff and Railgun. That's uh, that's, that's the that's the only kind of combination. You you know, it's a banger if it's Railgun. Anything else, you're like, ooh, I don't know about this. Ooh. <laughs> But for some <laughs> unknown reason, science still hasn't been able to solve. Whenever they touch anything related to Railgun, it is nothing but heads, heads, and heads. Railgun somehow continues to be far and beyond the best thing the franchise has going for it when it comes to the anime, which kind of makes sense. With the Index series having a far greater plot, struggling a bigger cast, squeezing way more story arcs into a single season, it's no wonder that the more focused world of Railgun means the spin-off series outshines the mainline. And, well, it seems like JC staff knew this too, because unlike their other recent adaptations, this this is the best the franchise has looked since, well, Railgun. The great animation is back, we have a more down-to-earth story, it's got all the level 5- Any Index fans here? Any Index Railgun fans here? <laughs> I swear to god, as every year passes, there are- I- I- I see less and less people, man. <laughs> or maybe- maybe we just don't talk about it now, because I don't know what the last exciting project was for the fan base, man. It's- it's only really Railgun. <laughs> It's 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 been uh, it's been three years now. I was going at it. This is everything Tuaru fans could hope for. Not forgetting, it's nice to see the return of everyone's favorite character, CGI wind turbines, baby. Oh yeah. I always feel a bit cheap for putting a hot new shonen on the top of my favorites list because to me it kind of feels like I'm saying. Man, it feels weird to think how season one is compared to how fucking hard season two is going right now um i knew season two was was going to go harder than season one nothing could have prepared me for like how much harder it was going to go uh kind of makes me look back at season one and i still hold my opinion that i didn't understand the popularity that it garnered from season one but after season two now it's it's it is not even close to the same level like it's 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 something completely fucking different man yes i too enjoy vanilla ice cream eating white bread and saying rem is my waifu but my god when a show is doing something right it is doing something right watching this first call of jujutsu kaisen kind of felt like you discovered that youtube channel under 10,000 subscribers that you knew was just waiting to blow up it's a that's that's so weird to say right now but I don't think you guys understand that um, I didn't really feel the hype when it first came out, right? I, Jujutsu Kaisen is such a weird entity to me because it was the first time where I feel like manga readers obviously have some kind of play towards the popularity of a series, but this felt like a series that gained momentum because of the Shibuya arc and the amount of manga, the amount of people that went on to read the manga and was like, yo, actually, this is kind of peak, even though the anime had nowhere near reached that point. Shown in that isn't like with Demon Slayer, there was a specific point that I could track when Demon Slayer got popular, but Jujutsu Kaisen went from Oh, this is like a new shonen that might be good that some people are talking about to by the end by the end of the first season, everyone was just like, yo, actually this is this is the shit. This is the shit. And I can't remember like a single moment or a single fight or episode that really like caused that momentum to, to start. It isn't afraid to wear its influence on its sleeves, but it's confident enough in its own abilities to still give you a fresh experience. And it does. You can see the groundwork being It was Gojo for first scene? Fuck, you might- Was it Gojo's scene versus, uh, it, it was the Gojo- Was it the Gojo eye? Was it the Gojo eye? Oh. It just seems to have everything going for it. The <laughs> characters are fresh and likeable, the fights have a nice balance between the interesting power systems and just pure animation flexing. Gojo's eyes make me question my sexuality as much as a stole for his dick, and it has an ending that slaps harder than my dad's belt. I feel like it's just waiting for that one big moment, that one big fight, to truly take it up to the big leagues, cause with Demon Slayer coming back this year from- Bro, bro, that one big moment, that one big fight? <laughs> How about we come up to, uh, season two?
where it's uh, every fight and every moment. You think you'd seen the coolest shit? Well, tough luck. In the next episode, you're going to see cooler shit. And the next episode is going to be cooler shit. <laughs> you know, it don't stop. From literally kicking everyone's ass. Jesus fucking Christ. 54 million? The sales gap could part the Red Sea. I forgot. I can't wait to see if you just... I forgot Demon Slayer popped off that heart that year. Holy shit. So Kaisen <laughs> is also going to be eating at the big boys table in time. Like, what is it now? Big three? Big five? Big seven? How many more are you going to give us, Shonen Jump? This year, the domestic girlfriend manga ended and it left... Did I actually... Did I actually put this over <laughs> Jujutsu Kaisen? <laughs> Did I actually this year? <laughs> Where was I going to get my fix of a car crash filled romance story now? No, How could no. anything fill the gap this month? I was baiting, right? Would I finally get some good taste in anime? <laughs> Luckily, Ren's Girlfriend started airing and it all went tumbling down again. This unironically became the show I was most excited to- I put Ren's Girlfriend over Shijutsu Kaisen. <laughs> <laughs> Catch up to every week. Yes, fuck you. I was more excited for this romance than Kaguya. What can I say? Look, look, I really fucking enjoyed Rent a Girlfriend season one. I thought it had fucking great potential, alright? I, I I swear, swear to God. Hindsight, right? Hindsight. Guys, hindsight. You can take the man out of the trash, but you can't take the trash out of the man. <laughs> it's another romance anime that follows the formula by the book. But Let's just pretend I didn't go on and read the manga. Every stupid eye-rolling cliche you've ever complained about, but somehow it balances them all in a way that just works. I don't know what it is about seeing people going through a train wreck of a romance situation that's just so addicting to watch. You know what I did? I went on Grindr. And dude, I was a hit on Grinder, by the way. I was a hit on Grinder almost instantly. But then I literally saw my dad. <laughs> you guys are capping. I, there's, there's no way. There's no way you guys who are mommy best girl. <laughs> there's no way you actually hold that opinion. <laughs> I have this really strange addiction on YouTube about watching videos on subjects I have absolutely no knowledge in because beyond finding content centered around my hobbies, I find it fascinating watching passionate people present their interests because sometimes a bit of that passion can rub off onto you. There's just something magical this was a about good show, watching people genuinely. do the things they love and this is exactly how I felt watching Keep Your Hands Off Azuken. Masaki Yuasa essentially just made a 12 episode personal love letter to anime. How, how I view this anime is like, <clears throat> you know when you log, you know when you have a YouTuber that makes three hour video essays on some subject you've never heard about and don't give a single shit about, and you end up watching the entire thing. Uh, this is what it, this is what it felt like just for the medium of animation with Masaki Yuasa just popping off, being like, hey, I don't care if you don't care about animation, I'm just gonna make a show about animation and you can feel that passion bleed through every single frame of this show. Azuken was so strongly imbued with such an overwhelming excitement for the art form that it was infectious, even if he had zero interest in it. You don't need to have ever tried making an anime because anyone who's worked on something creative I'm sure has a little bit of all three of the girls fighting inside you whenever you work on a new project. The one who thinks up wild ideas you may or may not actually be able to do, the one who wants the project to be perfect and won't settle for anything less, and the one who has resting bruh face. The constant struggle having a vision you want to be realized versus the practicality of achieving it in a reasonable time frame while also not forgetting the economics of labor was something I deeply related to but what really shines and then they did Scott Pilgrim love I mean I've heard good things about Scott There's Pilgrim this episode where one of the girls sees her it's, it's also a different director grandma throwing tea and something about the way it looked fascinates her she does it again and again oh over i really like over, the scene cleaning up and throwing more tea trying to recreate every little detail every little movement until eventually this random childhood story would be translated into an animation cut that would appear in their anime for less than a second yet somehow this one little meaningless cut conveyed a sense of personal love that struck a deep chord with me God, i remember watching that scene it's it sounds really weird to hear me like describe it uh, because it's really hard to convey that I don't think 
Masaki Yuasa probably planned it out to be like this big like emotional payoff or something. Um, it was just this one scene and then the cut appears in the anime that they draw for like a millisecond or whatever, uh, whatever, whatever I just showed. And it doesn't like linger on it at all, but I, but like just, just watching it, I, I, I was just like, oh, I think I get what you're trying to convey here. And I respect that he didn't, you know, I respect him to respect us enough that he didn't need to throw it in our face or linger in it for on too long to kind of understand what he was getting at. If there was something magical about the art of animation, Yuasa definitely showcased it here. <sighs> After 2019's adaptation of Attack on Titan, God, this this was a weak year. This is number three. This is this was this was a weak. This is a weak year. This was number three, man. Oh. And Vinland Saga. Watching Great Pretender maybe This one was fun, but Jesus, coming from the 2019 video with uh fucking Mob 2, Attack on Titan, Demon Slayer, Vinland Saga, and then And then Great Pretender, which was a fun show with a meh uh, with an ending that was questionable. We want you know? a studio which should be reported for aimbotting, because right now these motherfuckers just don't miss. The heist genre is something we don't normally see in anime, aside from Loop on the Third and, well, that's about it. But I am not overstating it when I say Great Pretender is the greatest heist anime since Loop on the Third. Only big statements here. Following a group of professional swindlers who are like the modern day Robin Hoods, except they steal from the rich and give to themselves. This felt like a truly triple A anime production. The unique genres- the I do always love anime that are more international, you know? Um, that is something that always stands out to me. And that's one of the reasons why I really like Pluto. It's such a breath of fresh air when an anime goes to more places than just Japan, you know? The gorgeous color palettes and allowing me to officially say that Freddie Mercury is in an anime OST. Oh, he was in an anime OST! Yo, I forgot! But most of all, it was refreshing to have an anime that truly felt international. Not only did we get a wider range of settings globally from LA, London, Shanghai, France, Singapore and Tokyo, hustling drugs, hustling gambling, hustling world famous paintings from painters everyone's heard about, the the Vinky? but the worldwide feeling was reflected in the characters themselves. Way more attention to detail was given to the characters speaking different languages and how fluent they should actually sound, as opposed to most other shows where it just felt like they just got a random guy off the streets. Native voice actors were used to dub not only characters in their respective countries, but also the main cast too. It really looks like they used this medium to its full advantage to make it feel like these were truly well-traveled, multilingual characters, which can often be a challenge to pull off in movies. They call him Samurai. He speaks fluent Japanese. What does Katana mean? It means Japanese sword. I was actually gonna put this as my anime of the year until... <laughs> The last two <laughs> Oh, Nihongo Josu. <laughs> Nihongo Josu. <laughs> what happened. All right, this is going to be my only chance, so I really need to rant about this ending. So if you don't want to be All right, it's uh it's not a very old anime. I'm going to skip this. You don't you, you don't need to hear my rants about the ending. If you're really curious about my rants about the ending, you can go watch the video. But uh I didn't care about some of the older anime that I spoiled in previous videos, but this is like uh 3 years old. So I'm going to skip it for anyone who potentially wants to watch it. I don't know what it is about a lot of anime that Netflix licenses, but if I had to put it into words, they don't feel like you're eating a McDonald's chicken nugget. Doro Head Doro just felt so insanely different from anything else I watched this year. If most anime was like taking a stroll down a bright city center, Doro Head Doro- Are we getting season two? Are we get, have, has that been announced? Are we getting a season two? Because this, this did not give me enough. And I know I put it at number two, but I wish that I had more time with it. Uh, I more put it at number two just because there wasn't a lot of shows that hit super hard this year. Um, this was like, I really fucking enjoyed it, but I really felt like I wanted more.
What up was the homeless bum trying to stab you when you took the wrong turn in the back alley? It wasn't cutesy, it wasn't squeaky clean, it was a brutal psychedelic tour through anime's underbelly and it was awesome. There's something so fascinating about being dropped into a world that doesn't follow any logic you're familiar with and yet seems to function in a way that makes sense under the foundation it was constructed in. The world of Dora Hidoro feels absolutely alien. Birmingham. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's a classic Birmingham world building, man. <laughs> happiest, happiest place in the UK, be like. Do magic because they have dust in their body. Our main character has a lizard head and another head inside his head. This man can turn everything around him into mushrooms, and then the creator smokes them. We even got Guard Gridder preparing for her Hollow Life debut. Yet huh. somehow all this makes sense under the insane logic of its own world. Seeing the universe function under its own twisted sense of coherency just made me want to learn more about it. Every episode was just a treat to see a new side of this world operate. It was which is. Which is why I think I put it at number two. Most of my love for this comes from how insane the world is and how different the world is. Yeah, everything makes sense under the logic that it presented itself with. Um, and I just wanted to see more of more stories that took place in this world. Unflinchingly brutal, yet didn't feel out of place when you saw a nine foot talking cockroach wearing Air Jordans, called Jordan, almost kill a granddad because they're doing a Jun Maeda baseball episode. This was one of the most unique experiences you can find <laughs> in 2020, and all episode. I can say is season two better be around the corner because 12 episodes- What's the title? The title is Doro He Doro. Early enough to contain the insanity that is Doro He Doro. There we go. Number one. Sometimes, when a massively hyped, high-profile sequel comes along years after the original aired, after a myriad right. of memes, discourse, merchandise, parodies- This came out before season two had ended, but now that he has ended, I can say, fuck yes, this was the best anime that aired this year. ...and spin-offs have warped your perception, it can be easy to forget why the franchise became so beloved in the first place. But all it took was a few minutes of the first episode before I instantly remembered. God damn. I fucking missed ReZero. It's a great feeling when a season two instantly lives up to the hype, but what's even better is when it takes those foundations and builds it into something greater. You want dying? You got more dying. You thought death scenes would become mundane just because Subaru got used to them? Let me introduce you to the Monty Python rabbit. Oh, you liked Amelia. Boom. Amelia too. Oh, you liked Rem? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Echidna, Echidna is, uh, I'm, I'm, I, I still love my Echidna, man, I can't, Amelia versus Echidna, fuck, that's, that's hard, it's, that's, that's hard, man, it's, don't make me choose, I know, I know who my brain should choose, uh, but, uh, <laughs> Woo, that's a hard one. <laughs> Rem 2. But what surprised me was just how much better we ended up understanding Subaru. He was no longer just an isekai protagonist. He was no longer just a deconstruction of an isekai protagonist. He was a relatable, surprisingly self-aware lad thrown headfirst into a situation way out of his depth. Out of every show on this list, it was the only one that really gave me moments I felt I was going to remember. Those moments in anime that hit that perfect crescendo and leave you in a state of shock, or amazement, or sometimes tears. These are the moments that reminds me why I fucking love anime, and somehow it felt like ReZero was able to do this on a weekly basis. Cause those moments were the- That was so good, like just learning about Subaru's backstory. Um, and just, that, that was the moment where I properly got sold on ReZero. That was like, it was that moment before I was enjoying it. Kind of similarly to let's say Attack on Titan season one, that was, the moment where I stood up and I thought, okay, I should start taking the show seriously. Big feeling I feel was missing from the anime this year. If I had to add one big asterisk to this is that it feels weird crowning this as my anime of the year. Cause well, it isn't even finished yet. It's not like Attack on Titan season three part one because unlike something like that, we are right in the middle of a story arc, but I had to pick it because I didn't feel like I had any other choice. All right. Let's be real for a second. Last year I said that picking the anime of the year was the hardest in a very long time, but honestly, this year was almost equally as hard. 
for the completely opposite reason. You may notice this year I'm not doing one of- Holy moly, Giga, since when do you do eight hour streams? Uh, since I have free time and my Christmas holiday has started. <laughs> my coveted anime in 2020 <coughs> yearly reviews and that's because to me those videos always felt like a celebration that put a personal full stop on my year of anime but this year it just wasn't something I felt like celebrating. Obviously, I don't think anyone feels like celebrating the year of 2020 in man, general. Feels but bad, I man. also genuinely think that anime as a whole just wasn't very exciting this year. Don't get me wrong, there were good shows and I enjoyed every anime on this list, but it felt weird calling any of these a prop. I mean, it, this feels like it was, was just not just anime, but every piece of media that came out. <laughs> Unfortunately, 2020 was just an off year for the world, you know? But anime of the year contender. Some were unfinished or felt more like a setup season, some dropped the ball crossing the finish line, and some were missing that X factor to truly leave a special impression. Because whenever I reflect on a year, I think back to the moments. And aside from ReZero, there were hardly any moments this year that reminded me why I loved being an anime fan. Compared to last year, when we had the Demon Slayer episode that broke the internet, Villain Saga's ending, Mob Psycho's jaw-dropping fights, Seven Page Muda, Isabel's song, Stone Age light bulb, or pretty much every moment from Attack on Titan, I don't know what moments in this year I'm even going to remember. And I don't feel like I'm- Well, I can say wholeheartedly uh, what I remember was Subaru's moment and uh... The tea, uh, the tea moment from Azekin, and uh, and Gojo's eyes. <laughs> a lot, a lot of these moments I have been reminded because of this video. <laughs> Pretty much. I'm alone in this. Being an anime fan was weird this year because it seemed like there was the least discussion and hype for the medium that I can remember for a long time. But that doesn't mean we were talking about nothing. Because if I were to crown my actual anime of the year... No, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. 2020 may not... Actually, my favorite anime of the year was Trash Taste. Clearly, guys. Clearly. Had a single anime stamp its mark on the year, but when we look back, we are going to remember this year as the rise of VTubers. And yeah, I know this is... Yeah, that statement still checks out. I, I remember more about VTubers this year than any anime that came out this year. Complete cop out because this ain't an anime, but let's be honest. This is what a lot of us anime fans ended up watching and it would feel wrong to admit them when reflecting back at this year for us weeps. In a time when the entire world had more free time to consume content than ever before, a time when new anime just wasn't up to par, a time that couldn't be more perfect for every anime fan to finally make a dent in their godforsaken plan to watch this, Did did we do it? Nah, let's watch a bunch of anime girls saying fuck. The bottomless pit that was the VTuber rabbit hole came along and swallowed us all oh, into its endless abyss. 2020 was such a weird year, man. On one hand, you had a lifetime of careful financial decisions. 2020 was such a weird year. Drilled into us over years of common sense versus some virtual pixels reciting one twenty-sixth of an alphabet. Ah. Guys. It wasn't even close. And I think what this really cemented was the birth of a proper subculture within the anime <laughs> fandom. I mean, YouTubers, gadgets, <laughs> readers, web and light novel readers. Correct. I know a lot of people who call themselves anime fans <laughs> who kept up closely with the culture while hardly watching any anime. I think the best way I can put this is that this was the year where being a weeb was something distinguishable from being an anime fan. Because while every weeb might be or has been an- Oh, this I'm like, I'm, I'm glad I'm doing this rewatch because I'm just remembering the turning points of the anime fandom. It wasn't just this year as well. It wasn't just VTubers this year. Uh, wasn't like, I, cause it was VTubers and also Genshin as well, where I, I slowly started to see the anime community fraction off into people who got into anime because of anime. And then there was just a subsection of weebs that just didn't watch anime, but still very much participated in weeb culture. And I think this was like the year, this was the turning point where there was like, there was like a fraction between, oh, okay, you watch anime? Uh, well, I, sorry. There was a fraction between people who watched anime and were weebs and people who didn't watch anime, but were still weebs. 
Bro, I just opened Genshin. An anime fan, <laughs> not every anime fan is a weeb. Yet. 2020 may go down as one of the worst years in history, but thank God for the virtual anime characters that made our days a little less depressing. The future is bright. The future is hopeful. The future is cute. Anime girls and boys, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Hey guys, happy late new year and- This stream won't get deleted, right? The stream won't get deleted. Uh, but it probably won't be up on YouTube just because of how much copyright content. I mean, <laughs> copyright content from uh, myself, right guys? <laughs> you missed that wallpaper? Oh man. Uh, that's, that's my old apartment. All right. Well, that was the best of anime in 2020. Somehow we've almost finished this marathon. Uh, it's been a seven hour stream. We have two videos left. And I think we're going to finish the marathon because fuck it. We've... I've committed. I've, I've committed. <laughs> I've committed this long now. Um, yeah. 2020 was definitely an off year, unfortunately. Now that I can see. 2020 was an off year. I do think 2019 is still the peak year. We still have two more years left. So let's see if any of uh, the two remaining years can touch 2019. And let's see, do I have a render of this? Uh, I do. Okay, hold on. Okay. You guys having a good time? Who's Who's been here since the beginning of this fucking marathon, man? This self-indulgent marathon that I've gone through, you know? I forgot how much content 10 years, how, how, how long 10 years worth of anime recaps uh, was gonna take. It should have occurred to me that, yeah, it was like, it was going to be a long stream. I was like, yeah, this will be like a fun three hour. This will be like a fun three hour segment. <laughs> ah. Is the 2023 video out? No. I'm working on that. I am working on that. <laughs> and who knows how many more years I will be recapping, but. Okay. sneak peek unfortunately there's nothing to sneak peek because it's still in the i'm still scripting it <laughs> i am still in the scripting and watching phase uh... and no uh you don't get a sneak peek this is i'm probably gonna debut it <clears throat> on YouTube, so it'll come out when it comes out. All right, this is anime in 2021. Another 30 minute video. Yes, honey. Me and Michael EP it's going to CP time junk junk. Okay, so. honey. Uh, I'll be up like another hour, I reckon, because I have two videos to watch. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, can you, because you're leaving, to, you're leaving in the morning, right? Kind of, yeah. Can you take out the trash with you when you go? Oh, I can do that. Yeah, take the trash with you. Mm. Mm. I can do that. <clears throat> Alright, good night. Good night! Good night! <laughs> trash duty. <laughs> not anything, not anything I ain't used to already. <laughs> Alright. 
Best of Anime 2021. 2021. Oh, this, uh, I can already, I, I already see some shows that have stood out to me, man. <laughs> Lived up to be the savior of 2020 as we all originally hoped it to be, but you know what? At least the anime was pretty banging, right? <laughs> This year was the year of anime that we deserved after 2020. All right. There was so much great stuff that came out this year that when- We're back boys! Anime is back! Anime is fucking back! Let's go! Let's go! Making my favorites, <laughs> I had to be pretty cutthroat in what I talked about today or we'd be here all day. Beastars 2, Dragon Maid 2, and Slime 2 won't be making my list because even though I watch them all and love them, I don't have anything interesting to say about them other than, yeah, it's more of the same good shit, innit? Jujutsu Kaisen and my previous anime of the year, ReZero, pretty much continued what I said about them last year so if it was a sequel bro we are so back we are so interesting to <laughs> last year i was like uh i don't know what to put in this list and i start this year off with all right slime 2 that's out b stars 2 that's out this is this is i don't have anything new I don't have anything new to say about it, so it's fucking out, baby. But it's cut. But before we get to the best shows I saw, let's see all the other amazing things <coughs> that happened for anime in 2021. Hello, hello. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the year started off with Exarm, an anime that broke new oh, records by Exarm. being one of the lowest oh. rated anime to come out on Mal on release. Oh, an anime that had more the bugs memories. than Cyberpunk <laughs> by a team that had never worked on an anime before. To the surprise of everybody, they made Berserk 2017 look like Violet Evergarden using animation techniques never before seen in the history of the medium. Strong star, strong star guys, strong star. <laughs> 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 In summary, anime of the year. Not to be outdone, after years of radio silence, High Guardian Spice dropped a stunning Ooh, this is some stuff that happened this year. Ooh, you love High Guardian Spice, right, honey? Ooh. Praise. I mean, just look at this. The opening has 9,000 likes and not a single dislike. I guess everyone enjoyed it. A lot of people refuse to call this anime at all, but how could you not when this is clearly the most accurate adaptation we've ever gotten of those early 2000s how to draw manga books? We're also forgetting we got the ground. <laughs> Fucking did it, guys. I got my... <laughs> I, got, I got my wife to laugh. <laughs> past, past me, got my current wife to laugh. That's, that's how I know. May, actually, maybe I don't make such bad content, guys. <laughs> For breaking release of the revolutionary biopic about the greatest gamer to ever live. Redo of Gila. Completing quests like it's Final Fantasy, collecting chicks like it's Pokemon, healing bitches like it's Overwatch, and for his ultimate move, enchanting dicks like it's Minecraft. What a true gamer. Honestly, shock value aside, I would have preferred this just be a proper hentai with full length scene so I don't have to pretend to give a shit about the writing. I think it speaks wonders that Redo tried so bad to be offensive, not even Twitter was offended because it was so bad. Overall, history deleted. Phone, yeeted, holy water, needed, meat. Let me get this straight. One of the wealthiest, most powerful men in the world is secretly a vigilante, and your plan is to blackmail this person? Damn right it is, because you are black and you are... <sighs> oh, I just, felt, I just felt a physical reaction in my body from rehearing this line, man. Sorry, I, I I paused, guys. I paused. Let let me let me play the line in full again, guys. Just just so you guys just so you guys can hear it. Sorry, yeah. Let's, and let's... your plan is to blackmail this person. Damn right it is, because you are black and you are male. After much anticipation, Netflix released their reimagining <gasps> of Cowboy Bebop, and I mean, what can I say? You got fantastic scripting, straight out of Seinfeld, Vicious looks just as threatening as a Dogecoin millionaire, and I'm happy for all these cast members getting another great acting gig. What? What happened to John Cho? Um, John Cho is f***ing killing it on a sick hit Netflix show. That's, that's what happened to John Cho. Promised Neverland season two thought it would be a good idea to skip sixty odd chapters worth of content containing one I of the most need a year to not age well. <laughs> to skip right to the end and kind of hope that people just wouldn't notice. <laughs> Shockingly, they did. One Piece celebrated its one thousandth episode, which is an absolutely amazing achievement, showing that One Piece fans are unmatched in their sheer commitment to one thing, proving that they are in fact the ideal life partner anyone could hope for if it was actually possible for a One Piece fan to get laid. Speaking of not getting laid, Evangelion fans were finally rewarded. <laughs> I 
wonder why I'm making these jokes. I'm an Ava fan and a One Piece fan. Evangelion fans were finally rewarded as Evangelion was three plus one. You know what? This this I made this at a time where One Piece fans weren't completely insufferable. As time goes on, there is only less of a chance that One Piece fans are getting laid, man. I'm, 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 fucking, I'm fucking saying it straight, man. <laughs> As fans were given the one ending no one ever expected. An actual fucking ending. Yes, long-time fans like myself were finally able to say goodbye as Evangelion turns around one- Oh god, this- this- I don't- I can't think of many pieces of media that have hit me as hard as the experiencing the end of Evangelion. The actual end. <sighs> I'll, I'll never- I'll never forget the emotions I felt when I saw those final credits rolled. Because I was just so unprepared for the emotions last time and said good night good morning thank you and finally hello hello honestly it's hard to put into words the wave of emotion i felt watching a franchise so Fuck's dear sake. to my heart actually being put to rest but even so there was something else this year that hit me even harder every so often we come across someone in history that's seemingly been able to immortalize themselves through their work i'm gonna sharpen this because i remember what this segment's about now Give the man your respect. Fuck. Someone standing at the pinnacle of their craft, setting the standard their fellow peers aspire to reach, and inspiring countless others with a sphere of influence you'll never be able to directly quantify, but you feel it. Someone like this doesn't appear every day, but if there is a person out there who I think can claim that title, it's Kentaro Miura. I remember when I heard the news. Yeah. Do you remember? Do you remember when we heard the news? Yeah. Um, because I had a Netflix shoot that day and I heard the news and it didn't fully hit me. Um, and then I remember coming back and sitting down because I was like out of work mode. And do you remember like just putting on a guts theme yeah. and just sitting there in like silence for like two hours or some shit. Yeah, and that's when we decided that we're gonna I'm gonna walk down the aisle to that. Yeah. 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 That was like, that was the exact moment just because I just realized, fuck, this, uh, this means a fucking lot to me, man. Um, and especially that piece of music, even though it's like been memed to death now. Um, I was, I, it was that moment where I'm like, the memes cannot take away of how fucking beautiful this piece of art is and this piece of work is um and i was and it's gonna be forever immortalized as one of the greatest stories ever told um i wrote that say i i actually was going to write a full like 10 minute tribute 
after the passing, um, after his passing, but I couldn't finish it. And that, the paragraphs that was I was able to write um, is what you see in this video. So that it, it was meant to be a longer tribute and I fully regret not being able to do a longer tribute and I, it had, like give him his own video. But um, yeah, I'm glad I, I'm glad I got to give some kind of tribute, but it was, it was fucking difficult to write these words. Uh, because these were actually written right after I found out he passed away. So this wasn't like written months afterwards. It was pretty raw. <clears throat> All right, let's get to it. Anime has conditioned me into thinking every romance needs a little bit of drama, a little bit of conflict, a little bit of spice. But what happens when Ooh, you present me, fucking the emotional, anime spice uh, master, <laughs> completely spiceless vanilla romance about people who like- Oh, what a perfect number 15 show. I, I need this. I need this emotional whiplash, man. I need something wholesome after that. Each other, then end up together with little resistance. Turns out, it's pretty damn good. Horimi approves that you don't need some complicated love dodecahedron to have a great anime romance. Oh, this is just the most nice extraordinary comfy, thing man. it does is how many unextraordinary things happen in it. Well, that's exactly what makes it so great. It's so casual, so unbelievably real that it's comforting. You see this girl? Well, she heard her boyfriend was hanging out with another girl and getting a bit chummy. I know what you're thinking, right? Classic misunderstanding. That is, until she did this one simple trick every romance writer hates her for. She asked him about it. And he explained it to her. Ain't no way! No misunderstandings here! No misunderstandings! <laughs> Is this some kind of twisted joke? It's just refreshing seeing characters like each other get together. <laughs> you mean they act like, like adults people. and they treated each other that, like. You know what? A nice adults with working brains? Vanilla relationship is the best thing any person can hope for. Gunner, can you come help me pick up the Evangelion on a holes? I just got the 50 kilogram anime titties in the mail and I have to go pick up the pussy of the round table too. So I could really use your help a little bit here, okay? Don't say, don't, don't say that that's not an I, I've been on stream enough times for you guys to know that that is an accurate representation. <laughs> I, I was like, wait, I'm in fucking deja vu right now. <laughs> I was like, wait, wait, hold on a second. <laughs> of some of the most decorated sci-fi shows oh, of all time. Oh, this was so underwatched, man. Just because it was Star Wars. Bro, this actually went fucking hard. <laughs> let me, let me go back. <laughs> of some of the most decorated sci-fi shows of all time, you'd think it wouldn't take this long before some exec would have the realization of, huh. Maybe a Star Wars anime would be a good idea. Star Wars Visions is what happens if you give a bunch of talented creators and studios the budget and creative freedom to do whatever they want. Was actually good. If you like anthologies, which I fucking love anthologies. Some people don't like short film anthologies. I fuck, I'm a sucker for anthologies. And this made me, this was one of the few pieces of Star Wars media I actually really enjoyed. Haven't seen season two yet, but season one, um, not every episode is a 10 out of 10 banger, but some episodes are better than others. But when an episode hits, oh, it was, it was really Up with an IP good. and see if they can deliver, which- What's anthologies? Anthologies is a bunch of separate, what is the definition of an anthology? Uh, it's a collection of different films or different short stories uh, that different creators made they did. Nine stories filled with wonderful ideas that push the imagination of what we've seen in the Star Wars universe and the concert episode. I'll be honest, I'm not even a Star Wars fan except for two things, Jedis and lightsaber battles and oh boy. We've got lightsabers that look like katanas. This chick has a lightsaber umbrella that she uses to helicopter into a fight. This dude uses a crystal to supercharge his lightsaber into a rainbow super saber so he can go at hyperspeed while standing on the nose of an X-Wing so he can tear a fucking star destroyer in half. This shit had so much lightsaber Porn General oh, Grievous had to watch it in incognito. Bro, tr trigger too OP, man. Trigger too OP. <laughs> Star Wars Visions is the Star Wars I wanted from Star Wars. It reels you into a corner of this amazing universe and spits you off for the next exciting, exhilarating ride before you have a chance to catch your breath. And I really hope we don't have to wait as long again to see the next anime set a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away.
Well, the amount of also went hard, went so hard. This was better than season one. This was better than season one. Sequels these days that feels more like a quick cash grab. My gut reaction to seeing any continuation for a story that's already clearly finished is just stop, stop it. The original Megalo Box detailed the rise of Gearless Show and his journey of winning the prestigious boxing tournament of Megalonia. And by the season end, everything was wrapped up. The character arc was complete, the plot threads were tied up, the story was over, there was nowhere left for this tale to go. Nomad was a sequel I didn't want or asked for, yet somehow it managed to exceed its predecessor in just about every way possible. Forget a boxing anime with some character development, this was a character driven drama with some boxing in it. It took the hero it had so carefully built up and completely broke him. I really, really respect the direction they took this. Uh, it's rare to see an anime where you tie everything up in one season. And normally when you see creators or anime studios do another season, it's normally like, a, it normally feels like a cash grab or something. It will normally be like, okay, let's do what happened in the first season, but let's uh, try to do more of that. Uh, this took the story in a completely different direction and it made the series uh, and it made the story way more compelling because of it. Um, title is called Megalobox, but season two is just called Nomad, I think. Depression, drug abuse, managing grief. This is Joe in Megalobox Season 1, and this is Joe. Post-2020, Joe's story is no longer a simple rise to fame underdog tale. It's an introspective saga of the fall of a hero, the inability to live up to legacy, and the struggle for redemption that comes after it. This is the benchmark of how to make a sequel to a story that's already ended, showing us there's always a new angle to explore, a new place to take a character, because there's always something that happens after Happily Ever After. Jesus Christ, did I just fucking quote Shrek? Uh, wouldn't, wouldn't be my, wouldn't be a me, <laughs> wouldn't be a me video without some, some little an anime girls, right guys? <laughs> wouldn't be a gigguck video without some anime girl. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> <laughs> Am I that fucking predictable, me? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I swear I make original jokes. Uh, I don't repeat myself. I'm, I don't make predictable jokes, guys. I, I, I would never do that. I, I would never do that, guys. <laughs> Is this scripted? I wish this was scripted. Uh, because... I... I uh, you know, here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing. We've we've gone through ten years of my content now. Uh, this is only like two years old. This is this is only two years old. So, uh, I I, you know, how how much change can how much change can I go in uh, in in two years, guys? <laughs> in two years, <laughs> I, I don't think I've changed too much, right? <laughs> Not too much yet. And 2021 saw the tale of two waifus on the opposite side of the spectrum I can't pick between. So I'm gonna cheat and put them in the same place. On one side, we've got the cute but quiet Komi san. She's hashtag relatable because she's a super introvert. <laughs> I do that. And she has trouble speaking because she has social anxiety. I do that. But she's so beautiful and good looking that everyone respects her and wants to be friends with her anyway. <laughs> And on the other side is Nagatoro, basically just a Dojin character who found herself- Alright, I can say this two years later now. Now now that it's been two years since I've had my exposure to both these anime, and I did enjoy them equally when they first came out. Nagatoro, I still like. Komi? Uh, Komi? Um, I'm less... Uh, I... am less... Uh... Attached to. Now, because I uh, tried reading her head in the manga and uh, yeah, kind of lost interest in it. 
But Nagatoro, that's just that's somehow that's the wholesome, that's the shot of wholesomeness that I needed. It's it's Nagatoro. Some some fucking hell. Of her own anime with enough smug energy to power the entire nation of Switzerland. Before airing, these were the two anime girls that dominated every profile picture I'd seen. I think you I have a type card. Would be the war of the anime <laughs> profile pictures, where Komi Sims and Nagatoro fans would compete over which profile picture would get clowned on the most on the internet. Then out of nowhere, NFT Bros appeared and went hold my circus. Both of these shows follow its own simple formula that just works. Seeing Komi's journey of conquering her social anxiety just triggered this innate desire in me to protect at all costs. But the biggest surprise was Nagatoro. I thought this was only going to appeal to the average Discord user who has the aspiration to one day be stepped on. I mean, just look at this devious smile. Look at the way she's making this guy cry. Look at this face and tell me she didn't just post memes in general, the bitch. But seeing the relationship develop between the unlikely couple was just the most wholesome surprise of the year. The smile far exceeded the smug and I couldn't help but get invested. It's just simple, pure, light-hearted fun and all- Is it a hot take to think that I, I, I think Nagatoro ended up more wholesome than Kobe? I don't know, I don't know. I feel there are some points in the Nagatoro manga that made me feel more giddy than uh, the cha any chapters in Komi-san. <laughs> what, what, a, what a fucking world, eh? All sides of the spectrum, so what can I say except it's wholesome? What can I say? Now nah, Uzaki is better. Awesome. Fuck, get the fuck out. <laughs> Uzaki? <laughs> I remember the first time watching shows like Serial Experiments Lane, Evangelion, Fooly Cooly, and not being able to understand anything I watched at all. Yet something. I still think about this. I still think about Sonny Boy. Um, and I still listen to the soundtrack pretty often as well. I. It's been it's been two years and I really really want to rewatch it because I still think about this every now and again. About them stuck with me like a parasite in my thoughts that I didn't come to fully appreciate until years after I had first watched them. And I have a feeling that Sunny Boy is gonna do exactly that for me. Sunny Boy is easily it has it has. It definitely has. The most overlooked anime of 2021. Hell, even I overlooked it until one day I was just randomly recommended the OST to the show on YouTube and on a whim I gave it a listen and instantly I just fell in love. I needed to know what this show was about. Sometimes- God, the fucking OST is so good, man. The OST is so good. Oh, God. Sometimes you don't watch a show because of something concrete that you can verbalize, but because of a feeling it gives you, and I don't know how I can say that without sounding like some pretentious art snob, but I have no other way to describe it. Its complex, multifaceted message is hidden behind a web of story paths steeped in surrealism that I can't even begin to untangle. From the concept of death, to the inner depths of the human psyche, to the nature of life itself, it's not ideas that will immediately leave an impact on you but ones that slowly soak and seep in over time. I'm not going to pretend I understood everything about this anime, but I can already tell that part of it is going to stick with me for years to come. I just finished the show a month ago and I already feel not- Two years and, I'm st and there are still no lies. I'm still thinking about it, like I said. About it. it won't be appreciated immediately, but just give it a few years and I swear to God, this is one of those anime that will have aged like fine wine. You're 2021 was the year mecha anime came back with the vengeance. We've got to see 2D mechs again. We've got to see sequels to old beloved IPs. We've got to see sequels to new beloved IPs. We've got to see the greatest thing to ever- It's Connor's favorite anime! It's Connor's favorite anime! Let's go! Exist Gundam Hathaway. Alan, have you been tampering with my script again? But right at the forefront was 86. Watching 86 made me feel like I was a new anime fan again, discovering mecha in the mid-2000s anime boom. It's been so long since I've seen a good old-fashioned military mecha show engage old fans while introducing a plethora of new ones to the genre. Right off the bat, we're introduced to a nation at war that seems to be reminiscent to World War II Germany, so you're like, oh, okay, it's a story where racism bad. And indeed, racism... 
is bad. To racism! No! But as the show goes on and the layers get peeled back, you start to realize there's so much more at play here. The horrors of war, the corruption that comes with it, and the desperation of survival that can drive any person to commit atrocities in the name of Core victory. 2 was so because far, keeps yeah. keeps you guessing, keeps you thinking. I think season Core 2 sets up the stakes, is sets up the drama, where it really it shows its true two, colors. everything you knew about the world it presented. This feels like a long lost Genarabuchi show from his prime, and I hope this is just the first of many upcoming mecha shows that can introduce a lot more of the current new generation of anime fans to the genre. Is 86, and I'm talking purely the Western anime community, uh, the biggest modern mecha that's come out that's new? I'm, I'm trying to think if there's anything that I'm missing right now. Because it's that and The Witch from Mercury. Attack on Titan <laughs> <laughs> Attack on Titan. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Let's uh, let's 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 calm let's calm down a bit. All right, all right. Let's just, guys, I, I I know. Okay, okay. Let's 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 exclude Attack on Titan for just just for a second, guys. Just just for a second. I argue that I know, I know, I know. It is, it is a mecha. But let's let's talk about mechanical machines. Let's just let's just talk about mechanical machines. Let's just let's talk about mechanical machines. Uh, which from Mercury? I know blew up in Japan, so I don't know how skewed this is. How big was it in the West? Because I know it was fucking massive in Japan, but I don't know how massive it was uh, outside of Japan. It was pretty big, famous Twitter, because I feel like there was more discussion. Uh, that I saw in the Western anime community about 86, when I started talking about Gun and Witch for Mercury, I still do not know any person that has watched a Gundam Witch from Mercury that uh, is not on my team of editors. Um, and I, I, they had to watch it because I was going to talk about it. I, I genuinely, I've, I've, I mean, Fucking Connor went out to watch 86, but uh, I still do not know anyone in my circle that has watched Gundam Witch for Mercury. So I genuinely don't know how big it is outside of Japan, because I will tell you, in Japan it was fucking massive. Oh man, I'm sad. Sad Netflix killed the, uh... Sad Netflix killed the hype for the show so much, man. You Jojo, innit? If you think you can graduate from this school without kissing my cock, <laughs> you are dead wrong. Let's this go. I'm just convinced Studio Wit have hacked enabled because I don't think it's actually possible for them to make a bad show. Vivi was just a showcase of what happens when you have a top tier production in every aspect. Take a time travel Terminator plotline with a badass female cyborg, full fledged action hero, written by the guy who wrote Re Zero with Wit absolutely smurfing on that animation, and what you have is a complete exhilarating ride from start to finish. This year was the year of. Man, Vivi was such a solid show. It was, it was such a solid show. And it feels bad because it does every it does so many things good, um, but I don't think out of everything that aired this year, there was it it did a lot of things good. Actually, no, it did a lot of things great, but I don't think it did one thing absolutely amazingly. Uh, and I think every anime that I pick over this, there was one particular thing that it did fuck like it did better than Vivi, um, which is which is a shame because I th I do think that this is a genuinely really good solid show anime original shows and Vivi is the prime example of what happens when it goes right. This felt like watching a Hollywood blockbuster production in anime form, and my god, was it a joy to see! <laughs> Oh, I remember that when that soundtrack hit and and that that fucking fight in episode four. Oh my god, chills, man. Chills. And what you have is a complete exhilarating <laughs> ride from start. Sawano soundtrack, this ain't a sound. This 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 is not sound. 
<laughs> this is not a sour finish. Note. This year was the year of anime original shows, and VV is the prime example of what happens when it goes right. This felt like watching a Hollywood blockbuster production in anime form, and my god, was it a joy to see. <laughs> Pretty much the only negative thing I can say about it is that it does everything great, but doesn't do anything exceedingly great. Animation, writing, characters, music, this was a top contender for pretty much every category while having a show or two that did a better job in one of those aspects. It's the mo- Alright, well, um... I'm just gonna shut up. I, I, I don't have any new takes. I, 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 what can I, I genuinely don't have any new takes, guys. It's... <laughs> I, I think I'm starting to prove now that I am the same person, guys. <laughs> master of everything, but grandmaster of none. And the fact that it's number seven is more of a testament to how tough- I still look at anime the same, man. I still look at anime the same. the competition was in the top ten, rather than how much of an all-around banger this series was. When you hear about a new work coming from the same creator as a silent voice, you tense up because you might as well be booting up Dark Souls, Prepare to Cry edition, but sometimes no amount of emotional prep can prepare you. To Your Eternity follows the journey of an immortal, shape-shifting object gaining sentience from the people and experiences it encounters. There's a poetic beauty- I still stand by season one. Season two wasn't- didn't hit me as hard. Season one still- especially like the first episode, but season one still- Really good. Really fucking good. Watching something that's the furthest thing from what you can call mortal, discovering its own humanity from the small pieces of everyone it meets. After watching a single episode, a single arc, you know how the series is going to play out. You prepare for the worst with everyone it meets, but it breaks you down anyway because it just carries this emotional weight that pulls down on your heart no matter how strong it is. What does it mean to live forever? What is there to be scared of when death isn't a fear? How do you go on living when... Everything around you does not. To Your Eternity erects this wall around your heart, tears it down, helps you build it back up just so it can shatter it over and over again. But every time you let it, because like Fushi, a part of that journey sticks with you with every new wall that you build. For a lot of us, there is nothing more frightening than death, but to me, there's something inherently beautiful about taking a being that cannot die and teaching it what it means to be alive. Shit, that wasn't a bad line. Shit. <laughs> Shit. Shit. <laughs> that, wasn't, that wasn't a bad line, actually. <laughs> <laughs> alright, alright. <laughs> oh, yes, let's go. <laughs> this guy. Hey, let me let me suck my dick for a bit, man. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me suck for it. Guys, I don't think you understand. Most of my content brain that I remember is fucking shitty takes I say on trash tastes. Sometimes I'm like, wait a minute. If I get into if I get into a writing mood, um <laughs> if I get into a writing mood, uh maybe not all my thoughts are completely bad. <laughs> For years now, a Chinese animation has been knocking at the door of the anime community for one massive hit, one super, super sensation. And in 2021, we went, wait, is this what I think it is? A succulent Chinese meal. Link Click doesn't fuck around when it comes to introducing you to its premise. From the very first shot, we are shown the rules, we are shown the characters, we understand the stakes. The curtains roll, the stage is set, and you're thrust head first into a super, super wild ride. The concept- <laughs> the super idol meme still makes me laugh, man. I don't know why I love the super idol meme so much. <laughs> it still makes me laugh. It immediately grabs you, pulls you in, and refuses to let go. You're put on the first episode, five minutes pass, and then you finish episode five. Time travel is a concept that's been explored to hell and back, but it's genuinely refreshing and addicting when you find an angle that hasn't been done before, and Link Click capitalizes on this to the fullest. I know there's gonna be that one comment saying, hey, Giga, this isn't really anime. I, I still we need to catch up link click season two um which i am going to do in case it's going to appear on my list this year don't know if it is yet uh but we might see a repeat of this because i've heard mixed things some people say season two is better some people say season two is worse i will reserve my judgment until 
I watch it myself. And, well, I mean, you can watch the official Japanese Animplex dub if that makes you happy, because I think this is just going to be the start of high-quality Chinese animation having more of a presence in the anime community. Years ago, I was Chinese. <laughs> It's, it's sometimes a sore spot. <clears throat> it's sometimes a sore spot uh, because sometimes this was obviously made uh, before, like, this show had ended. Uh, and had this show had ended, it would probably be a little bit lower. I still think it's a really, really good show. I just did not like how it ended. But still excited for season two. Still excited for season two. We get told the phrase, never judge a book by its cover, time and time again. And then time and time again, we go, what the fuck is this stupid children's cartoon doing on my seasonal anime chart? Skip. On the surface, Ranking of Kings looks like your typical cheesy fairy tale of a deaf prince fighting against all odds to become the greatest king in the world. I mean, just look at this little munchkin. What could possibly go wrong? Then episode two comes out and you see this guy's entire clan gets massacred while he escapes only to be rewarded by the sight of his dead mother's corpse being paraded around. This guy gets to see his dad's frozen body get crushed into mush, fucking beheads a bird and is forced to drink the blood from his head. This fucker just goes ahead and chops off his own hand, clean off after a fight. The entire thing looks like a children's storybook, but the things that happen in it can be anything but. Through all the cute, wholesome moments, this is a mature tale with complex, multifaceted characters that are always- God, it's... <clears throat> it's... It's... It's a really, really good show. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna actually... I, I, don't, I don't know how much I can say about it without spoiling what happens in the ending. I just did not appreciate how things were tied up. You know, I just, it just left it. I, it's not like a car crash or anything like that. I don't want, I don't want people to think it gets that idea. Uh, that that's what I'm saying. It just tied everything up in a manner that left a bad taste in my mouth. Um, for everything that had been set up previously. He's more than meets the eye. You got people like the Queen Mother, the typical evil stepmom you see in every fucking Disney movie who's scheming to give her own son the throne at any cost. Except when it's shown she just doesn't want to give the insane pressure of becoming king to her disabled stepson. Best mum. Best fucking mum. Oh. Oh, best mum, man. And actually loves and cares for him as much as her real son. And you can find examples like this all over the show. As soon as you think you know a character, they'll do something unexpected that adds an extra layer of depth to them. People with minimal lines feel like they have a complexity to them that most shows can't give in an entire season. Even the slimiest person has their morals. Even the most noble of people can be slimy. Ranking of Kings is an absolute masterclass in storytelling. It feels like a storybook yet plays out like a historical epic written by George R. R. Martin. This could very much be an anime of the year 2022 in the making if the second half follows through with everything this first half has built up. Had the potential, had the potential, had the potential. This is an incredible show I almost missed myself because of my preconceptions, so I swear to God, this is the last time I'll be judging a book by its cover. Ooh. Ooh, now we're talking, now we're talking, baby. <laughs> what is this stupid furry bait doing on my seasonal anime chart? <laughs> Oh fuck. Odd Taxi cemented the sentiment this year that the best shows came from the most unlikely of places. On the surface, this looks like the furthest thing from anime of the year can- Ah oh, fuck. What a- what an opening, man. Oh. Vibes. Fucking vibes, man. This opening still vibes. I know it's- it's weird, it's only been two years. I shouldn't be feeling nostalgic hearing the opening for this. But I'm genuinely feeling nostalgic hearing the opening from this, man. This was like, I don't know why, this gives, this brings back good memories for just two years ago. Then the material. But Old Taxi doesn't need fancy animation, aesthetic character designs, or a big studio budget behind it because he has the audacity to just try and carry itself with sheer engrossing writing, which it does. When most shows fail to absorb you in a single plot line, Old Taxi manages to engross you in 10, with grounded characters and dialogue so punchy it'll make you sit down and go, damn. Word got hands. It's a show that treats you with more of a level of respect than I treat my best friends. Taste it. <laughs> oh, the good old days. Oh, oh, look at this. Look at this young new podcast, man. <laughs> look at this new podcast. Look at this. What is this? 
<laughs> what is this? Old studio? What is this? <laughs> 17 episodes of trash taste? There's no hand holding. <laughs> that's why I feel nostalgic, man. That's, that's why I fucking feel nostalgic. Yeah. You are shown what you are needed to be shown. One scene, one piece of dialogue at a time. This shot showed this item. Okay, this piece goes here. That character mentioned that thing. Okay, so that piece goes there. Piece by piece, this puzzle starts to unravel itself. What seems like a pool of unconnected storylines slowly starts to form a coherent whole. But the full picture is never clear until the very last moment where the show stands up, takes off its bathrobe, and cock slaps you faster than you can say, do you want my rod or this rod? Rod. The climactic ending didn't just land on two oh feet. My it did a God. double twisting somersault in the process, backflipped as an encore, then bowed. <laughs> I forgot about that line. I, uh. <laughs> yeah, I forgot Redo of Healer. <laughs> out to a serenade of applause. <laughs> it shows like these that just reaffirm my faith in anime. It shows me that there are still creators out there willing to make original, provocative works of art in an industry saturated with mediocrity and pandering, and that there is still someone out there who is willing to take the risk to approve it. No matter how much I'll gravitate to the 100th isekai or the next big shonen powerhouse, it's finding gems like these that keep me coming back, and I hope to God that they never stop being made. Talking about shows that landed their endings, man, is it feels so good when you see a show just completely stick the landing. Like, holy shit, man. The more you watch anime, the more you realize how much of a rarity that is. Um, just completely, fully sticking their landing. Attack on Titan? Attack on Titan did an adequate job. <laughs> did an adequate job. You know, <laughs> definitely no odd taxi. <laughs> Speaking of which... <laughs> <laughs> The ending of Breaking Bad, the original Star Wars trilogy, the conclusion to the Infinity War saga. I don't think in my history of being an anime fan has it felt like a show transcended from just being a simple anime to a full-blown cultural event, but that- Hot take. Out of the final season and uh, final season openings, this one's my favorite opening. Not, um, <clears throat> not rumbling. This generally still, this is my favorite, this is my favorite opening of the final seasons. Felt like a show transcended from just being a simple. Let me hear it again. No, I, I want to hear it again. The ending of Breaking Bad, the original Star Wars trilogy, the conclusion to the Infinity War saga. I don't think in my history of being an anime fan has it felt like a show transcended from just being a simple anime to a full-blown cultural event, but that's exactly what I felt watching the final season of Attack it's on Titan. It's unique, yeah. I went it's, into the year thinking the hype couldn't peak harder than it did at the end of season three. But when I first listened to it, I was like, this is fucking weird. What the hell is this opening? And then when it kept playing, and the absolute chaos and mayhem like kept increasing per episode. I was like, holy shit, I really fucking dig this opening. Attack on Titan Season 4 dropped so hard, my grandma thought the Germans had come back. It's rare to see a series with the balls to attempt a story with the sheer scale and ambition of the plot on display here, and it's even rarer to see one that actually manages to follow through with it. To call this season a new look would be an understatement, because until you saw some familiar faces, no one would even blame you for thinking you put on the wrong fucking show. And even then, you still probably wouldn't recognize them. Mikasa went, new haircut, who dis? Eren's gone from, hello sir, nice to meet you, to, oh Maria, isn't the only thing getting smashed tonight. And Armin! <laughs> yeah, that's 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 who Eren is, right? He's he, he's him. Eren's er, him, right? <laughs> Absolutely uh, no cringe. He, he's grown past his uh, little cringe self, right? Eren <laughs> is... <laughs> Finally taller than everyone else. The villains we hated are now our heroes, and the heroes we looked up to are now the villains. New characters, new settings, new conflict, an entirely new genre of show, and it somehow feels like this was the only direction the story could have ever gone. Just how? Seeing the evolution of Attack on Titan from season one has not just been a delight for recent shows I've seen, but one of the biggest delights I've had as an anime fan, period. Regardless of how it ends, this has done what few series will ever be able to do. And whether it lands on two feet or falls flat on its face this coming year, you bet your ass I'm gonna be chomping down on that popcorn the entire way. Oh man, it's over now. Oh, oh man. Oh, it hits hearing me say that because I'm like, oh, oh, it, it, it actually happened. I remember writing this and I was like, oh, oh, I was so excited. I was like, oh, Oh, maybe, maybe it'll never happen. Maybe we'll be waiting. Maybe it'll be like Attack on Titan, Final Season Part 3. Maybe they'll do like more movies. Oh. Damn it. Oh. Damn it, Hits.
still valid, still valid, baby. I don't think it's an understatement to say that in all my years of being an isekai fan, I think I know where I'm going with this sentence, so I'm going to let myself say it. And keeping faith while wading through the dozens of the same copy-paste shows for the last decades that this was the show I was waiting for. Yes. I don't think I could fully verbalize the validation I got from being a fan of this fucking genre and just wading through so much shit and then having this come out Holy shit. I just, I just, I, it just made me, it, so many things clicked when I first saw Mishoku Tensei, because I was like, oh, I understand the genre now. This is, this is, this is, this is what it was meant to be this entire time. Mishoku Tensei isn't just amazing for an isekai, it isn't just amazing for a fantasy, it is just an amazing show. It's been such a long time since I watched something that awoke that pure, childish sense of adventure, that just made me feel like I was going on a grand adventure with my friends, getting completely lost in a totally new world. The world sucks you in and immerses you, the water magic feels almost alive, you can feel the scorched air of the desert landscape, it's another world that's been stunningly crafted and carefully brought to life. I I can't begin to talk about how good of a job the newly formed Studio Binds did. You see that? Free Run is better though? Uh, sir, Free Run's not even a fucking isekai, man. <laughs> let's, 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 calm, let's, let's calm down for a second, man. <laughs> Free Run also great, man. Uh, but how about both are fucking great? I'm, I'm eating good. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just eating good, man. I'm eating good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is just a throwaway training scene. This bread has more care put into it than the entirety of Seven Deadly Sins Season 3, but it maintains this quality through every second of its runtime. The series has the best action scenes, the best- I mean, one thing I will say, uh, about what Free Ren and Mishoku Tensei have in common, at least Mishoku Tensei Season 1, is, uh, from what- from people who I've talked to, you know, so, take this all with a grain of salt because this is all from my personal chats with people who are working in the industry. Um, it's rare that you get a project like Mishoku Tensei and like Free Ren where the staff behind it are given it, are given adequate time to properly let them cook. You know, this, these are shows that are absolutely not rushed products and you can just see how polished they are. Um, and which which is insane when you look at like something like uh, Jujutsu Kaisen, which is the complete opposite, you know, and they still achieve the final product they achieve. But these, these are two shows that the staff members were given adequate time. Dance scenes, the best subtle character moments, the best bread scenes. But it goes beyond just animation. The music, the cinematography, the voice acting, they invented not just one, but two made up languages for- Yeah, this is insane. This is fucking insane. And this just shows how much time went into pre-production as well. Different races of this fictional world, which can and has been translated, which is absolutely insane. There's an episode which is like 80% spoken in made-up languages just to further immerse you in this world. Studio Binds poured their fucking hearts into every single little detail, and it shows. Each frame has more love and care put into it than most anime get in an entire season, but behind this masterful craft, there's also just a real heart behind the story being told here. Being a part of Rudeus' long journey of learning from his mistakes of his previous life is just an absolute absolute joy to be a part of. There are many things about our protagonist that will understandably put people off the show and look, I get it and I don't stand behind it either because let's not forget, he's this guy. But the series never lets you forget how flawed of a guy he is and every tiny lesson he learns, every small thing he does to change his actions for the better just makes you want to stand up and go, YES! THAT'S IT! THAT'S WHAT I'M TALKING ABOUT! And then season two happened. <laughs> And uh, Ruby, Rudy once again took one step forward and five steps back. <laughs> this isn't a show where I found myself project- But he's, he's got to move forward eventually, right? He's, he's got to move forward eventually, right guys? Come on, right? Season two, part two, I'm hoping, I'm hoping. Putting <laughs> on the main character, but instead cheering him on to become a better- What's better? He's still trash? Yeah, he, he definitely is, man. He definitely is. But you, when you see him take that, that tiny step forward for that one scene, you're like, all right, all right.
All right. Hopefully, I'm I'm gonna hope that this doesn't do a fucking rent a girlfriend for me and just like uh actually there is no character progression. <laughs> everyone just uh everyone just gets fucking worse. <laughs> Person. <laughs> this is no longer the self-insert isekai, it's a self-reflection isekai, and I think this is true for every single person in this show. His dad? Kind of an asshole, but learns from it because parents are still human after all. Eris? Well, she's your typical short fuse, violent tsundere bitch you've seen in every other anime, so what happens? <laughs> she gets the shit beaten out of her! Now she knows her- Uh, originally this scene did not have Genshin music in it. Uh, this was- my edit when I was like, put Genshin music over it. The time to be patient. Characters learn and grow from their mistakes. Everyone <coughs> is on their own personal journey. You see people, flawed people, fighting to be the best person they can be. After all this time, I finally understood what Isekai was meant to be about. A story that didn't just ignore a person's previous life, but used it as a stepping stone to find the path to a better one. A series that didn't just show you another world, but made you feel like you were a part of it. This is what I watch Isekai for. This is what animation was made for, and this is why I goddamn fucking love anime. Isekai trash? Nah. I only watch Isekai treasure. And then erectile dysfunction, alright guys? Erectile dysfunction! Anyway, I've talked for far too long already, even having to cut out so many other shows I enjoyed, but didn't have enough to say about. We got it all this year. The good, the bad, the ugly, the weird, the epic, the funny, and the downright beautiful. It's been an up and down year for me overall, but it's been you guys that have helped me get through it. And whether 2021 was a great year for you or not, you can't deny. It was a pretty great year for anime. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Now we have gone through nine years, uh, and now I have a direct comparison in my mind. 2021 was a good year. It was a good year. Does it live up to the fucking stacked years of 2019 and 2018? I don't think so. I think, I think that 2021 uh, had a lot, had a decent amount of shows. It had, it had a very decent amount of shows. Um, I think this is around the level of 2014. Maybe a bit better than 2014. I think I think this might be the hmm. yeah. I think I think this might be just just between 2018 and 2014 for me. 2018 peaked on Lycha. No, I mean 20. It's it's tough, but I think. From watching my rundowns uh, and reminding all the anime that released every year, I still think 2019 is fucking peak. Uh, 2018 just behind that, and 2021 just behind that. Um, I think some of the shows I talked about here, something like uh, something like Ranking of Kings, didn't reach its full potential. Uh, and overall, this had some really really good shows. Uh, like Odd Taxi, like, you know, Attack on Titan Final Season, of course, Mishoku Tensei Season 1. Uh, I just think that's 20, or oh, Link Click as well. I just think 2018 was just banger and banger and banger and banger, and then 2019 was just like, okay, we're going to have the same amount of bangers, but we're going to reach even bigger heights. But I... Which leads us to our final year of anime. So, how was last year? You know, I've been watching enough anime this year that I don't remember. It's weird that we get so much anime now that even if you look back to what released last year, you really have to think about it. And...
Once again. Yeah. Okay. 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 Tenth video, guys. This has been an eight and a half hour stream of me sucking my own dick. <laughs> How lovely. This has been way longer than what I thought it was going to be. But it must all come to an end. We've had 10 years of my own content. And I've noticed that in recent years, uh, you know, I couldn't really tell where I was going in some of my older videos. The closer I get to now, the closer I'm like, ah, I see. I still hold exactly the same takes and uh, maybe just say things exactly the same. <laughs> it's, it's, it's been an interesting journey. It's, uh, it's been an interesting journey. All right. Let's, uh, let's see the final year, which was last year. And we've reached the start of a new year, but before we say goodbye to 2022 completely, I gotta say, we got some pretty great anime, didn't we? Uh, this is this, okay actually actually banger banger this is this is this is this is one hell of a uh, this is one hell of a final boss man to get through it was a year of heavy hitters in almost every genre of anime massively anticipated titles finally dropping and having the impact we thought they would big franchises continuing to another season and hitting even harder we even got old franchises getting resurrected and looking better than ever 2022 was absolutely stacked but what else happened in the world for us weebs after 25 years ash finally broke his curse by becoming the pokemon world champion. News so big it was reported like a real sporting event as the world celebrated, allowing him to finally retire at the ripe- You okay, hon? Yes. Okay. I'm almost done. Old age of 11. Italy had a surprising visitor as a certain- Oh yeah, this video happened! Of Lockhart was accidentally <laughs> played at their senate, prompting the only time you'll ever see Italians more passionate than their pasta when asking for the sauce. This forever immortalized Tifa in Italy law, becoming only the second person since Julius Caesar to be vitally stabbed at a senate in Rome. All right, what else was there? I uh, got the climax to the biggest romance- Hell yeah, baby! Hell yeah! Yo, that's me! That's me! Honey, you there? Oh, she's gone. <laughs> honey, honey, come here, come here, come here. This, this is the peak. This is the peak, honey. This is oh, peak, peak right here, honey. I was there. You, I was there as well. What? I was there as well. I don't, I didn't see you there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honey, I didn't know you put our wedding in there. Yeah. Aww. Sark of my own life. <laughs> 2022 was a bit of a quiet year in terms of anime news. We didn't get any particularly big shockers or controversies. Even anime didn't give us any wildly bad stinkers compared to previous years. But what we got instead was some bloody great anime. This year was brutally hard to narrow down my list of favorites so I don't spend two months making an hour long video. Normally I try to omit sequels and continuations unless it does something new or notable for me to talk about, which makes it messy because so many of them did this year. This is going to be the l I'm going, to, I'm going to say this as a little spoiler. Yeah, like I said, normally I omit sequels and remakes because a lot of the times I don't have much to say about it, except, hey, it's more of this thing that I liked before, but more of it. Uh, this year, so many fucking sequels stepped up, man. There are so many sequels. I would argue that most of the great shows this season, the biggest difference between this year and last year is that this year was way more of a focus on sequels and season twos and season threes. Uh, whereas this year, I felt like there were a lot more newer IPs that were that got a lot of attention as well. Longest list in a while, so I had to be cutthroat if I didn't have much to say. My Hero Season 6 is the best My Hero has been in a long time, but still not quite good enough yet. Jojo had his hype murdered by Netflix, but it's still more great Jojo. Bleach's return has been an absolutely incredible sight to witness. I'd forgotten Bleach could get this hype, but the last time I talked in depth about the OG Big 3, this happened. And I don't want to risk that for a video this big. Attack on Titan is also continuing to stamp its mark down on anime history. We got more incredible twists, more incredible hype, more Varen being like, Must you kill the child? Amazing. Mission complete. 
That right there is why you're the best, boss. I'm just waiting for it to finally learn what the word final means in final season before I fully pass judgment. Which is why I'm glad this next season is called Attack on Titan. Final season. The final edition. Part 1. Let's just get started. But before moving on... <laughs> so all the great shows last year, who doesn't love a good snack bro? Right, right, honestly, find right. the pu- You don't need to sell it to me. You don't need to sell it to me. Here you go. Here, here we go, Boxu. Go, go, go check out Boxu. Click the link in the description. Use code GIGUK for $15 off your first Boxu order. There you go. Don't even need to play it, man. Don't even need to play it. <laughs> Back to the video. Yeah, close enough. When I think about watching golf, I think... Golf is one of those things I love to play, but when I watch it, you'd have a better chance of waking up a coma patient. So Birdie Wing oh, came Alan, in with a monumental task cut. of tackling the impossible Alan, problem. why would you How do, do that? How do we make golf fun <laughs> God to God watch? damn it, Alan. Gay girls, isn't it? Not golf enough for you? How about we add special golf attacks? Golf with guns, an underground golf syndicate with golf set of Kaiba, in Golf Battle City where golfers have a golf duel to the death. One moment you can be watching a girl driving a ball through a moving train, and the next a dude is being assassinated on highway via rocket launcher. This anime is about as anime as anime gets, and if you're willing to give it a chance, it will golf you so hard you will be golfed into submission. This was a bloody wild ride from start to finish, and by the end of it, you'll be excitedly singing along to the catchy opening every time. Still, still a fucking great opening, man. <laughs> still a great opening. <laughs> oh, also, speaking of great openings. Every season, we get one or two new... Okay, I'm going to do the stream sometime this year. Yeah, that, that checks out. I'm going to do the stream sometime. Uh, similar stream like this. I'm going to figure out what the top anime openings were for this year. And I don't know if I just skipped too many openings this year, but I feel like there were more banger openings last year. I'm, I'm just, that's, that's made with the that's, stupidest that's... fucking concept of all time. Like they had a dartboard of random ideas that they tried to crash into each other and going, hey guys, what if this works? What's incredible is when it actually does. Panipi Kome, or your boy Kongming, yes, that's the official translated title, asks what happens if legendary Chinese tactician Zhuge Liang gets reborn to modern day Tokyo to become the manager of an EDM idol and leads the girl to stardom using the art of war. It's an absurd idea that looks even more absurd on screen, but all it took was one look at the opening for me to go you son of a bitch i'm in it instantly grabs you with this infectious charm and god i want to listen to the opening again <laughs> not nothing has come close to cheeky cheeky bang bang this year <laughs> holds on tight whether you're seeing a breakdown of how ancient war tactics can be used to gain twitter followers or watching a historic chinese figure spitting some fire bars in a rap battle i know what you're already jokingly typing <laughs> best rapper since eminem wrong yeah eminem's all right but has he ever roasted a dude so hard he fucking dies <laughs> Emotional damage! But past the bizarreness, it never forgets the beating heart behind it. Like Kong Ming, we're cheering for every step closer Aiko takes towards stardom. Her journey into music was so well done, you forget the absurdity of the premise. And that's the real heart of this show, because I can't even begin to describe the unbridled satisfaction of cheering for this girl to succeed, and by the end, seeing her move closer to achieving her dream way. Did I just get tricked into watching an idol anime? I'll become an idol fan one day. <laughs> one day. One day I'll slip into it. <laughs> one day. <laughs> Maybe when I'm middle age or something. That's that's when that's when I'll that's when I'll get I'll let the Love Life fans get their W, man. <laughs> yeah, Keanu Reeves is cool, but have you ever sat there and asked yourself, is there anything we can possibly do to make John Wick even better? Gay girls, isn't it? Licorice Recoil takes a simple approach. You like cute girls, you like guns, we're gonna give cute girls some guns. So what happens if you add beautifully adorable anime girls into a gun-toting spy action thriller? Well, you get something like this. Sakana! Jesus Christ, that's Jason Bourne. Somehow we have a show that- <gasps> Why did that get memed so much? To this day, I was just like, why, why that clip? <laughs> I mean, I get it. I I just, sometimes you just watch something and neurons are firing, not for the reason you normally get neurons firing for. It's just, <laughs> I just, I just don't understand sometimes. It attempts to straddle the perfect middle ground between Moe's slice Sakana. of life and hardcore action. You have a dark terrorist plot line where the stakes are high. People are getting murdered. There are intense gunfights straight out of a Max Payne game. And then we cut to a scene where the girls are like, <laughs> This 
deserves to be on the list, if not for giving us the most precious duo to come out of 2022. But if you're still like, okay, but how is this any better than John Wick? Well, um... <laughs> I don't know if I've said this before, but... Uh, I was hanging out with Maylin and her husband, and... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I can't remember whose phone it was, but I remember seeing one of their phones and this was the background and I was just like, hey, hey, hey you're watching Peak, man. <laughs> Good to see you appreciating uh, the culture. <laughs> yeah. If I need your body, I'll fuck it. <laughs> oh, yeah, this Marin was, this was the a best thing. girl of 2022. <laughs> it's not because she reminds me of my wife. Hey! girl <clears throat> they're the same picture i'll be honest i have like since reading the manga up to what i did when i made my video i haven't actually read any more so i don't know if it's still as good um i i've heard some interesting things about it uh but i did enjoy it i did enjoy it back uh, back when i read it this year we were graced with World Cup Fever, which was a blessing because we got not one but two great football anime. Introducing hey, Weeds it's the to best the selling anime of this. Of sorry, the best selling manga of this year, oh, baby. No, just, you can't miss this. You can't miss. You can't miss this. He's bloody missed it. What a prat! What a prat! How was she? I'm so glad that these two anime came out and I could start using footy memes. <laughs> That's that's my favorite thing. I was like, oh, wait a minute, I get to use fucking football memes now? Fuck yes! I'm not just holding on to these, wondering if I'm ever gonna be able to use them. Probably the most overlooked sports anime this year. Production IG just kill it every freaking time they do a sports show, and this was no exception. Showcasing the high quality they've done before with Haikyuu and Kuroko, and bringing that hype <gasps> to football. He's bloody missed it! Came along and what went, a prat! Look at this baby shit now. <laughs> this is real football. None of that friendship bullshit. We're doing a football battle royale where the entire point is being selfish and egotistical. This broke every cardinal rule previous sports anime had set up, and was some of the most fun I had all year. But you know what was more anime than both these anime this year? I the know. World Cup itself, baby! Upset after upset, we had the hype, we had the drama, we had one of the greatest World Cup finals of all time. That Messi securing his status go. as the absolute go. GOAT. Mbappe carrying France. Boeing 747 carrying Belgium and Germany. God, I don't think we're gonna get another better World Cup anytime soon. Holy shit, this, this World Cup was so... So good. England being Harry Kane penalty. Unless England wins one year, and, th and then it'll be the best World Cup of all time. Is inevitable. He scores a hundred times out of a hundred. England. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. That's uh, that's being England fan. That's being an England fan. All right. Yep, uh, I feel you, bro. I feel you, man. Japan keeping the ball one millimeter. <laughs> He's bloody missed it. What a prat. Feature in play to score the winning goal against Spain. Just what the hell were the scriptwriters thinking? Yeah, this was actually the best sports anime of the year. Fuck these other two. There is no passion. There is no vision. There is no aggression. There is no fucking mindset in this football club. You've got no time. Stellar action, compelling plot lines, interesting characters. God, this had this year had so many banger openings, man. This had so many banger we openings. Watch the anime we do, but I ask you, can a show be worth watching solely for vibes? Yes. Call of the Night is the anime that speaks to the soul of anyone who's ever been a night owl. Oh yeah, that was the ending, man. The opening also slaps. Their lives. I'm <laughs> talking to you. Yes, you. Come on, it's 3 a.m. We're in <coughs> fucking degen hours now. Holy oh, shit, it's, it is getting pretty late. Fuck. What are you still doing awake watching YouTube videos? Oh, fuck. <laughs> shut, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I, I promised everyone I'd marathon my own content, all right? <laughs> Liam, there's just something comforting about wandering the normally bustling streets in the dead of night. Unless you're in America, and this is the feeling Call of the Night perfectly captures. Cityscapes dazzle you, the empty streets invite you in as the gentle soundtrack soothes you in to the mesmerizing world of nighttime.
This may not be a show that appeals to the masses, but this was far and beyond the anime I vibed with hardest this year. And sometimes that's all you need. All right, Liam, that's enough now. It's time to go to sleep, yeah? I don't know if I, because I know the manga's coming to the, uh, I know the manga's coming to an end. I don't know if I, if I want to go back to the manga because the anime was just such vibes, man. And like, I really enjoyed the manga when I read it, obviously. And then I watched the anime and I just thought, oh, this is, this is it. This is it. This is, this is how the story is meant to be, how the story was meant to be fucking, it's been eight hours, uh, consumed. And, uh, I don't know if, uh, I, I don't know if I can, uh, <laughs> I don't know if I can go back to the manga after this, man. All those people who called me a sleepwalker, I woke up. Now I'm going back to sleep. Every year, there's always a gem of an anime that gets stripped away of all the potential hype it could have had because it's- Yep, and this year has the same pattern. This, there, there is still- there is still Disney uh, jail for shows, for great shows that came out this year. Oh, for fuck's in the sake, jail chat. of some streaming platform that doesn't promote it. And this year, there was no bigger Oof. tragedy than Summertime Render being locked behind Disney+. Plus. What do you get if you cross ReZero with a mo- Higarashi? This show. A dude returns home on an island to attend a friend's funeral, but something's off. People are acting strange. Something doesn't quite add up to the events of his friend's death, but no one wants to talk about it. There's an air of unease that something terrifying is going on behind the scenes. Then, before you can even begin to paint a picture of what horrors are really lying underneath, he dies. That was episode one. This is the kind of show that pulls you in from its opening episode and refuses to ever let go. It shows us the stakes and never gives us a moment to breathe. It presents you with this intriguing mystery, solves it in two episodes and gives you 10 more, only to do the same thing over again. You're constantly on your toes and just as soon as you think you've figured out the rules of the game, boom, it hits you with a new twist that changes everything. Damn, Alan. <laughs> Damn, cut. calm down with your cut choice, Alan. <laughs> you really gonna be doing this? Breast milk. It will keep you guessing, keep you thinking, all the way up to the final episode. And the only big criticism I can lay against- Best. Best girl. Best girl. Best girl. Actually? Ooh. Actually? Blonde girl is pretty good as well. Ooh. Ooh, it's hard. There was a lot of good girls in this one. ...is that I need to give Disney my hard-earned money to watch it. Did somebody mention the door to darkness? One thing I've learned about the anime community is the more popular a show is, the cooler you get for calling it mid. So, here you go. Demon Slayer Season 2 is mid. Way between great and bloody fantastic. And also midway up your mum. It doesn't have the most complex characters, it doesn't have the most... Re Season three, huh? Hmm. Hmm. Season three. Hmm. 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 This is interesting this year. Almost forgot that season three aired this year and season two aired last year, huh? Hmm. Original plots, but whatever it doesn't have, it makes up for in pure, undistilled hype. If <laughs> actions speak louder than words, Demon Slayer is fucking screaming. The entertainment district arc reaches an audio-visual experience few anime series can ever match, raising the bar for Studio UFO tables already insanely high standards. Yeah, and uh, it still is. That's still the bar. That's still the bar for them. Um, they didn't get an opportunity to flex harder on season three, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, but... Maybe, maybe future seasons, maybe future seasons. When you tell UFO Table that your amp goes up to 11, they go, yeah, that's cute, and turns theirs up to 30. An adaptation like this shows that even people at the top of their field can strive to improve their craft. Because what they've delivered is an anime with the highest level of spectacle it can get. You hold your breath, waiting for that one climactic moment. It builds and builds, and you're on the edge of your seat, anticipating when that peak's gonna come. And just when you think the hype can't get even higher, it smashes past it to a point you ever thought it could Go. Your mind goes blank, taking in one of the most jaw-dropping visual spectacles anime has ever seen. And only then, when everything is said and done, do you remember to take a breath again. <laughs> what happened in season three again? Okay, uh, let me, let me try to remember what happened in season three. Um, there was the vase demon. It was it was the vase demon, and uh, there was like they were he was getting like new swords made. Uh, and there was, what the fuck was the other demon? 
There was another demon that they fought. Oh, the fucking, uh... The, the Hashira with, like, boobies as well. She was, she was the, the pink, the pink head, the pink head, uh, Hashira that, uh, definitely nobody got thirsty about. Um... Yeah, and then the other demon. The other demon. Oh, yeah, it was- Oh, yeah, it was four- the four demon things. Oh, yeah. That was a thing. And I swear they beheaded him seven million times, uh, before- before it actually worked. <laughs> After all the non-related by blood antics I've seen in anime, I'd always forgotten what a real family should look like, but thankfully, Spike's family was the wholesome medicine I needed to cleanse my mind once more, even if this family is technically not related by blood. This is the latest in the X series, where weebs can never agree whether the X is silent or not, and then there's this one guy I talked to last year that called this Spy Multiplied by Family. I still remember that exact moment that he said that to me. This this is I didn't make this up. This is a real thing that happened. That's not a joke, just suit up if you're watching this. What the fuck, mate? Next To be fair, to be fair, I'm glad that they were watching Spy Family, because to give to give preface, this is someone who doesn't watch anime like at all. This is someone who just watched anime because one of his co-workers was uh talking about it. Um so I was like happy, like, hey, you're getting into anime, but also, what the fuck did you just say? Every time you do that, I'm actually calling the cops. Going in, the show was touted to me as a gag <laughs> anime, and I'm gonna be honest, I didn't actually find it that funny. But that didn't matter because every episode left the biggest smile on my face regardless. I thought this was a marathon? Bro, this- <laughs> Bro. <laughs> Bro. Have you seen how long I've been live for, man? <laughs> Watching Spy X Family reminded me of the types of old school shows I'd watch with my mum and dad on a Sunday evening when we'd spend time with each other. The type of show you'd put on at Christmas that helps bring everyone together. Sometimes it's not about having a super deep interconnected plot line, but a simple story that'll brighten up your day no matter what and help you appreciate the family you have around you. <laughs> God, the soundtrack for Witch and Mercury goes, I, <laughs> this goes hard, man. The legacy of Gundam is one of the most storied and important franchises in all of anime. But with this legacy and the sheer number of iterations preceding it, every new Gundam comes in with the challenge of having to figure out what can this Gundam do that no other Gundam has ever done. Gay girls, innit? Gundam the Witch from Mercury is the Gundam we've needed for the longest time. Something that wipes the slate clean for new fan- This was uh, this is this year's Ranking of Kings for me. Uh, this was this year's- last year we had Ranking of Kings, this- sorry, the year before we had Ranking of Kings, uh, in the year of 2022, we had well, The Witch from Mercury, man. That was something that I had high hopes and really, really, really fucking enjoyed the first half and most of the second half. Until the ending. <laughs> Which, uh, in this case, was just a little rushed. And to be able to jump in while not forgetting why people watched Gundam in the first place. It's hard to do a fresh take on such an old franchise, but The Wish from Mercury seems to be doing exactly that. This is no war between nations, but a war between corporations. Here is a world where profit and power reign supreme. Elon Musk is having a wet dream in a corner. The politics of war have been replaced with the politics of companies, proving that corporate drama can be just as gripping if you add the right conflicts, because Gundam has never been just about the giant robot fights. All right, let's talk about the giant robot fights. Giant robot fights are awesome. Studio Sunrise have pulled out all of their expertise to make this the best looking mecha show it can be, from the flashiest battle to the smallest details. I mean- I am genuinely surprised. I don't think, I don't think that Bandai knew how big of a hit this was going to be, because if they did, they this would have definitely been a 50 episode series, right? This this would have definitely been a 50 episode series because holy shit and it could have been it it had the potential to be that kind that like that kind of a show because second half was just it I thought the way it was going that it was shaping up to be a 50 episode show before I slowly started to realize oh no they're just they're just ending it <laughs>
<laughs> Just listen to the sound design. Now, I could have shown you some of its incredible animation or its orgasmic music, but nobody ever thinks about sound design. And if it can get us to notice small things like this, extrapolate that to what that means for the rest of the production values. Let's just forget about the fact that there's no sounds in space, though. This is a AAA production from top to bottom, and it isn't afraid to flaunt it every episode. The Witch from Mercury isn't just here to compete with other Gundams. It isn't just here to compete with other mechas. It's here to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best things out right now. If you're new to anime here, if you've never seen a mecha in your life, and you need a reason to get into giant robots, this is it. Oh man, the music went so hard, man. The music went so hard. <laughs> oh, let's go, baby. <laughs> Every generation, we get a genre-defining show, one that fans look back on as the pinnacle of the genre at that time, that sold them on what could be so great about it. And I believe that Kaguya Summer has become just that. When I started Kaguya, I thought it was just going to be some formulaic gag manga. Two people that don't want to confess, they find the most convoluted, roundabout way to avoid confessing, and then they don't confess. But what I didn't initially notice is that even though it seems episodic, every new gag, every new skit adds a little bit more. Piece by piece, a layer gets added to each character character, each of the cast members, it continues to build, continues to add on itself. And before you know it, it feels like this group of dimwits have become your own- There's always one person that was like, overrated. <laughs> overrated. <laughs> <laughs> you start to cherish every single second you get to put the show on, and that's the real magic of Kaguya. Beyond the gags, beyond the antics- it Like, this isn't my favorite romance of all time. Um, I mean, it's- I've said publicly a lot that I just don't connect with high school romance as much anymore just because I'm fucking 30 years old. But I will say, holy shit, if Kaguya, if I was like still in high school discovering anime and Kaguya Summer was airing when I first got into anime, this would be far and beyond the best fucking romance anime bar none that's I would that that I could think of you know it's it is for it is for its genre some of the best that you can find and there might be other romances that catch your vibe more but I believe that for like especially for starter romance especially if you're in high school age this is this is fucking it man this is it um, you know, you if you want to go like a bit different, uh, you got stuff like shit like fruit baskets. Uh, my personal favorite is still Golden Time, just because it portrays a little bit more of a mature romance. Um, but I like in in terms of high school romance, I think Kaguya Stama is still on fucking top. Just becomes a joy to spend time with all of them. You fall in love with this ensemble. So this season, when it follows through and delivers through the buildup, we will promise it results in one of the most satisfying climaxes you can find in romance. Dragon Ball Z, Naruto, Demon Slayer, Attack on Titan. These are all generational anime people talk about as the shows that introduced them into anime. But once you get past the shonen mega hits, you'll find these other shows fans look back on that served as their definitive gateways. <laughs> Nisekoi and Horimi. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, those are two <laughs> Those are two very different types of romance anime, man. <laughs> Bro, nah, ain't no way. <laughs> into other genres. Without Haruhi, I would have never gotten to high school anime. Code Geass- Is Harumiya bad? No, Harumiya is bad. Harumiya wasn't the one I was uh, sussing up about. Uh, I, was, uh, I was- I was like, wait, wait, you're putting- you're putting Nisekoi in there? In the, in the, in the same tier? Okay. Okay. As that mecha show every non-mecha fan watched, I know exactly what generation you're from if k -On introduced you to the slice of life moe genre and years from now, Kaguya Summer is going to be the anime this new generation of fans reminisce about when they talk about how they got into romance anime.
Chainsaw Man came into this year with an almost impossible amount of hype to meet. But did it rise up to the challenge and prove us all wrong with this first season? No. But what we got was still pretty damn good. It's been a long time since I've seen an anime explode onto the scene this hard and this f- Well, let's wait for the movie, guys. Let's wait for the movie. Let's wait for the movie. It hasn't peaked yet. Peak hasn't, you know, peak this, this season. Peak didn't appear yet. But like I said, still pretty damn good, man. Still pretty damn good. Fast. For the inconceivable expectations it had, the craziest things that it almost stepped up to the plate to meet them. In the highly popular, highly competitive scene of safe, marketable shonen action shows, it blasted in, gave the middle finger, and went, fuck you, I'm gonna grab some titties. It's savage. It's out there. It's a show called Chainsaw Man, and it gave us a man that's a chainsaw. What the fuck do we have to complain about? The hype this show produced could only ever really be matched by how horny it made the fan base. You got power fans. Now here's their perfect girl. I too like women who don't shower, don't wipe, smells, and leave their logs unflushed. Oh, why yes, how could you tell I play Super Smash Brothers? Then you have the Kobeni fans. Oh yes, my wife who is suffering, isn't she so adorable? <laughs> then there's Himeno fans. Then there's Makima. Never before has a character been so- Which one are you guys? <laughs> who- who are you guys? Who are you? <laughs> I, di I didn't leave anyone safe in this segment, man. I, I went for- I went for all you motherfuckers. I went for all you motherfuckers, man. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no one safe. Perfectly designed. So unequivocally unmatched. So incomparably unparalleled. At eliciting the horny. If No Not November was an impossible dungeon, she would be the final boss standing at the end of it. Every word, every action, every line she utters got you going like, My mind's telling me the earth, but my body, my body's telling me oh. all levels except physical, I am a wolf. The real question at the end- Thank you, thank, thank you for roleplaying that chat. <laughs> thank you for roleplaying what I just did. <laughs> of this all is can <laughs> Didn't even need to do anything and you did it, he did it anyway. Kappa carry on this insane <laughs> quality they've given us with this adaptation into future <laughs> seasons. Because it might not have met the hype this time, but after that last episode when those final credits rolled, I had one thought that engulfed my mind over everything else. We ain't seen nothing yet. Ain't no way that I predicted I would put a slice of life show over Chainsaw Man this year. <laughs> what a plot twist of a year, man. What an absolute plot twist of a year. <laughs> If you know me, you know I don't like Slice of Life. I don't like Moe shows. I don't like cute girls doing cute things. So believe me when I say that Bocce the Rock, a Moe Slice of Life show where cute girls do cute things is something really special. What makes it so special? Gay girls, innit? Wait, wait, not this time. But Or is it? Oh, or is it Bocce fans? I've seen, I've seen some of the discussions on here. I've seen, I've seen some, I've seen some of the tweets, some of the fan arts, guys. Guys, right? They're just friends. Girls can just be friends with each other, right, guys? She is a show about this awkward gremlin who joins the band in hopes that she can get over her crippling social anxiety and achieve the popularity she never had. I know what you're thinking. Wait, I've seen this before. It was called Komi-san or Watamote or Hitori Bocchi. Yes. What sets Bocchi apart is just how above and beyond it goes with this animation to convey these she just like me for real moments. Characters go in and off model. Animators just fucking give up at times. People start glitching in and out of reality. You may or may not have done the exact same things that Bocchi does, but you feel her in your fucking I fucking love the meme, like, the the one thing that terrifies me, the one thing that absolutely terrifies me is the botchy fanbase. Because the amount of efforts they put into their memes is fucking insane. Have you seen, have you seen, like, there's- there's memes that have taken this scene even further, and then one thing that I've seen recently is, uh, putting Bocchi in random different anime scenes. I've seen the one where she's introduced to Kaisen Season 2. <laughs> you, see, you seen that one, Bocchi in, like, the Shibuya arc? <laughs> I'm like... It's... How much effort would that- must that have taken, man? What the fuck? <laughs> 
Vochi fans, you guys, you motherfuckers fucking terrify me, man, because you guys have too much time and too much dedication. At first, I was worried that this was going to be a one trick pony. Turns out it's a 10 trick pony in a farm of 100 ponies. When you think you get the joke, when you think you know what's coming, the animators hit you with something completely new that conveys this terrifyingly relatable feeling in a way only animation can do. This made me laugh more than any other show this year. It wasn't gut busting laughter, it was more like, <laughs> oh, God, it felt exactly the same way. God damn it, Bochi, why are you doing this to me? This is triggering my fire fly response. Get out of my mind. Get out. Get out. Get out. <laughs> yeah, big mood. If there is a single intro bone in your body, something in here will drag out a core memory you've buried deep in the recesses of your mind. Like that intrusive thought that hits you at 3 a.m. And God, I didn't even talk about the music. I recently said that this was everything I was hoping k would be. Because while yes, a lot of this is slice of life moe, motherfuckers are getting shit done. Oh, I fucking love this music scene, man. Pop off, queen. Pop off. These girls don't be fucking around when it comes to their music. They have their goals and they're gonna go out and achieve it. But she may not be able to form a coherent conversation, but every little step she takes to overcoming that, every time she steps up and tears it up on stage, made me want to jump up and go, yes, that's my girl. This was my biggest. Yeah, that that scene, that scene, that scene where they were performing and she's like, I need to step up and just fucking start shredding the guitar. Whoa. So proud of my girl, man. So proud. Surprise of 2022, bar none. In a season of heavy hitters, Bleach, Chainsaw Man, Spy X Family, Bochy the Rock awkwardly waltzed in, grabbed the mic, and went. It doesn't matter! Cyberpunk 2077 has gone down as one of the most disastrous launches in game. Man, it's insane to think. Because okay, okay, let's let's like rewind back. Uh, let's re let's rewind back for a second to when everyone was clowning on Cyberpunk, and now Cyberpunk just won the award for best ongoing game. It's amazing to think how quickly opinion changed after Cyberpunk Edge Runners came out. Edge Runners was I don't like obviously the developers worked really really fucking hard to uh you know actually fix their game but it's weird to think that to how much of an effect this edge run has had to completely flip cyberpunk's reputation uh because people were just it was it was only after that that people started talking positively about cyberpunk gaming history years of anticipation and build-up led to the release of a broken unfinished game that would take an equal amount of years to fix all the bugs that it had 2077 became a joke a meme among the gaming community about how not to launch a game and the biggest praise i can give to cyberpunk edge runners is that it was so good it should have been genshin <laughs> <laughs> Genshin fans one day, one day they'll take us seriously guys, one day we won't be the clowns of the gaming community, right? Right? One day, one day I swear. <laughs> I'll see it, I, I'll see the day, one day we'll be respected, right guys? <laughs> right? The anime almost made everyone forgive what happened to the game. Out of nowhere, this dropped and introduced Weeb oh, to the insane world that was, that was, that was clean. That it was so good. <laughs> that was yeah, fucking clean, Alan. Alright, alright. What right. happened to the game? <laughs> Woo! Out of nowhere, this dropped and introduced <laughs> Weebs to the insane world of Night City. We weren't given another squeaky clean safe anime. This was some hardcore, dick and butt, hyper violent, I fucked your mom kind of show. And god damn, was it awesome. It hits you with the story going at full throttle from episode one and never takes its foot off the gas. You'll look for a moment to pause and catch your breath, and while you're waiting, you'll realize the credits to the final episode are rolling. This was the anime Studio Trigger were born to make that nobody realized they wanted until now. Even for a team of decorated veterans in the industry, this felt like they had upped their game. They felt refreshed, revitalized, every scene oozing with style, every frame burning with the passion of everyone working on it. And it's impossible for this excitement not to get transferred over to the viewer. This is how you do a video game tie-in, and all it took was emotionally scarring the collective cyberpunk community with a- God, just watching cyberpunk, uh, just watching what Trigger did with cyberpunk, just like, there is confirmation that John Wick anime is happening, and I can only imagine 
the fucking insanity if Studio Trigger get to do that. Like, that would be fucking insane. Um, I just... What Cyberpunk Edgerun has showed me is that Studio Trigger can still bring their style and not go completely the Gurren Lagan and Kill La Kill level of ridiculousness, but still absolutely bring the hype. And I would love to see what other stylistic stuff Studio Trigger can do. Single song. When Mob Psycho Season 3 was announced, I remember saying to myself, eh, we don't need another season of Mob. What a prat! Season 2 was an action-packed masterpiece, combining some of the best animation you could ever find with masterful character writing the series didn't have before. And while I don't think Season 3 reached those same heights, it was one that was surely needed. This closed the final chapter to Mob's character and everyone around him. In a sense, this felt like a season- When I do my best of- anime recaps uh you know unfortunately i have to go with what i'm presented every year with what was released every year um if i were to like you know judge these shows based on everything that you know this franchise has done uh mob would definitely be number one season three wasn't my favorite season of mob but it was one that completed the package and if i were to you know if I were if I were to judge not just this singular season, but the entire thing as a package, uh it is insane the treatments that Mob got and the story that Mob is um over its entire run. It is it is it is one of, if not the best anime to come out of this decade. And it it hits right from season one all the way to the season three and long epilogue. While I wondered where the story could go after season two cleared up all its plot points and defeated the big evil, season three took a step back and went, how do we give these characters the send-offs they deserve? Reagan, the man so full of bullshit he can sell Hamon to a stan user, ends the series in the most honest way possible. Dimple, Ritsu, Hanazawa, and most importantly Mob, for all the flashy fight scenes it showed that its true heart lies in the characters. It taught us how to accept ourselves through the eyes of Mob's journey and ended his story in the most perfect way possible. Studio Bones can finally take a bow for the work they've done here. From start to finish, Mob has felt like a passion project that has pushed the boundaries of animation to its limits and beyond. This is the kind of adaptation everyone only dreams of. And now that we're saying goodbye, whatever your favorite season was, it's hard not to feel like all of Mob Psycho has cemented itself as a modern classic we won't ever forget. God, it really did feel like a passion project, didn't it? Like, I can't think of many other anime, like, that have such, like, that exudes such passion from its staff members, you know? Um, it, it, it almost felt like some of the animation scenes in that you've seen all throughout, they, some, some of them were like completely unnecessary and probably took way too long to animate, but they did it because they just wanted to make a banger fucking project, man. When I put on a happy movie, I know to come out expecting to feel happy. When I listen to a sad song, I know to expect coming out feeling a bit sad. Kevin, Kevin too powerful, man. Kevin, you're too, you're too, you're too, you're too fucking powerful, man. This is so... Oh my, this is not how I should be feeling at 1am in the morning, man. <laughs> this is not, this is not what I want to leave off at. Alright, I'm, I'm gonna start this again. I'm gonna shut up because, because my boy deserves it. When I put on a happy movie, I know to come out expecting to feel happy. When I listen to a sad song, I know to expect coming out feeling a bit sad. But sometimes I encounter a piece of media that leaves me with an emotion that is utterly indescribable. And that's how Made in Abyss Season 2 
left me. It's been five years since the first Made in Abyss, and now the cat's out of the bag. We know this isn't a cutesy, happy show. Bad things happen. People, probably children, are going to suffer, and you're gonna need a good hug by the end of it all. And even knowing this, I was not prepared for the experience this was gonna give me. This is no longer simply just a sad show or a dark show. Before, the rules are more simple. You go down deep and maybe you encounter a really dangerous animal or some crazy evil person, but now the terrors you encounter cease to follow any logic you're familiar with. We wander around in this non eucidian world where the laws of the universe are governed by different systems. The mysteries of the world refuse to give up its secrets. Eldritch horrors lurk around every corner and your mind can only attempt to comprehend the nightmares you uncover behind them. Made in the best to can- Oh man, this 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 fucking episode, this this scene and this episode fucked me up so much when I watched it, man. <laughs> it's uh, I I don't know, I I still don't know how to like describe it. You know, it's it's the the reason why I gave Made in Abyss number one, um, was just because it did things to me that. I, I don't, it, it like made me feel things that I don't think I really feel watching other pieces of media. Um, you know, with something like, I don't know if I'm already repeating myself, I'm, I might be doing so uh, <laughs> in this script at this point. Uh, but yeah, like with something like Mob, you know, this really, really fucking well written show, really, really great. Uh, but I felt the emotions that I felt with that series, with like other similar series, you know. Made in Abyss was just such a fucking mix of different emotions. Some of it was like despair, but it was despair with like a sprinkling of hope and beauty and all of these different concoctions of fucking emotions that I just, you just don't know how to properly feel. And all you can say is that it just, it's just fucking incredible that something can make you feel such a wide range of things at the same time some of the most haunting things I've ever seen in anime. But none of it was because of some simple violence or gore, but ideas and imagery that disturbs me to my core. Yet somehow through all this, there's a gentleness to its story. For all its terror, this is a hauntingly beautiful tale. It gives you hope in a place of hopelessness, then smashes it all away, terrifies you without scaring you, and hits you with a soundtrack that makes your soul just wail. <laughs> Incredibly hard time picking my Fuck favorite you, Kevin! Any one of the top six could have taken the spots, but the <gasps> reason I settled on Made in Abyss is because I'm not it's gonna cry right now. I'm like streaming. No other. Unlike everything else I've talked about today, this is going beyond Sorry, I just wholeheartedly <laughs> recommend. In the oh, this is not why. This is not how I wanted to end the stream. I needed to. I needed to like shake myself out of it. The same way I don't really recommend a movie like Requiem for a Dream because it's not something you go into to enjoy, but if you're brave enough, it's an unfathomably powerful experience that will haunt you for years to come. <laughs> Made in Abyss allows you to find beauty in the horrific, hope in the despair. You watch this nightmare unfold through an ethereal lens. It rips your heart to shreds, then gives you a warm hug and tells you everything's gonna be alright. You go on this ride that tears your soul apart, only to come out smiling at the other end. And only after it's all over, and you sit beside yourself to process the journey of emotions you just felt, is there only one word that can encapsulate it all? Wow. All right, breathe. Hey guys, hope you're having a- <laughs> Oh man, I, I am- Thank you very much for the 10 gift subs, man. I, I am a mess of emotions right now and I was not even- I was not even uh, watching- <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna- I was not even watching the show. This was watching me describing the show. I fucking wrote- I fucking wrote that- segment and I still get emotional just seeing any media 
with that show. No 2023 premiere? Maybe, maybe when I finish it. It's not going to be this year. It's going to be in January. But... Uh, that was 10 years of me. Can you believe that? Can you believe, can you believe that? We, we just went through 10 years of me. Uh, didn't, really, uh, didn't really expect to... Didn't really expect to do that. Uh, I forgot how long these videos were. But we got it. We, we made it through to the end of the marathon of the last 10 years of anime. Um, I <laughs> There was actually uh, a lot of nostalgia here for some of the older years of anime. But what is the greatest year of anime in the past 10 years? Uh, before I fully think what, uh, before I will do a poll to see what you guys think. Um, oh, Giri, thank you so much for the raid. <laughs> thank you for the raid, Giri. <laughs> Holy shit. <gasps> oh. <sighs> thank you, Giri. Well, we're going. For the brief time I get over 10k viewers, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> oh, it's too late, Gary. You know, you know, we live in the same country. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Raiders. Uh, we are just. Uh, if you just joined, we are just uh, trying to figure out the best year of anime within the last 10 years. Uh, of uh, that uh, have aired, and we just went through a long marathon, which uh, you missed, of the recaps of all the last years of anime. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna have a quick poll to see what you guys think. So uh, I'm gonna pick my last my five favorite years that we just went through. Okay. Best, best year of anime. Okay. Um, What is my last year? All right. Wow. <laughs> I'm looking at I'm looking at my list of my top five favorite years, and uh, it's definitely definitely stacked towards uh, later years, but. The five years I have chosen based on the recaps of the last 10 years are 2014, 2018, 2019, 2021, and 2022. So, um, I don't know what the fuck happened in 2018. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what the fuck happened in 2018, but, uh, some, something, something definitely happened in 2018. Uh, so... So these were my. <clears throat> you, do you mean twenty twenty? No, no, I do not mean twenty twenty. Twenty twenty was the worst year of anime for the last ten years. Oh wow! Oh wow! Okay. Okay. Look, twenty twenty. Twenty twenty was the year of. VTubers, man. That, that, was, that was better than any anime that aired <laughs> that year. <laughs> 2020 people rising up? Oh man, the recency bias. Is this, is this, is this the Kevin effect? <laughs> this the Kevin effect right here? <laughs> uh, 
Yo, Kevin's like, oh, 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 it hit hard, it hit hard. All right, so according to the viewers, we have uh, 45% say 2022 is the best year of anime in the last 10 years. Coming up second is 2018. Coming up third is 2019. Uh, fourth, 2021. And coming in at last place is 2014. Um, I... I am going to guess that a lot of you might have gotten into anime more recently, but I do feel after watching this, after watching my recaps, something definitely changed in the year of 2018. Like the, I think not just the amount of anime, but just the amount of choice that we had, uh, because before 2018, it felt like, okay, we had, we had a season. Uh, we in the entire year there would be an off season every now and again, and it felt like after 2018. It felt like after 2018, um, every season, even if it was an off season, had at least one big banger in it. Uh, so I do honestly feel like anime in general has gotten better. I don't think it's completely recency bias. I'm going to have a look because. My top three are 2022, 2018, and 2019. Um, top anime 2018. So you guys voted 2018 um, as your third favorite anime, uh, second favorite anime year. Let me see. Top anime. Dude, is did, did someone make a list? Did someone make a list of this? Top anime 2022. IGN. <laughs> IGN. IGN. What'd you what'd you put IGN? What'd you put? What'd you put IGN? Let's 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 see what IGN put. We, we can we can trust them. We can trust them. Alright. Had things like Edge Runners, Ranking of Kings. Okay, Spy Family, Mob Psycho. I do feel like 2022 was a very, very strong year. I don't think it edges out 2019. I think 2019, too fucking strong. Let me go back to 2019 again. Because, like, 2019 had, like, Vinland Saga, A Sentence of a Bookworm as well. I, f I totally forgot about that because I didn't even watch, I didn't even watch it that year. That's why I didn't cover it. Uh, it had Vinland Saga, a Sentence of a Bookworm, First Season of Demon Slayer, Fruits Basket. It had Mob Psycho 2 as well, which I think is the better Mob Psycho season. Um, Run with the Wind, Promised Neverland Season 1. That time I got reincarnated as a slime, Kaguya Summer Season 1, although this uh, 2022 had Kaguya Summer Season 3, which is better. JoJo Part 5. And I know there's more. I know there is more than just this. Dororo? Shield Hero? <laughs> Why not use Annie List? Is there a does Annie List do anime by the year? Because that would actually make it way easier. <laughs> that, would, that would that would make it way easier if if because Annie List and my anime like Annie List. Oh, you can filter by year. All right, that that makes it, that that makes it so much easier. Okay, let's 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 have a look. How do I do this? Do I have to join? Right of search bar. Okay, years. 2022. Okay, let's have a look. I'll do them side by side.
Okay. So. So, sorting by popularity, uh, 2022 had new new shows like Spy Family, Chainsaw Man, uh, My Dress Up Darling, Blue Lock was massive as well. Uh, oh yeah, fucking Eminence and Shadow. <laughs> Bocce the Rock, which was massive as well. We got new Bleach, obviously Made in Abyss 2, which I just mentioned. Um, so, it had a lot of great shows and had the absolute peaks which was Made in Abyss 2 and Cyberpunk to me and uh, and Mob Psycho 3 and let's compare that to 2019 which had a lot of the same shows but we also had new shows like Promised Neverland The Good Season uh, One Punch Man 2? No No Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, but it also had stuff like Fruits Baskets, Beastars as well, Domestic Girlfriend. Okay, okay, it's, it's over. It's over. <laughs> it's over. Ooh. I feel like... Fuck, now that I'm looking at this straight, let me let me try 2018. Let me try 2018. Let me try 2018. This is what you guys voted as your second strongest. So maybe there's more maybe there's more in 2018. Okay, actually. Actually. Ooh. Oh. oh, that's a lot. I feel that 2022 is the most top heavy. 2018 is just, just stacked. 2018 is just stacked with mostly a lot of these are like a new shows, right? Because 2018, basically the best shows of 2018 um, that are not sequels, I mean that are sequels are obviously like Shingeki no Kyojin 3, but the amount of new great shows that we got in 2018, we got Bunny Girl Senpai, Violet Evergarden, Devilman Crybaby, uh, Banana Fish, Wotakoi, Slime, Jojo Part 5, which is, uh, which is <laughs> a sequel. Um, Grand Blue, fucking, uh, what's, uh, Place Further in the Universe, Hinamatsuri, Megalobox. I think it's actually 2018. I think maybe these years, 2019 and 2022, have something in common, which is the shows, the top, the top shows of these two seasons, I think eclipse the top shows of 2018. But in terms of just how much quality came out, I think 2018 is the most stacked. It was just the most consistent. Um, because, you know, I look at 20, 2019 and holy shit, this had the best season of Attack on Titan, in my opinion. It had Vinland Saga as well. It had my favorite season of Mob. And then 2022 had shit like my favorite season of Kaguya Summer. Had, uh, you know, Mob coming to an end as well. And it obviously had uh, Made in Abyss 2. But I don't think anything comes close to the absolute variety uh, and choice that you had of 2018. I think, I think, I think after a nine hour stream going through everything, I think I've made my decision. I think I made my decision after going through everything. I think pound for pound, 
the best year of anime in the last decade is 2018. But it is a very, very difficult choice because some of the best anime and some of the best shows and some of the best seasons you can find did come out in 2019 and 2022. That was, that was fucking hard. That was hard. <laughs> oh, well, we did it, boys. We did it. <laughs> that, was a, that was a very, very long anime stream. But where will 2023 fare in this uh, uh, where will 2023 fare against everything we've just seen? I guess I'm going to find out after I make that video. <laughs> but I am probably going to end it there for today. I've been live for almost 10 hours and I have uh, one more filming session to do tomorrow before I am completely free of everything else but can i just say regardless one thing i can one thing i think i can say is anime fans we are eating good right now um i didn't fully realize how much of a big gap in quality we have from older anime seasons and older anime years but the amount of choice we have from 2018 onwards is fucking ridiculous like 2014 was, I think, the strongest year previously, previously, and it's fighting tooth and nail just to be on the same tier as some of the years that we have now. And that was like our strongest fighter back in the day. Um, so who is online right now? <sighs> Feel bad because uh, Giri just raided me, but uh. <laughs> Looks like I'm going to have to say Looks like I am going to have to say goodbye for now. Um, like I said, this is the Christmas holiday, so I'm going to be streaming more often. Uh, next week... Next week, I'm going to make some, some kind of announcement, but I will be streaming my trailer reactions to all of the upcoming anime in winter 2024, because somehow it's almost the end of the year. <laughs> somehow it's almost the end of the year, man. Please leave the VOD up for this one. I will. Do not worry. Uh, let's raid out to. <laughs> let's look out for my fellow Genshin players. Let's look out for my fellow Genshin players. <clears throat> Alright, well, I hope you guys have had a wonderful stream, and I'll see you all soon uh, for some more fucking DGen unhinged stream. Uh, thank you very much. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.